from the cold play <laughs> on next fm 104.9 i'm ricky gervais with me steve merchant and back carl pilkington hey. he's raring to go that's nice when you have a bit of time off isn't it yeah how long have you had off about three then, weeks about, about three weeks, three weeks, weeks yeah um we can't do that because we're sort of self-employed we'd be letting people down but it's different when you you know, you get paid anyway whether you turn up or not, but good to have I'm you never, back. I'm good I'm never off ill. No, That's good. the first time I've no, never been off ill. Like, well, no, I mean, just, just, you're off two weeks and then you're off. No, I just wish I was the kind of person who could let down an audience I know, of, of regular really, listeners. Yeah. Yeah, but I, like I say. Well, no, we spoke to you, you weren't that bad. A cold, you don't go in for a cold. Um, we were discussing this last night in the pub and, uh, you know, you don't go home for a cold. Um, okay then, so moving on, what have we got then? We've got oh some great God, songs. I've brought in The Smiths, I've brought in Buzz Cox, I've brought in Neil Young, I know Steve's got some hip hop. Some great hip hop. Uh, I've got some great Elvis Costello. It's, it's gonna be great. Uh, Carl, come on, concentrate, you've been away for three weeks. No, don't stop saying that. What? You're annoying me now. Why? Oh, what, what are you do? Go in, Neil. Oh, oh, he's annoyed me. Oh, has he? Yeah, I've got a bit of headache and I'm a little bit annoyed. Can I have some time off and still get paid? Yes, of course you can, Steve. Steve, right, you called me up winding me up about this. I'm, right, I'm, I'm nearly, th I'm 30, right, I'm 30 now. I can only remember being off two times. Oh, his memory's going as well, you'll have to try him off. <laughs> and both of them were when I, when I was at school. One, school? What's one, school? One when it was windy. Why did yeah. you have time off because it was windy? But to be honest, Carl, that lasted no, no, for wait. seven years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your time wait, off wait, at school. Wait. Why did you have time off because it was windy? Were you windy or was it windy outside? No, it was, it was a really, it was like when- Your when, auntie wasn't out of the window, was she? Yeah. When the winds were bad in the seventies. I mean, I'm said, oh- What you, whoa, 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 I remember space hoppers and flares. I don't yeah. remember the winds being bad in the seventies. <laughs> well, my, my mum just said, uh, you might get blown into the road, so don't go <laughs> She had so much faith in you, didn't she? As a human being. Is that why she got fired from the pie shop? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming in today, I might get blown into god, the room. The, oh god. The funny thing it was, right, Steve, they, they had this, this thing going at school, because a lot of people used to wag it back then. Right? Used to what? Wag it, sort of not go in. Yeah. Right. Right. And, um, they sort of tried to make it interesting for you by giving you a- An education. A certificate. A certificate right. if you yeah. did a full week. Re reward for the rest yeah, of your exactly, life, with yeah. achievement. That right. sort of, that sort of carrot. And mm. also, like, let you go home at three o'clock on a Friday. Right. right. If, if you'd done a, like, a full week and that. Right? Yeah. So it was, uh, it was lovely weather all week. Then it just sort of changed on a Friday, and I got off, and it was all windy. It was windy said, for Friday on Sunday. Yeah. Isn't it? Uh, don't, don't, you know, if you don't want, don't go in because you know you might get blown into the road and that. So I said, all right, then I'll stay off. And um, so why did you? Uh, I told you to hold on, hold on to a fence or <laughs> yeah. walk you there. What this? Don't go <laughs> out. Immediately give blown. up. I love this getting blown into the road. Is that based on your cats that kept getting blown into the road? Well, so I got to got to school on the Monday, right? And the teacher said, Took right, today, uh, to punish you, you're the only one who wrecked the whole week, right? Everyone else came in, you didn't, so everyone else is going on at three o'clock today, but you're not. Brilliant. Serves you right, and, uh, and- I wasn't bothered though, it was great, cause I said, well, you'll have to stay with me, won't you? And Brilliant. it was great. So all I did for half an hour was doodle and stuff, it was great, that afternoon. Yeah. And that, that was ages ago, that was like when I was about eight. And that's one of the times I was off ill. Yeah. So it was, I, but that wasn't even ill, that was wind. Yeah. Well, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit different when you're in the adult world though, Kai. You can't just not turn up because you've got a bit of a cold or you're a bit fed up. I mean, we had an appointment four o'clock Thursday, wasn't it? And he had to call it, he said, I'll cancel it. Oh, I went on, meeting went on a bit late. Yeah. Time management. Get things done. If it was important, you'd get it done. Play a record, Carl. Pull your finger out, please. Elvis Costello, Alison. What a great track that mm. is. Beautiful. Well, Carl, we'd better tell them all the new great features we've come up with in the time you were off. <laughs> right, well, we'll, uh, we've got the film thing still going. Okay. Yeah. Um. That's where you take a lead role or a, or, or a major role in a, in a Hollywood blockbuster, which we then give away on VHS worth six ninety nine. <laughs> And, uh, something new we're trying out, because Rockbusters... He's dead, thankfully, yes. He's, uh, he's gone for a bit. It's over. Um, Crosswords. Crosswords. Oh, this sounds intriguing. Where'd you get the idea from? <laughs> what's the, what's the basic, uh, format of this? Right, what, I, what I've done is, I've, yeah. um, yeah. take, like, a, a popular saying from the show. A popular yeah. what? A popular saying, something that crops up quite a lot in the show. In our show? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, first thing that spring, sort of sprang to mind was, uh, there's this airy Chinese kid. Oh, okay. classic. But more, more commonly okay. it would be something like, Carl, you're an idiot. Yeah, play Carl, record, you idiot. You're a fool. Where? Carl, you're a fool. Oh, what did you mean? You let us down again. Yeah, you Carl, where have here. you been? Yeah, oh, you... you've got a headache, have you, Carl? Yeah. You better have a lie oh. down. Typical yeah. phrases like that, Yeah, sure. typical phrases like that, yeah, yeah. Carl, you're a loser. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And, um, what I've done, I've got a load of different songs and took words <laughs> from the different songs and then joined them together yeah. to make There's This Airy Chinese Kid. And then people have to email in and say what the five songs were. It sounds like the most complicated game ever. I'm looking forward to it. You, have you heard any of this, Rick? Because I've not heard this at all. Yeah. I'm not familiar with this. Well, all it is, it, it, it'll go like, Eric hey, John, kid! And that's, it's from sort of four different songs. Right. And you've got to identify the songs. Right. Uh, wow. How many songs in this, Carl? Five. Yeah? Five. There's this hairy Chinese kid. Okay. Right. So, and uh, what are the prizes for that? Are yeah. these the prizes? Yeah. Alright, well let me tell you what they are. They're not too bad actually. We've got, um, Live Forever, which I assume is a, a CD that ties in with this new Think film. Think of that! A well-known phrase from the show, and it's Hairy Chinese Kid. <laughs> yeah. What other- where would you There is no that other radio show in, in the life. world! I- this is- go on. If you've just tuned in, yeah, I mean, what, what are you thinking? you think if you've just tuned in, you've got a well-known phrase from the show, Hairy Chinese Kid. <laughs> oh yeah, classic. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be playing that in charades this Christmas. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is uh, a CD that ties in with this new film Live Forever, which is all about uh, Britpop, and so there's stuff on there from Oasis, Blair, Pulp, etc. Uh, we've also got uh, another Red Dwarf DVD, uh, Marion and Jeff, the first series of that, excellent. <coughs> That's on VHS, sadly, but uh, never mind. And, um, and also, uh, the very best of Led Zeppelin, a two CD set there with, uh, all the classics on. So that's not yeah. bad prizes, that actually, is, you've, you've done yourself We've upped it, we've upped it, we're getting serious now, we're playing in the, you know, the bigger league, it, we've upped the stakes. We want Heat Magazine not to, you know, lose touch with us just because Rockbusters is gone. Yeah. I think they're still behind us. We're so we've got, we've got, uh, we've got film, you appear in a film, we've mm. got, uh, crosswords. <laughs> How is that to do with the crossword? Because I've got words and sort of cross them. Okay. Right, you don't really <laughs> cross them. But, uh, good. So words, we're playing a game called Words. <laughs> word Song. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Word Song. <laughs> and, uh, and obviously I imagine there'll be some more great music. But we've got a new feature, haven't we? Which one's this? Are we doing, um, within the Monkey News, the new oh, feature? Oh, Steve. I'm excited. You know Monkey News is my favourite feature, so what have you uh, added to it? Explain it. Right, well, uh, there's been loads of stuff going on in the past few weeks, right? Uh, but for the times when I struggle, when, when sort of monkeys have had a quiet week, <laughs> and there isn't that much news going on, sure. right? Come up with this thing. I sort of speak to an expert, I've, I've spoke to him already. You, right? spoke, you spoke to an expert? Yeah. A monkey expert? Yeah. Uh huh. And I ask him a question. Wow. Right? The feature, it's got a good name, you know that's the way I work. Yep. Cheapest chimps. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. And what I do, I ask him a question about, you know, oh, how much does it cost to, you know, keep one? How much does it cost to, you know, feed one for a week? Yeah. All this sort of stuff. So I, I give out like a monkey story, and if that isn't enough for people, they'll also learn something else at the end of it. Right. Yeah. So like... It sounds fascinating, can I say right now? Yeah. That's just some of the things that we've come up with. Play a record, Carl. Please still continue to listen though. Yeah. Baby, come on, come on down. Richard Ashcroft, buy it in bottles on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl, I need the phone number of your girlfriend. Let me explain why. I was lucky enough, once again, to be on your quiz team yeah. this week. Um, uh, Ricky, still to beat me. He's still to beat me with his team, yet. We, second, uh, second I came. We, uh, we, the, the, the gang here and some friends, we, uh, sometimes go down to a pub quiz in the local area and, um, I was very nicely, I was invited by Carl to be on his team. Uh, twice now I've been on that team. Uh, Ricky's always on another team. And, um, I, what can I say, Carl? I, I, do you mind me saying this now? Because I've, I've, I've analysed the team, and it's your, very much your team, and, uh, and you've put the team together, you've recruited some excellent personnel, your girlfriend's uh, very, very good on the team, yeah. as is one of her uh, work colleagues, and uh, you normally bring in, you know, someone like myself. I like to think I'm providing certain something with the entertainment section. I seem to remember last time I answered at least six or seven questions that other people hadn't got, so I, I felt I, I provided something there. Um, 
Carl, I, I rather like John Harvey Jones, who used to be called in to sort of troubleshoot companies. I see why you are not winning, ever. And it's a rather pricey, uh, contest, isn't it? It costs a tenner to enter per Each. person. Yeah. And unless you get in the top three, you're not, you're not gonna get to see your money back. Right. So, um, I think you're gonna maybe need to step down from the team, because Carl, Ooh. I'm not sure, I am not sure, you, you consider yourself a kind of player manager, but frankly I'm not sure you're providing enough. Right. See, this is, this is funny because as bad as I imagine you are, I don't think Steve would make it into my team, so he's getting a bit cocky here. I want to know what your opinion of him, because he's told me he's great on it. Well, it you, you've hung out of order first of all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you have a good night when you're with us? Um, I tell you what, I wish I, I wish I hadn't lost a tenner every time I've come down. <laughs> That would have improved it. You <coughs> point out there about the football analogy. Mm-hmm. Alex Ferguson, yeah. when did he score a goal? Right. He doesn't. He tells the others how to do it. Mm. Yeah. Right? Mm. That's, that's he doesn't role, take up one of the eleven, though, does he? No, exactly. It's not like he can only field ten. Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> we've only really got ten again. I, yeah. I want to be in the eleven. <laughs> exactly. He's not running around in midfield, <laughs> no, falling no. over. Yeah, shouting, oh, what have I told you? Yeah. No. Right. I'll admit, And right? there's a limit of five players, we should explain that, that's the point. Yeah, there's only five players, players on the players, team. Yeah, so, yeah, so. but it was pretty tricky on Tuesday though, wasn't it? It was one of the tougher- T T tell, tell everyone one. the one question you got right. It was something about, uh- Well tell us the answer, the two words you had to say to get the answer. Danny Minogue. Danny Minogue. <laughs> <laughs> that was what you provided, Danny Minogue. <laughs> Is this valuable? Uh, well, no, 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 no not really, because, 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 because there was at least two of us who also knew the answer. Oh, well, he, uh, we, we he gave him, we gave him, we, provide, no, exactly, we gave it to Carl, we massaged his ego, oh, but, dear. um, oh. I just feel Carl, I, 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 do you know what, I'm a little, I feel a bit bad now, because I've just either had a crushed face then. Look, can I just it, tell it, you right it, now? He just can't believe this. Can I just tell you right now, I think the problem is this, I think there's that precious fifth position that is not being filled at the moment, I think consistently enough by a decent player, right? You've got a solid team, I'm thinking if you want to remain on the team, you are going to have to pull your finger out and find a fifth member that is going to provide, and I'll tell you where the weaknesses are, I can tell you right now, mate, the weaknesses are natural history and science. Oh. Something which Ricky Gervais is scoring on week in, week out on his team. There's, there is a few Now, if he was available for a transfer, we could be fine, but we've got to find someone to fill in that space. Otherwise, I'm either going to quit, or you're going to have to step down. Because I don't think I can be on a team where, where, where there is these loses obvious £10. deficiencies. There and, are visible deficiencies and in the team. And, you know, the ten pounds. That's ten pounds. I'm not <laughs> made of money. That's once a month. I've seen him depressed for two hours when he lost twenty pounds at a casino don't after bring five it back. hours don't bring, don't bring that back. Don't yeah. bring up that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that story. He doesn't like wasting money, Carl. You know that. What do you think? What do you think? What's the solution? We've got to be- we've got to think proactively now, we've got to sort this out. See, there's always other things going on in my mind when I'm in that pub quiz. For me, it's just a little bit of fun. Sure. It's a night out, yeah, do you know what I mean? Better. Suzanne enjoys it. Yeah. Bit of a get together, we have a chat beforehand. Yeah. We have a bit of fun. Yeah. But there's other things on my mind. What Carl, thinking? I could do that here, I don't no, have to lose a tenner. Wait, what were you thinking during the quiz then, when the questions were coming out? What were you thinking of? Well, what it was, right, just before the quiz started, I had to- Go to the toilet, right? Because the rule is, right, people who don't go to it, once it starts, phones off, oh, yeah, no more toilet. The room, they yeah. take it dead serious, don't yeah, they, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I went to the toilet. Now, I'm not being out of order here, it just got me thinking, right? I went to the toilet. The gay fella in there, right? <laughs> there was a gay fella in there. Gay fella in the toilet. Now, well, how, how could you, you know? tell? How did you know? Just typical, you know, everything about it, right? It. Everything about it, right, yeah. Oh. Well, large hand of my moustache, what, what, leather what, what, cap. But, but plugs, and we'll night Could I just say that these views do not reflect the views of the management of XFM or me and Steve. Go or on, most Carl. of the people in this country. On go, on, go on, Carl, what's your problem? Yeah, but this is what I'm worried about, really, but this is why I only got Danny Minogue right, <laughs> right? Because this was floating around my mind. <laughs> Went She's to the toilet. Guy, like, now, she? going to the toilet, they have, they have like, men's cubicle, and they have women's cubicle. Yeah. Now, without sounding out of order, is it wrong for me to think gay men should have their own little cubicle? <laughs> Go on in! They should <laughs> have their own- well, not cubicle, you mean an actual toilet, yeah. I suppose. When I was at the urinal, yeah. normally, you know, there's a fella there, and then you go, alright, and there's no pressure. But I couldn't- I couldn't go. I was thinking, should I wait? If I go into the toilet, it'll look obvious. Yeah. I had loads of pressure and but this was going on. what were you worried about? I'm so sorry. What I'm were you so concerned sorry, about? Viewers. I'm so well, sorry. Well, it's like, right, listen, when I was a kid, right, 
And it's all right for you to go into women's toilets when you're a kid. It's like, oh, it's a bit cute, yeah. right? As long as you're not, like, over fifteen or something, right? Right. But when I was a kid, I went into a toilet, and women, when they use their little cubicles, they don't shut the door. Some of them just sit down on the- on the toilet. Yeah. Right? And you see everything. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> No, seriously, that's probably one of the <laughs> first times I saw, like, a woman. Yeah. That, right? I mean, Auntie Nora when she was staying over. <laughs> what happened with your Auntie Nora? She was, um, she's into wearing caftans. Into wearing what? You know, caftans. Oh, what, yeah. What caftans? Big, bellowy sort of dresses. Right, so. right. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I used to sit on the floor at home in front of the telly. Sure. She was on the chair behind. Yeah. She did a bit of a, sort of a Sharon Stone scene. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Did you see it? There was no underwear. No. <laughs> what, what age it? were you? What was it like? What age were you? It was like a ripped tennis ball. So. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> right, we're off air. We're off air. Either that will put you into the stomach. <laughs> that's how I'm living. Ice tea. That's how I'm living. A bit of old yeah. school hip hop. Where's our tea? Right. <laughs> Good point, yeah. Right, go and make me a cup of coffee or something. Well, before you do that, can I just qualify something? I'm a little bit concerned yeah. about your your toilet discussion. Well, what exactly is your point again? I'm yeah, just a bit bemused. You see, it's, it's a tricky one. All I'm saying is, right, there I was at the pub quiz, I go to the toilet, not thinking about anything, I try <laughs> to go, right, there's a little gay fella next to me. <laughs> I love this little gay fella. Now, the weird thing is, there's nothing stopping him having a little, little glance, right? Because he's allowed in, in the fella's toilet. Yeah. Now I'm not allowed to go into the woman's toilet and have a little, have a little look round. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm saying is, should they have another, another toilet area? What, for gay people? Yeah. And, so this would be gay men and lesbians? Uh. Is that going to complicate things? Well, I mean, I can only assume. I mean, to what point? Uh, that's your question, right? If you're intimidated, that's. I mean, that that that's a shame. But you know, most gay men aren't looking at your knob. You know that. What do you mean? I can only say that ninety nine point nine percent of gay men who use a urinal standing next to what they assume is a heterosexual man aren't looking at his knob. And what they're doing then? They're, they're emptying their bladder. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, you, I you, can't, I can't talk. You're much, saying, Carl. you're saying like, you know, about would you have one toilet for lesbian women and gay fellas, right? Well, does that mean? Yeah, would it be mixed? Would it just be? Well, would it be have a? Would it have a man and one? That's heterosexual man. One little picture of a woman, there, and then what? What would the little icon be? To a man and a woman. A man and a woman. Just having a chat. Yeah. Right. In pink and dark. Well, you, you couldn't mix them because then what would happen is you'd get people who who were going, oh, I'll, I'll play, I'll play up to this a bit. Or yeah. pretend to be gay. And yeah, you know, sort of grow a moustache and shave their head and pretend to be a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So so well, I see. So you know, people pretending to be gay so they could go in and have a look at the lesbians. Yeah. Right. So that would mean that we need four cubicles now, wouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, no, this is fine. Four cubicles is fine. <laughs> so, so every pub now- How many toilets do we need <laughs> Every pub has now got four toilets. Oh, Carl, bisexuals! <laughs> yeah, no, interesting. Bisexuals! How many toilets do we need now? <laughs> Call you, the council! Do you use any? Huh? No. No, because no. they're interested in everything, aren't they? Because a little bisexual fellow will be looking at your knob. Right, with them, yeah. what you do, you just have a door, you open it and there's one urinal there, so you can't get a queue. They have to, they have to sort of wait. I just thought, look, well, why can't there just be a, a thing between the urinals so anyone, no one can look at anyone else's knob? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just to go back to Ricky's point, what stops, even if we've got the toilet for gay men, what stops the gay men who want to have a look at your willy going in the regular toilet and pretending that yeah. they're straight. Most men don't, Who's wear, police don't this? wear gay across their <laughs> no, head. No, exactly. They don't have a tattoo. There's no branding yet in the British <laughs> house where they have to declare. So we're gonna have to expand this. What so we've all got to carry, carry identity. Do you, do you know cards. you can see a gay, can you, coming a mile off? Can, no? 
No, I'll just hold it in next time. No, 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 no. Can you tell gay men? Do you know a gay man? I'd say, uh, probably, if you did like a, if you lined some people up yeah. and said, point them out, I reckon I'd get- But hold on, we're not talking about people dressed in leather with the arse cut out and an handlebar moustache. Yeah. We're talking about, uh, you know, the everyday no, non-scene- No, of course, oh, well, Yeah, but I mean, uh, suppose I put you in a room and there was ten naked men, right? Yeah. And, uh, could you, there's five gay men and five heterosexual. Could you walk along that line looking at those gay- uh, Am I naked? No, you don't have to be naked. Why would you have to be naked? To catch them out. Play a record! I was one horse town on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Now, Carl Pilkington is getting ready. It's the start of a new strand in the show, a new quiz, a new competition to replace Rockbusters. Now that's quite a tall order, but yeah. what have you done? Right, like I said, right, if you've only just tuned in, what it is, I took, and I'll be taking, a well-known saying every week from the show, something that crops up a lot. Uh, first one that sprang to mind was- There's a little gay fella standing next to me in the urinal? That's next week. Okay. This week, there's this airy Chinese kid. Right? Yeah. That crops up quite a lot. Sweeping the nation. Right. So what I've done, I've got five songs. Yeah. And I've edited them together to make that saying. You've got words you've, f from songs where any part of that sentence occurs yeah. to recreate it. Yeah. Now what do they need to do? Do they need to say what the song is? Just the five songs? I mean I, I was gonna say song and artist but if you want, just the song. So five, there's five things there, and if someone doesn't get all five, it's still worth emailing in because we might give it to the one who's got the most and then- yeah. uh, Can I suggest, uh, we go for artist rather than song, only because sometimes it's quite tricky to get a song title, sometimes it's more, it's very odd or it's not quite what you think it is, so maybe artist is a, is an easier one. You, are you happy with that, Carl? It's your composition. Right? I mean, Steve always does this whenever I come up with an idea. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to make sure it's just the best it can yeah, be, Carl. Yeah. Yeah, no, he came up with a few game shows and Steve was going, no, it's no good, and Carl said to me, he said, it's the one that the office ever got on telly. Yeah, but, well, we shall see how cheap his chimps plays out, but frankly, <laughs> the, fact that, <laughs> the fact that you said to me, Steve, I've come up with the best game show ever, it's called Cheapest Chimps, what's the idea? I don't know, I just like the name. I, it's something to do with chimps. I thought, well, I'm not sure that's the best, the best game show ever. And well, what was I the th other one you came up I with think that you told me I think a few people will be disagreeing with him, Carl. I think people will say that Cheapest Chimps could be the best game show ever. You know, when I was in school, people like you, I really didn't like. You're a stirrer, Gervais. He flits, doesn't he, from one side to the next, Carl. The one thing, we may argue, mate, but at least we're consistent. Ricky Gervais flipping from one side to the other. One day he's Carl, on Carl's side. when was the last time Steve wrestled you to the ground and got you in a leg clamp? No, you're right. Never. What, is, is that to be a good thing? Well, did you see us? Yeah, I saw you struggling in the, in Carl's office earlier. He was punching my legs to release me. We were on the floor. And I was squeezing him with my mighty legs, wasn't I, Carl? Right. It was like, I imagine that's what a crab feels like when an octopus has got it. <laughs> we were playing that, weren't we? So anyway... <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll play you this clip now, it's ten seconds long, we'll play it a couple of times because you'll need to take it in. Mm -hmm. Uh, so here it is then. Uh, what are we saying? We're saying artists? Let's go with artists. Artists. So email in ricky.gervais at xfn.co.uk, name the fa five artists it has taken to make up the saying, Give that email Sarah address Chinese again. Kid. Give that email address again. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. There's this right. airy Chinese kid. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> play it again. I play it again. There we go. <laughs> I think you better play it once more. Oh, right. I've got I've got them. Have I've you got them all? Yeah. That's nice work. There we go. I just go. remind you now that the prizes include a uh, Red Dwarf DVD, Marion and Jeff, the first series of that on VHS, uh, a Live Forever Britpop CD, and also the very best of Led, Ze Led Zeppelin. Let's play one of those actually while we're here. Brilliant rock and roll.
one of the prizes on Coral's competition this week is the very best Led Zeppelin, that's obviously rock and roll. Uh, we've also got uh, a Live Forever, Britpop CD, Marion and Jeff, and Red Dwarf. And, uh, should we play it again? So people There's have got this hairy chance. Chinese kid. Who yeah. are the artists? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky, it's not very yeah. easy. What's more? Yeah. One more. Well, oh, there you go. Ricky Dodgers at xfm.co.uk. Those prizes can be yours. I, uh, at the quiz also discovered, of course, and, um, I don't know. I'm just intrigued to know, Carl. I'm just intrigued to know. Um, it was your girlfriend's birthday, wasn't it? Earlier in the week? Mm, or last week? On Monday, yeah. And, um, say? I mean, obviously it was a triumph with the stuff you got for Christmas. Um, the condoms. The box, the box of condoms. Box <laughs> set, box set of condoms. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not just, <laughs> not just the singles, the <laughs> exactly. whole, the whole set. Yeah, a complete collection. Brilliant. So what did you go for this what time? What did you get her? Yeah, but- No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, but no, 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 yeah, but it's her birthday. How long have you been together? Oh, nine years. Okay, so, ooh, God, it must cost you so much. No, but it starts getting tricky, doesn't it? Because I spoiled her a lot <laughs> in the first few years. <laughs> yeah. So then you Here's start... a packet of rubber bands, enjoy yeah. them. Oh. Well, she, it's what she wanted. Okay. I mean, you're making out as if- No, everyone wants paper clips. <laughs> Come on, what did you get her? Got her a, a new pair of gloves. Right. All right, well. And? What, nice, nice leather ones from Selfridges or Howard's or something? Uh. They were good ones, of the sort she likes, so. They well, they, they, they weren't the little woollen ones that she had. Yeah. I thought that was a joke when she said he got me these, because I laughed. No, that's, but I know that's the, the one she did have. The. When they said it's his birthday, right, it was her birthday Monday, and me and Steve were ordered to get her, and she went, he got me these, because she had those little woollen gloves on, I laughed, because I thought she was joking, Carl. <laughs> that's what she wanted. Right. I've told you before about buying presents. It's, it's Did those gloves have your name sewn in them? <laughs> <laughs> and a piece of string <laughs> that <laughs> ran over the back of your duffel coat. You know, I've never been into getting presents and that. I had the problem at that Christmas one, that time with the Victoria Plum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd I, hate that. We'd hate to bring that back. We've done that. Because <laughs> you talked about the book, because it's kind of to do with your dad, isn't it? He's, he's a very bad gift buyer, was that the problem? Well, yeah, my dad's, I mean, my dad just wouldn't bother. It, it was my mum who sort of made an effort, and she sort of worked out half of what I wanted, then she left it to me dad to get it off someone, see if he could get one cheap or whatever. Uh, what? I, lo I love the fact that usually people talk about, like, drinking heavily, yeah. or, um, uh, violent abuse, right? Yeah. But here's what he's been left with and scarred with from, from parents is bad gift buying. Yeah, and that's the Victoria so Plum incident. In the greatest scheme of things in the world, yeah, but... that's not a bad thing to have, is it? <laughs> Right, there was this, there was this, this is what it's like about getting presents and stuff, right? Mm. With me, with my mum and dad. Go on. My mate, Colin, right? He Colin had a, No, Colin Bailey. Oh, right? yeah. He had a, uh, little, uh, Sinclair Spectrum, right? Yeah. Computer. Yeah. Which was like the, the, the thing to oh, have at that yeah, time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You used to always go around to his house. The it's deal was- Not the one you had to play through the window, cause you weren't allowed No, to no, play. that's another lad. Oh, right? yeah. This is, this is a different lad. And the deal was, he came to our house and my mum gave him a pie. And then I'd go round to his and I'd stay there for a few hours playing, you know, Hungry Oris and stuff like that on it. <laughs> yeah. right? Now, my mum and dad knew that I really wanted one of these computers, right? So I waited about a year, came round to Christmas Day, I thought I reckon uh, might have one. Turned out they bought me the wrong one, they bought me a ZX81 instead <laughs> of a Spectrum, right? And Christmas Day, I'm there trying to load the games up, it's not working, I'm thinking, what's wrong, right? And the thing with me, when I was a kid, I used to get quite sort of agitated This, quite is, the, this is the moment. Right? I found out that it needed a RAM pack to make it work, right? Looking in the thing and it's saying, and, and make sure you put your RAM pack in the back. And I was like, oh, where's the RAM pack? And my dad's going, I don't know, I've got you the main bit, that's, that's it. So, I was that wound up. I just was sick, right? <laughs> <laughs> just sick. I, I didn't feel sick or anything, I just was like, oh god. Went to the sink, just, just sick. Cause I was that on edge about it. I said, come on, we've gotta get one. And my dad's like, Tandy's shut, we're not gonna, we're not gonna get anything today. Ruined again, Christmas day. 
That was after the year when my train set got blown up by our kid. <laughs> the following year, no ram pack. And now you ask me why don't I get good presents. <laughs> He's scared. <laughs> He just, just I'm gonna die. Up. Honestly, I'm gonna die. He <laughs> just screamed <been> sick. Yeah. <laughs> There's no ramp pack. <laughs> what? Why was- did you get to the bottom of it? Why wasn't there a ramp pack? You have to buy them separate. Oh, That's okay. Okay. Con- What do you mean I can't play Frogger? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So, um, there wasn't there another incident when you threw up? Spontaneously threw up? Oh. Through sheer anxiety? I, I do get it. It's, uh, it's not so much now, cos I've, I've relaxed a bit, but as a kid I used to be quite- on edge all the time with certain things. Do you think that's what happened to your the cat? The wind that kept being sick. That it didn't get the food it wanted. And it just threw up. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. God. So they shaved it. <laughs> yeah, but again, you see, the cat thing... I mean, it's mad. I was thinking about it the other day, right? I, I used to think I had quite a normal upbringing. <laughs> you didn't. Right? And someone was talking your about Your mother once told you not to go to school because it was windy, Carl. It yeah, was not I, a normal upbringing. The cat was being sick, so she shaved it, so it was easier to clean. <laughs> right, well, my mum and dad went on holiday, right? And I <laughs> stayed at the Rosses down the road. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Only a kid. Must have been about five or something, right? And, uh, I was always running around in the house. I had a lot of energy as a kid. What the Rosses did, they had this cat that was dead violent, the most violent sort of angry cat I have ever <laughs> witnessed. A tiger. It was, it was, honestly Steve, if it was bigger it would have been, because it was just always having a go at you. Yeah. If you went to pat it on the head, it went to bite you and stuff. And what they used to do with it, to stop me running around, I'd sort of be running around, and then I'd get a bit tired, and they'd say, have a lie down on the settee. So I'd, I'd lie down on the settee and I'd nod off, and what they used to do, I'd wake up and I'd put the cat on my belly. <laughs> right? So I'd be scared to move because it's like it's gonna get me. But it would keep you there. It, it kept me there and it used to sort of slaver on me and they'd sort of, you know, go out or whatever and I'd be lying there. That's not normal, is it? Carl, sorry, were you created by the Brothers Grimm <laughs> for one of their fairy tales? What kind of life is that? <laughs> <What's> <laughs> it, 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 a cat paperweight to keep yeah, car in place. He keeps blowing around. It's windy. <laughs> we'll have to weigh him down. Be careful. They, your mum probably told him that it's a windy day. You got to get some heavy on him. Otherwise, he just gets blown into the road. God bless him, Carl. Let's just hear your uh, your thing once more. Give people a time. final chance. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk Can't stop the spirits when they need you This life is more than just a read through Ooh, those chilli peppers are quite hot Can't stop, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais With me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton right. Carl, you know what, you know what the time is? Bong <laughs> Monkey news <laughs> Yeah <laughs> uh, right. Imagine if Trevor McDonald started like this. Yeah. There's there's been a lot of stuff going on on that with monkeys. Oh yeah. I've also I was mentioning earlier how we sort of making the grocer that the gro- the feature grow a bit, uh-huh. right? So I'm thinking. Oh, I haven't told you, Steve, either. I've actually been asked to write a thing about monkeys. A poem. I no, what? no, for a magazine called uh, something Apes. Right. They it want me to do. Ape. They want me to do uh, like a column, five hundred words about about, apes. about monkeys. Anything I want on monkeys. Anything. What are you going to write? Don't know. If, you know. Think about it. Well, Did give him a typewriter. Right? I can't with Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you could anyway, write about that. Why didn't you write about that? You do not the fact that you don't believe it. You don't believe that an infinite because, number of monkeys because, could type because you watch Shakespeare? Because you reckon most of them haven't read Shakespeare, so they wouldn't know the, some of the spellings. <laughs> exactly. It wouldn't happen. You idiot. Get on with it. All right. right. The, uh, there's been a few things, but one that springs to mind is, uh, they found a load of monkeys somewhere. <laughs> right. This is brilliant. <laughs> yep. I mean, imagine this if this was news. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Uh... Where? Somewhere. I think it was in, uh... 17th century? Uh, I don't- it doesn't matter that bit. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Found a load of monkeys yeah. that are, uh, having a good chat. <laughs> Go on. They're having a good chat, alright. We've found mean? monkeys that can talk. Yeah. Um, about- f- they've worked out- they've got about 534 different words that they're using. 
to, like, have a chat about stuff. More than you. <laughs> yeah, what do they chat about, then? Just, you know, things that monkeys are worrying about. Just, <laughs> you know, where do you get that from? Uh, <laughs> you know. Who does your hair? <laughs> you going over there again, are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Have you seen that, uh... Sorry, you can't just leave that. No, 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 I'm just intrigued. I'm just intrigued to know what else. Is there any... No, were I they, mean, that, that Were they discussing the humanity? Did you see that program on Channel 5? Yeah. yeah. He can walk up right. Yeah. But I mean, what, Did you see they, how well handled it was? You mean they taught them- they taught- they taught themselves this language? Yeah. Where? Where is this? In the wild is this, is it? Um... Not sign language, it's but- It's in- in some jungle somewhere. They found these monkeys. He heard some- you know, some explorer was over there. Cutting through the- the woods and that. And he heard his name. Heard and he thought, that's what he went, what do you want, Riley? Well, it wasn't me, I didn't say. Yeah. I- I didn't say I always snod grass, where'd you get that gun? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I, well, it's only me and you here. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> weird, isn't it? No, it's not weird, it's not true. Well, right, come on then, what's well, next? Once again, but what I'm thinking, well, I mean, that did happen. So, um, well. Um, and to sort of add to that feature. That, that's not true. We're doing, uh, cheapest chimps. Right. Can I just say now to the audience, if you thought that Rockbusters was bad, if you thought that that piece of rubbish earlier about the Chinese hairy kid was, was bad, I, I'm suspecting this is gonna be really not very good at all. I don't- I'm not- I'm just pointing the finger. What I, do you think of it? What do you think of his negativity, Carl? And- and- He just space? keeps- he keeps doing it. I just don't think you should start with the name of the quiz first. This is my- this is my only concern. You- you- you come up with cheapest chimps, <laughs> and now you're trying to construct a game around that. See, and I'm works. not sure it's a proper- well, okay, let's- what is the game? Let's hear it. Right, it's about, uh, a chimp, right? Surprising. Uh, I spoke to an expert about him. Um, Who was the expert? Someone at London Zoo. Okay. Um, how many bananas do you think a little chimp, well, they've got at London <laughs> Zoo eats a day? <laughs> right. <laughs> How many is bananas it, does a little this, chimp at London Zoo? Can they Zoo? call in for this? No, I, I'd, I'd leave it. I'm just testing it out on Steve because we've already got an email thing going on here. So how many bananas do they eat a day? So one chimp per day, how many bananas? Yeah. How many bananas does a chimp eat a day? And does this mean that, because sometimes I've seen them on the telly, they peel one, they'll just eat a bit of it and then they'll throw it away. We're talking a whole banana? But how many bananas does it eat a day? Um, <laughs> how many bananas angry. do you eat a day? Okay, <laughs> angry. Come on. Well, I, I'll- I'll try and have two if I've got time, but I'm <laughs> okay. pretty busy. Well, I'll go- <laughs> Swing on your tire. <laughs> how many- how many do you have? I think, uh, a, a little monkey, a tiny little monkey, per day, uh, <laughs> over the course of a day, I reckon he probably eats fifteen bananas. Right. Ricky, what are you going for? Little chimp at uh. London Zoo. But, hold on, but- but presumably they don't only feed it bananas. So okay. it's- so it's- so the question is- It's how many bananas does it eat? Come on, yeah, Rick! Yeah, how many does it get given? It would eat fifteen if it was given fifteen, but it might be given a, one slice of banana, fifteen oranges, two hundred potatoes and some lettuce. How many bananas does it eat? Come on. It's Five. Just, have a guess. Five? Yeah. Right. It's only one. Yeah, cause it only gets given one. Cheap as chimps. <laughs> what? So what? it's pretty cheap to have a chimp. Right. I'm I, I on your side now, Steve. I don't understand what happened then. Wait, so, in the end of it, you always shout, Cheap as Jim. <laughs> <laughs> is that. What, what? That's the quiz, is it? Oh, play a record. Wait, card. so is that it? Is that seriously is it? Is that it? Was that, that, was that the first instalment of Cheap as Chimps? Yeah. We'll have to see what the press say about this. And, and, um, and why does it only eat one banana? Because it only gets given one banana. I think that's all it wants. No. So you don't even know, you didn't even bother no, to ask it would, him. it wouldn't just get given one banana or nothing else, it would get given banana and then lots of other stuff like apples, oranges, carrots. It would get given a balanced diet. Cigars. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, it's just how many do they give it at London Zoo? I look forward to playing this again. <laughs> a man we pay. <laughs> Who is he and what is he to you? We have not had any successful answers on your quiz, Carl. We've had people who've got what you get a maximum you put of four. A duck in a microwave. Yeah, yeah. Bill with us. Nice. All right. Cheers. Um, and uh, so I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about um, cheapest chimps. That that's safe. That's going to run and run. That that is going to run and run. That's really got legs. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna check the press Monday. I can only assume it's a triumph. <laughs> exactly, another Pilkington triumph. Yeah. I'm gonna give the prize, if you don't mind, Carl, to 
Karen and Jeff Gillian, because they're the only one that got, they were the only couple that got, uh, the second answer, which was very, very good. But quickly. they got four, did they? But they only got four right. The four right. is the top answer, so should we give so the answer now? play it, now? Carl, and then tell us who each one is. All right. So there you go. I didn't know the second one. No, it's the Chinese kid. So the first one, the last. Last. There she goes. Right. That's George Harrison. No. That's Philip Bailey. And that's Deacon Blue. Right, so it was, it was the Lars. Yeah, what's the second one? Strokes. Oof, that was very tricky. That is hard. George Harrison, Harrison for Harry, yeah. that's all I could get. It was Ari. Uh, Ari Christie, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, no. Uh, Chinese, Phil Bailey. Chinese yeah. War is. Yeah. And Deacon Blue, Real Gone Kid. Real Gone Kid, yeah. There's this airy Chinese kid. Very, yeah. very hard. I love the fact that the normal bit of that, like, the normal bit is like the well-known phrase, there's this hairy <laughs> Chinese yeah, kid. Yeah, exactly. Like, nothing happened there, that's normal. <laughs> there's this hairy Chinese kid. As a phrase that often- in fact, you're right, we must have said that phrase twenty times today. <laughs> what- when was the last time? That was said twenty times. Never. I don't think it's ever been said anywhere. There's this hairy Chinese kid. I don't- I mean- Even in China? I don't think it's that worse. Very rare. Definitely not said in China. <laughs> <laughs> the prizes they've won? The prizes they've won. Red Dwarf DVD, Live Forever, The Best of Britpop, Marion and Jeff on VHS and The Best of Led Zeppelin, well done to Karen and Jeff Gillian. I've also seen no proof of this hairy Chinese kid. None whatsoever. Excellent. <laughs> Alpine Stars, Burning Up on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Steve, you're out of the room there. Mm -hmm. Carl took a phone call from someone. Okay. He's found a cellmate. Right. Not a soulmate, I think one day they will be cellmates. Yes. Because he's just like, he loves everything Carl loves and he was telling Carl stuff and Carl's face was lighting up. Yeah. He's told him of two Russian kids in the circus, they're covered in air and their mum tells them off because they're covered in fleas. <laughs> Carl said, See, that annoys me again, innit? They just, they do something else. And the bloke went, yeah, they should just make money out of being hairy. <laughs> and Carl went, exactly. <laughs> and the, and he said, have you heard the one, the three-legged juggler? And the bloke went, no, what's that? He went, that annoys me as well. Because he thinks they shouldn't have done juggling, they should have done football. <laughs> do you know what I mean though, Steve? There what do you mean a three-legged juggler? What are you talking about? He's a famous three-legged juggler. Oh, he's mega famous! <laughs> he's like the Beckham of wherever he's from. But the other day I was looking in, I don't know, Bizarre magazine or something, right? And there was this fella who, uh, he had no arms. Uh, so you saw a picture of him, his job was fixing watches, did it with his feet. <laughs> Go on. Well, it's just, why pick the most hardest job to do when you haven't got any hands? Crush, <laughs> crush grapes. <laughs> or... Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that annoys me. Oh, crushed grapes! Imagine him being told that and that he <laughs> comes into the, uh, uh, the careers advisory where he goes, Now, uh, what do you want to do, Hargreaves? Uh, make watches? Right, take a look at your arms. Crush grapes, mate. <laughs> Sorry, you're a grape crusher. Next. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. I would love you to be a career advisory in some sort of clinic. It would be brilliant. I love the fact that it annoys you. Here's a man, he's got no arms, he has learned to fix watches with his feet. Yeah. An incredible talent, an incredible skill, he's utilising that brilliantly. That's annoying to you, you are angered by it. Right, I I'm only being honest. Now you be honest, right? Your watch is broke, who would you go to? You're in a rush, you need it fixing in a rush. <laughs> now, you need some fresh wine. <laughs> 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 Oh, Be honest. oh, you're amazing. But what's this thing that you've been talking about, this video? Freaks, right. It was a thing that was banned for like 50 years. Uh, I think it's been taken off again, but I don't know why if it's just been deleted, right? I, I, it's a quest. If anyone out there has got a copy of Freaks on DVD or VHS, can Carl borrow it, please? I just, I, I mean, I almost want to set up a camera to see him watching it. Um, it's absolutely real, they use people in the circus of the time, I think it's the twenties or thirties of the depression, and there's, there's people, there's coneheads, there's a bearded lady, all genuine, there's a bloke they call the human slug who's got no arms and no legs, Carl, and he's just there and he rolls a cigarette and lights it with his mouth. I think 
I've seen his brother, <laughs> who isn't called the human slug, is called the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> right? How does he make a living? He, um... <laughs> does anyone want a meat car for money? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like that, the annoying thing was, right, there was a picture of him, I was gonna put it on I our- I think I've seen his brother! I've, uh, on our website we've- we put things up like this, right? If you go to ricky.gervais at xfn.co.uk forward slash- What? You put things like that on my website? It's nothing to do with me. I want people to know that that website is not kept or looked at by me. So, I don't- what have you put on there? There's a fella on there who's known as The Pillow. <laughs> And he's, God. um, you see, I, I get a bit worried with things like this, because we're not sort of having a, having a go or anything, it's just things that fascinate, fascinate you. Me. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's a guy, it might, it might be the same sort of thing, what's your one I called? bet you used to stare at people with goiters, didn't you, when you were little, in Tesco's? Well, just go, go to xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky, it is. What's the worst thing you've ever seen on, like, a human face? You know, you know what it is, and what I don't want to talk about it. I can't remember. Have no. you told me? Yeah. What is it? But go it's not go the elephant to, lady. Go to the- can... Yeah. Is it the elephant lady? You talked about that, I know. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it again. Go to the website and see the human pillow. <laughs> Why I... is he a human pillow? That's what annoyed me. I thought he was more of a draft excluder. <laughs> 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 oh, that breaks all kinds of rules. <laughs> in the head. Now, things are flying here at XFM. We, we, people have called in, there is a video of freaks on the way, Carl's gonna see that within the week. That's exciting. That's exciting for me, do you know what I mean? <laughs> about our education of Carl. We started off trying to teach him about science and history and now we just find that he likes pictures of airy Chinese kids and Who women. Doesn't? Who doesn't? No, true. You've got a theory about pictures of freaks, haven't you? Uh... Uh, you, see, you see, you always bring things up that I don't want to talk about, because I'm, I'm really worried that people, if you've just tuned in for the first time, it's the first time you hear it, and we're talking about every Chinese kids. Yeah. Talking about the human world. Carl, Carl, listen. People don't think that you're taking the piss out of those people. They lump you in with them. They, yeah. Do you know what I mean? They, they think that you're a freak of nature. So you can say anything you want. Do you know what I mean? Because it's honest, it's from the heart, it's genuine. So. Don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, but Suzanne was saying last night that I, I've just, I've got a heart of stone, or whatever it is. Why? Because, because I wasn't crying at Comic Relief. And I, all, I, all I always used to say to her, get out Elephant Man, let me watch that for 30 minutes, I'll be crying my heart out. Why? Why do you care about that but not Because it's, that? that, that is more real, isn't it, right? Think of John Merrick. Sorry, sorry, what, the film starring John Hurt is more real than footage of starving people in Africa. No, but what I'm saying is, think about... See, this is why I didn't want to bring it up, because people are gonna <laughs> just say... Well, you're allowed to cry at what you like. You can't, people can't have you for not yeah, crying imagine, at someone and crying imagine, at someone else. Imagine that, like, if you've seen the film, you know, his head's all, you know, messed up and that. Yeah. He's getting picked on all the time. Yeah. By Michael Elphick, I remember. Yeah. yeah. It's just really, really sad. Whereas, you know, we try to help But you give him a bun people. and he forgets it. Do you know what I mean, though? He never forgets, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway. Oh, God. We're giving away stuff again. Yeah. Um, time Tell me the theory about p p p freaks who have their picture taken. No, I'd, I'd leave it. No, can I tell we'll you? We'll do it next week. Can then? I tell you what this Go is? On quickly, what is it? Right, when he sees a little picture, like in his books, he's got he carries round those oh, yeah, yeah, things, yeah. right? And there's like a, a fella with a little head with some like uh, uh, able-bodied people. He goes, the only reason he must know the only reason they got to take that picture, right, was so they could show their mates, say, look at me, the little <laughs> fella with a little head. <laughs> that's what. That's his theory. Yeah. So every picture of a of a of a freak, they're right, being Steve. Explored. Let me describe the picture to you. <laughs> This, this little fellow with a little head. Right. Playing on the piano. <laughs> I've seen it. All his family stood around and mates and that. When have you ever seen a picture of someone playing the piano and everybody wants to be in on it? <laughs> Doesn't happen. Maybe it was one of those kind of Christmas. 
<laughs> cards. They it sent wasn't, it to everyone. It wasn't, it wasn't. You could see one of them was like in a rush to go away, he was probably uh, planned to go out, and he was like, but they were taking a picture, it's oh, I'll be in it then before I go out, and it was all, he's out of order. Yeah. If you say, if, do you know the one I, I mean? do know the one you mean, yeah. You go, what about the one in the, uh, when you went down to Cornwall? In that little we'll pub. We'll talk about that next week. What, what, do you want to get on, do you? Yeah, right. We've got a giveaway, uh, another prize? Yes, um, you lucky, lucky people. For those of you that haven't seen it, and do not have the requisite £4.99 to buy it yourselves, <laughs> you can win on VHS cassette, panned and scanned. <laughs> Billy Elliot, the special edition, includes bonus um, documentary, The Billy Elliot Boy. Oh, and, I, I, um, I'd like to see how they really sort of got, made that film. Exactly. Well, it's the, it's the, it's the hit film, Billy Elliot, and you can win that on VHS. Um, because Carl, I assume you have included yourself in an excerpt from the movie. Taken a scene from the film. Uh -huh. Who do you play? Billy? I'm playing the part of Billy. Brilliant. And, uh, we'll have a question at the end of Come it. Come on. Yeah. Brilliant. Two, three, part of Been, uh, just been down the valley. So you don't know where you. What are you looking like that for? What's wrong with Bally? What's wrong with Bally? Yeah, well, what's wrong with it? It keeps you fit and that. What do you think, Auntie Nora? What do you think about me doing Bally? I used to go to Bally. There you go. She used to go to Bally. I used to say I could have been a professional dancer if I'd had the training. Bet you were pretty good, weren't you? Wasn't the time you, uh, wasn't the time you had wind for five minutes, was it? But you've well glided across Will the- Will you just shut up! What's wrong with Bally, anyway? For girls. No, no, not for lads, Bally. Lads do football, or- Well, I've done that, yeah. Boxing, or- Did that for a couple of weeks, so... Wrestling. Wrestling? Yeah, wrestling, yeah. Oh, rigging. Well, well, don't worry about it anyway. Just... Is it all right if my mate Wayne stays over tonight? He just wants to sleep over. He's just coming over to sleep. Wayne, sleep? Yeah, he just stays over. I'm not gay or anything, he's just, I don't fancy him, I'm not- Yes, you do. I don't. Yes, you bloody well do. What, just, just because I want my mate Wayne to sleep over and I've started doing ballet, that, that turns me into a gay man, does it? You haven't seen my Village People album lying around. You're asking for a hate Just that. joking, just having a, just having a laugh. Just didn't mean... <sighs> I've nothing here, I'm going out. Well, from now on you stay here, you look after your nana. What's that? Yeah. Well, there it is. What's the question? Powerful. Uh, I'd like to know what was the name of the actor that Carl was taking the role of. Does that make sense? That's not yeah. grammatically quite right, but anyway, well, yeah. Fine. Who was the uh, Who was the young lad that uh, Carl was taking the place of there? Uh, name the actor, not the character. And just email in Ricky Dot Gervais at XFM dot co. You can, you can win yourself. You can be fast. You can win yourself a VHS edition of Billy Elliot worth four pounds ninety nine price. I'm going to leave the uh, sticker on, which has actually got the price on. Brilliant. I'll leave that on so you know just what you've got in you. Foo Fighters? No, it's not. This is feeder. Feeder. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing now. Why have we got to stop? Sorry, we just had an argument then. Why have we got to stop at 5-2? It's just, uh, the, the football's on, isn't it? So... So yeah. we, what, what can we do? We can do a link here, and then we can play- we can we'll talk play here, we'll play a song, do a little What about chat. the competition? We've got to announce the competition. Well, Steve- Well, yeah. I can tell you right now that, um, there's only two people, it would appear, that are interested in a VHS copy of Billy Elliot. Um, that's how mediocre that gift and that prize is. Carl, I don't know if you want to learn from that. Yeah. But I'm going to give this one to, uh, MJ McKay, who has correctly identified that you were taking the part of Jamie Bell. That's in it. Billy Elliot. So, uh, well done. Right, just fold me that and I'll, uh, sort that out. We'll get the video. What film are you doing next week? Don't know, I've got, uh, been out and bought a couple. Got, uh, got Silence of the Lambs I can do something with. Right. Uh, bought Fight Club, but it's a bit difficult. Uh, you know, always, always open to suggestions and that, so. You got any favourite films? What about the 1930s film Freaks? Oh. oh. 
Can't wait. I cannot wait for That'd your. Be brilliant. That'd be good. I'm excited about that. Why don't you do a film review of that next week as well? Yeah. Well, it depends. If the fella, you know, if, if anyone's got it, just send it in. I'll send it you back once I've watched it. So that'd be good. Uh, next week we'll do. Uh... Oh, please, please, please tell me there's going to be more cheapest chimps. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. We'll see what the press say. We'll see what the press say about that. Looking we'll forward to that. Do you know how, like, you're always having a go at my ideas? Yeah. Little, yeah. you know, cheapest chimps you put down. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, I, I normally come up with these because you don't come up with a competition sure, idea. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, he's done yeah. him again. Yeah. Well, cheapest chimps, mine, you're dissing it. Yep. Rockbuster's one of the most successful competitions ever. Uh-huh. Uh, and he means in the world, not just yeah. on XFM. Yeah. You put that down. Yep. Right? Uh, what are you thinking about this, right? I was watching Comic Relief okay. last night. Came up with an idea. Mm -hmm. Right? You get Jono. Okay. Jono right? Coleman, yeah. Uh, say, Vanessa Feltz. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, Dawn French, cause, cause she'd be around for that. And then get them all in a room for comic relief. And what you do, put a cake in front of them. Yeah. Right? And, and like, you, you don't feed them. And like, they're going, oh, I'd love a bit of that cake, <laughs> right? It's called Famine Academy. Right. <laughs> right? Whilst they lose pounds, they get pounds. <laughs> right. What do you think? Play a record, Carl. Well. I love it, Again, Carl. again. I love it, Carl. I mean? Yeah, again. I love it. Oh, that's them red hot chilli peppers and they can't stop. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, you're listening to XFM 104.9. Coming through today, it's noisy again out there. It's a nightmare. A lot of people mm -hmm. marching up and down. What's that about? Well, from what I can work out, there's hundreds of them, millions mm -hmm. of them, mm -hmm. and, they're all, and they're all shouting really loudly, what do we want? Peace. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Peace. I want to go, shush. Yeah. We sure. all want a bit of peace on a Saturday. Yes. Keep it down. Please. I can barely think hear myself think. I know. And yeah. he's not listening. Tony's yeah. not listening. He can't hear from there. You may as well give up. He's not listening. <laughs> there was a million of you last time. It didn't do anything. Hey, but Steve, there's no attitude. You know what? I couldn't find Boy George's War War is Stupid, so here's a bit of Dylan. Bob Dylan. The times, they are a-changing. The thing is, Rick, thing is, Rick, it makes me wonder if, uh, the times, are they changing? I mean, it seems to me that life's pretty much the same as it was way back in the 60s when Bob Dylan wrote that song. Got any idea what you're talking about? No idea whatsoever, You Rick. don't really know about politics, No, know anything about it. Don't even read the papers. Got no, no interest, really. Yeah. Not particularly informed. My life's cushy. Uh, I got won some awards and stuff. Didn't bother me. So, um, On a serious note, everyone. though, uh, it is a bit worrying. What? I want somebody to put my, do, 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 do I have to get gas masks or something? No, no because there are guys out there in Leicester Square today wearing novelty hats. <laughs> if they don't sort this war out, oh, well, then no one can. Okay, well, you I'm see, not talking you about it. See, you, you would worry about it. I would worry about it. Well, you, maybe Steve. Why? Sort of people who, who are successful, are worrying about it more than other people. Just because, they, well, they've got more to lose, haven't they? <laughs> right. <laughs> No, do you know what I mean? You see, like, Bruce Willis on the telly saying, oh, it's not good, is it? And it's because he's got a big house and loads of cars. If you live, you know, on a council estate, it's like, well, if it gets bombed, probably doing us all a favour, we'll get nice new blocks of flats to live in and that. It happened with Manchester, with the, with the bomb that happened, and they bombed the Andale Centre. Did us a favour. Got a nice new Marks and Spencers and that. <laughs> so this, hold on, this puts a whole new twist to the argument when people say bombing the world's poorest countries is wrong. Because I remember when the Afghan problem was on, people were saying bombing the world's poorest countries is wrong, but, but it's like home improvement according to you then. Yeah. Because they've got a brand new B&Q, have they, over there? <laughs> 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 They're popping down there every right, Sunday. Anyway, let's not go on about it. Yes. Yeah. Well, think what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> My family was killed, but look, a carpet warehouse. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, I, I, I think, you know, people don't want to hear about this today from us. They want to hear, you know, the new features, the songs of phrase. I <laughs> 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 hey, what songs of phrase? It's the feature we started last week. Yeah, right. Where we, where we take clips of songs, we make up a phrase from the show. I yeah. mean, the, a famous phrase, last, last week's world famous phrase was, there's this airy Chinese kid, yes. you'll remember. Yeah. Yes. Well, it was, it was called Crosswords last week, but Phil emailed in a good suggestion. Right. He said, call it Songs of Phrase. Brilliant. Songs Brilliant. of Phrase. Right. Songs of Phrase. But, perfect. So, are we, got, are we still going with Cheapest Chimps? 
Uh, we're persevering with that, got, are we? Got some cheapest chimps lined up. We'll be yeah. doing that before three o'clock. Yeah. Great. Again, who else can say that? <laughs> <laughs> So good for it. So for the next two hours, everyone should just bury their head in the sand, ignore the world's problems, and uh, enjoy cheap <laughs> features such as cheapest chimps <laughs> and uh, songs, songs of phrase and a bit of cheering breaks. Oh, class! Oh. Trying to stop suddenly in Italy, TB. Cheering breaks. It's like a rock buster, Carl. Remember the good old days? I know. Yeah, painkiller on XFM 104.9. But look, rock busters is gone. Forget oh. rock busters. Long live songs of phrase. Over to you, Carl. All right. Well, you know, Rockbusters was one of the things they were protesting about next last time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was why I just had to listen to them. They just kept stopping me in the street as I was trying to get to the tube. Right. We've got to stop Rockbusters. It's run out of steam. They said, and I'm glad. Yeah. That's why they always do it on a Saturday. Yeah, yeah. 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 They make their way to Leicester Square for three o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, songs of phrase. Uh, what it is? Songs of phrase. <laughs> Go we, on. we took a phrase from the show last week. It was there's this airy Chinese kid, right? Yeah. Today, we're going back to the good old line of, uh, about you never see an old man eating a Twix. Sure. Right? Uh, how long is that? No, you'll never see an old man eating a Twix. You'll never see an old man eating a Twix. It's not as many as you think, though. No. It's not that many. Well, how is it not that many? Right, well, first of all, anyway, don't worry about that. I think there's about five, I think. Hang on a minute. Oh, God. Why do we leave him alone to do this, I don't Steve? Do you know I mean, it all, it's like, I'll tell you what, we were flying six, then. Six different songs. Six different songs? That's a lot to get, Carl. But what happened is, I couldn't find a song with Twix, so we've changed the chocolate. Oh, uh, this is rubbish. <laughs> we're not doing it. We're not doing it. No, oh, you've got to be punished. Uh, we're not doing this. Do it next one. You'll like no, it. no, 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 shut up, Carl. No, uh, just well, no, 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 we're not doing it. He's put a lot of effort in. So what? You're right. He's got to do it right. He's got to <laughs> do it right. No. There's too many. We said too many. It's not, it's changed the thing. It's not a one of those. It's ridiculous. No, it's absolutely only, pointless. Rick, if only his parents had spoken like that to him sometimes <laughs> in the past, maybe we, we, we wouldn't right. be in this discussion You're not now. doing oh, it. Come on. No! We're not doing it, Steve. What, have you, uh, what do you think? What I'll tell you, we've got the prizes, but yeah. I'm not even going to bother giving, I'm not even oh, going to no, bother. No, no, I think we'll just share it amongst, um, homeless. Absolutely. No, no. There's, there's troubles in the world, and I'm not gonna let you faff around doing nonsense like that. No, well, it's ridiculous. Well, let's, let's do it for No, this let's week. play a beautiful song. What do you think, I'd uh, love to hear a great song. Yeah, oh, the times, they are a change, and we've said that. Um, look at Rick, Mother Nature on the run. Look at Mother Nature on the run, Steve. Yeah. Play it. So we're not doing- No. It's your own fault. Neil Young. Beautiful. After the Gold Rush, one of the most beautiful, poignant songs ever. I Great think. lyrics in that. Look at Mother Nature on the run in the 1970s. Uh, forget the 1970s, Rick. I'm beginning to wonder if uh, that's just as truthful nowadays in the, right. in the year 2003. I've told you before, you've got no idea. You don't know anything about the world or politics, so I don't know why you persist. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying it myself, Rick. I'm a political incompetent. I don't know why I keep spouting on with this drivel. Right. It's the Guardian, I think, that's doing it to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all second-hand information. I just read it in there, and I just so think it was like, a good idea to I get on the, exactly. I keep going back. You don't yeah. really care do you, about anything in the world, really. No, I'm affect you. I haven't exactly. No. Unless no. I'm personally affected by these yeah. things, I don't care less. Well, I'm the same. You now, know. Carl, the big question, as we know at the moment, is whether we're going to let you do songs of phrase or not. Rick, I should tell you now. Mad. There has been a flood of. Oh no, there hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was I was thinking there'd been a flood of emails, but it was people agreeing with you, Rick. I know, I know. Tony Blair has been trying to get through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, um, no, I'm just checking the emails. No, there's there's absolutely nothing supporting so you. So no one gives a side either way about. No, well, that, that's not then. fair. There was there were a couple of phone calls, weren't there? One was the guy saying you should. I think the other one was you, Carl. Was it phoning from the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> Can we so, do it? Can we do it? Right. Uh, no. If you don't like it, we won't do it next week, but, but, you've, but, but I've made it. I don't know what, I don't know why you did that. I, we I thought of uh, lots of stuff that you could do. You chose one where you have to have ten words and six songs to choose. You haven't got Twix. I don't know what you've substituted Twix for. Okay, I, I mean, I, I gotta say now, I'm gonna sit on the fence, so I, I'm quite intrigued. Okay, right, what, what, what have you substituted Twix for? Well, you, I can't well, tell here. you. Because you can. <laughs> No, I can't because people have to listen to it and work out. All right, let's just no. hear it. Let's hear it. Then. No, 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 no. They uh, they know what they have to know what the word is. They have to tell what the song is or the or the artist. I prefer just to play it. No, you've got to tell them what it is. Cause they might not even know what word they're I looking think you for. Just, let's just let's hear him out, Rick. Right. Please, right. democracy. That's what we're fighting for. <laughs> Come on. 
Right, have you turn them off? Right, okay, I'll put the earphones on. Go on then. Right. Okay, so right, hang on, the phrase originally <laughs> was... Is, uh, you never see an old man eating a Twix. Right, and we're trying to identify the, well, a number of songs which you've used to make up that phrase. And you email in xfm.co.uk slash ricky with as many as you can get, and whoever gets the most right can win so the complicated. This it is, is so not complicated. Right, here we go. Here it's we go. I'm baffled by the email address. <laughs> I couldn't well, figure that out. the email address again? <laughs> xfm.co.uk slash ricky. Right. 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 And there's um, some link on there, is there? That, yeah, then right. you just press and it comes through. Or that. Right, here we go then, right? I <laughs> oh, I want <laughs> So okay, right, right so we'd say the prizes, Steve. Right, so how many songs were there? Uh, Do we know? I think it was six. <sighs> you think there was six? Mm -hmm. And you'll never see an old man eat. Uh, oh, it might be five. Yeah, five or six. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> why not email in the answers and how many there were, and uh, you might be in with a chance of winning. On DVD, the original series of Citizen Smith with Robert Lindsay, that was good. Uh, Paul Whitehouse's uh, Happiness, the first series of that on DVD. We've also got a couple of CDs here. The Best of Britpop, Live Forever, Alicia Blair, Radiohead and all the rest of them That's on there. Right. Supergrass's uh, current album as well. That's I right. think it's a current album, yeah it is. And um, okay. less convinced by this one. If I tell you that some of the artists include Adela Mitri <laughs> and uh, Deacon Blue, then I know you'll be rushing out later, Rick, to buy this. Scotland Rocks. <laughs> a compilation <laughs> of. Is wet, wet, wet on there? Uh, let's see. What the about this? What happened to this? Let me see. I'm not gonna. I tell you, it doesn't. I mean, we've got Gun on there. Oh, yeah. We've got. Oh, uh, baby, lately. Uh, Aztec Camera. Yeah. Uh, big Country, obviously. Uh, Proclaimer's not on there. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, where's Runrick? There they are. <laughs> there they are. Uh, and, uh, obviously Rafferty, Baker Street. Do -do 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 -do. Brilliant. So that's, uh, that's definitely worth, um, entering for, surely. So, xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky. Uh, play it one more time. Yeah. Just, just in, right. <laughs> <laughs> class. Pure class. Well done. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go to it. Oasis. Stop crying your heart out on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl's uh, competition is in full swing now. I just will remind you, when playing songs of phrase and trying to guess the, uh, the songs and artists, what do you want? Songs or artists? I think songs. Is yeah. Better. All right. But that, that's ambiguous, isn't it, what a song title is? Where yeah, you I know think it's the artist, artist. Definitely. Maybe the artist who cleans it up really. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Artists. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, if they know what it is, because that, that'd stop any ambiguity, won't it? Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, don't worry if you haven't got all of them, because the winner last week didn't have all of them, but it's the, the closest one. I understand when you're trying to guess what's in Carl's mind, you can only get so close. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's, he wants us to bring in Darren Brown. He go, because he won't be able to read my mind. And yeah. I think he's right. I think he might I be. I think he's the one person that could outwit Darren mm. Brown. Yeah. Um, now, uh, moving on, Carl. Well, we now, have to. Should we just play it very quickly? Uh, just play again. Just Carl's if you're okay, you want to join in. Go on, in one more time. Here it is, Songs of Phrase. <laughs> Because it, because, because you have to get, you know, it is very difficult, so, you know, song or artist, we, we give points if you're, if you're close to any of those, and, uh, we choose a winner, so, uh, you know, do- And what do points mean? Crap prizes. <laughs> XFM. XFM.co.uk. Slash, slash. Ricky. Ricky. Right. Now, mm. we got people to send in, uh, a little thing for you last week, didn't we? The film Freaks. A you little got freak. a few, you got a few, 
sent in. You watched it, did you? Yeah. No, I should just point out that the film Freaks, uh, for those that don't know, was a movie that was released, I think, in the- well, actually, it was delayed- it was originally made in about 1932, something like that, and then it was banned delayed. It was banned years. for many- for many, many years, because it did, in actual fact, uh, feature, for want of a better phrase, real-life freaks. Yeah. Um, the bearded ladies being one of the more, kind of, Familiar ones, the guy without and arms and legs. Arms, there's all sorts, and uh, it was actually quite. A, it's quite a tender film, isn't it? And actually portrays them as a kind of dysfunctional family. It's not. It's not exploitative in that sense. But uh, what do you make of it, Carl? Well, you're watching it for the freaks, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I wish it, it does take a while to get onto it. What uh, do you mean? Well, straight away I was disappointed, right? Because at the start, like you put it in, it's like, oh, brilliant. Here we go. You know, I said to Suzanne, we'll watch this slow good night. Yeah, have a and romantic uh, night. That's it. Birthday. You've got your gloves now. We're gonna watch some freaks. <laughs> so uh, put it on, and it starts off, and it's like you know the following film. You think, oh, it's like following films rated 15, which means you know might contain scenes of violence, bad language, and sex. Yeah. It mentioned nothing about pinheads. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought they missed a the trick there. Yeah. Right? So I thought, well, let's, oh, let's, let's that, watch oh, it. And what that's... exactly is a pinhead? Oh, if you've seen it, you know. Okay. Right, so, uh, not the best thing in it either. So oh. imagine that. <laughs> okay, so you're watching it. So, sat there, I think, right, something comes on, and, and the little fella's on there, the little fella we were talking about, the pillow man. Right. Is, is it, it the best says. thing in it? Now, what's the pillow man again? He's a fella who, years ago, uh, he, he's got no arms and legs. Right. You just, just torso, just and rolls, head. yeah. And uh, there's a scene where you see him sort of rolling <laughs> a cigarette up, just using his mouth, and yeah. it's like he lights it and stuff. And that's yeah. that's weird. And then uh, what else is on it? So it's stands your growth. And then there's a there's a little little fella on it who is fed up because he looks five, but he's actually thirty four. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But there's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> who is 42 and looked eight. So they both had the opposite thing. They were both really fed up. And I kind of thought that shows that, you know, you always want what someone else has got. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. in a way there's a story there yeah. in that. No, you, they, you described the same there. No, no, no. No, it was like... No, they both, you, you just said, they, they both looked young but they are actually both older. No, no, no. This was like a little man. Yeah. Who, who was thirty five? Who was thirty five? And looked eight. Yeah. And so did she. No, well the other way around then. What? So she was an eight year old that looked thirty five. Yeah. So, oh, maybe not then. Anyway, no. But that that wasn't that weird. I kind of thought it's a slow start on that. Yeah. And then uh, it's not a, it's not a difficult film to follow. No. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't really listening to what it's all about. I was just looking at what they had. And they had like a fella who's running about <laughs> on just head, like he was shopping. You know, uh, they had a fella. <laughs> With no legs and he's running about on his hands and right. sort of got about on a skateboard talking to someone about it. They said that's how ET was done. There's actually a, a little fella in ET, right, who's just half of um, sort of half a body. Is that true? I've no idea. I've never heard that. Why before. Why haven't we heard that? Before? I've never heard that before. I don't think he would fit in ET. Because he's I got think... no. Because like, where's the head? He's got no neck. ET. It's a skinny little thing. There's no human neck couldn't fit in that skinny little neck. Uh -huh. Well, you sure, you sure so. it wasn't Kenny Baker up to his old tricks? What no. are you talking about, Carl? There's a fella with no legs in E.T. In E.T. they had two, two fellas, right? I think they had a little, um, a midget fella. Right. Who did it, and then I think he was off sick and they were like, oh, you know, what else are we gonna He's do? He's like, they just, so, so they saw a guy on a skateboard going by. And said, do you fancy some work? <laughs> right. And uh, he's done it. I think someone told me. I mean, it might be yeah, wrong. Exactly. Yeah, it might be wrong. It might be, mightn't it? You, I <laughs> mean, you've never been wrong before, so I don't know why you'd be wrong there. <laughs> what so, what's the it? worst thing in it? <laughs> now, it's intriguing to me because here's a film called Freaks featuring real life freaks, and you're sort of a bit nonplussed by it. Just because it wasn't, because it's built up. If you call a video Freaks, you've got to make sure that there's some good stuff on there. Yeah. What were you disappointed about? Was it that? Because there was a few things on it, right? There was. A woman who said she was half man, half woman, and it's like, well, you're not, are you? It was just like she had some makeup on. I thought, well, that's rubbish. And then there was a woman who could eat using her feet. That isn't that freaky. Do you know what I mean? If she's not hungry, she looks normal. Oh, yeah. And that's when I was thinking. <laughs> I mean, I'm not being not being right, Steve. You know, I'm not being funny. Oh, here we go. No, no, no. But I'm I'm just saying. If that woman wasn't eating and you were sat next to her in that film, yeah, I'd probably be sort of drawn to you more than her. 
I'm not- I, I know you hate me saying it, but there's no point sort of pretending. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oi, Muttley, what you- what are you sniggering about? <laughs> that- that- that face- <laughs> Well, you- you mean there were, there were things in it that were less- What are you saying? I'm just saying- Play a record. No, Seriously, I'll slap you. I'm gonna slap you live on air. Yeah, but you always get- I'm gonna sl- right, I'm slapping you live on air, I swear to god. Alright, play a song then. He's playing a song. I'm playing a song. Keep the finger up. No, keep the finger up. Bruce Springsteen, Atlantic City from the album Nebraska. So melancholy, that one. I love that one. Wow. Um, so, freaks then. All in all, not- not as- not as amazing as you first hoped. It was- it was built up too much. Do you know what I mean? Really? It's like- Is that- is that my fault for getting you excited? I just can't believe it, I hand you this thing on a plate. So I know, but, yeah. And I'm, I'm not- I'm not being out of order, Steve, I'm sure. just- I'm just being honest. We, sure. We've always said that about this show, yeah, we only yeah. talk about stuff, you know. Yeah. That, yeah. you know, being honest and that. Yeah, no, sure. And I've- I've always said the first time I saw you. Sure, no, no, you've always been honest, and I've always, always been honest with you, I've always said that, you know, you've got the, uh, you've got the intelligence <laughs> and insight of a gnat. Yeah, but if I- if I keep quiet, people don't know that. Sure. <laughs> Alright, they so, incredibly- yeah. incredibly yeah. do, Carl, cos you look stupid as well. Well. You know? Yeah. No, but the car yeah. was being nice then. You, d- you don't- you don't- I'm just saying, you're a good bloke and now I've got to know you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, The first time was weird when I saw yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, No, leave then, it. Don't just put it into it. Just let it go. No, right. no, I'm just- I'm just saying, okay. the first time, yeah. it was weird and that, and then weeks go by. Sure. And, you, okay. and the weird thing is, I kind of thought maybe he's not that odd looking. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, 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 yeah. And then- you went to LA for three weeks, sure. and when you came back it was like the first time again. Right, yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I'm just- yeah. Okay, wait, no, stop it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone yeah, stop it now. No, but I, ju- I just think I'm no. a little bit more consistent because I've no, always no, no. thought you were an idiot. Oh, I don't want this! Don't I, argue! I, it was just- okay. No, I just- you know, I'm, right. you know what I mean? My opinion yeah, has no, never changed, I've no. always thought you're, you're an idiot. No! Yeah. No, just, it's just all nice. Lines. Let's look- let's look. Peace. Shut up, fatso. <laughs> Peace, not war. He um, all, he's just such a stirrer, isn't he? <laughs> no, he um, loves it. I don't <laughs> think I didn't see you whispering behind the microphone about what to say to Carl. Look what I've just drawn, Carl, uh, subconsciously. Yeah. Let's see. I drew a picture of him, it's not gonna be on the website. It's not been on the website. No, it's gonna be. I drew a no. little cartoon of him. No, not yours, I drew one of, I drew yeah. one of Carl. Um, right, okay. Uh, what were we talking about? That was a So yeah, no, the freak thing was over and done with. It was <laughs> alright, if you wanna get it out on video. Sure, sure, um, sure. you know, it's probably worth a look. Yeah. There's a couple of things on there that get you thinking more, you know, it's like uh, how their life is and stuff, do you know what I mean? Mm. How it's affected and like the little pillow man. Or the fella who's got half of his body missing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's stuff like that that you think, mm. But you, but what's the, the, the one that was disappointed you said it was a half man, half woman? Yeah, I don't quite understand that one. Do you mean hermaphrodite or half, I can't remember it. Do you mean it was one sort of like, it had bits of both? It was just like, uh, half, half a face done in makeup and long hair, then on the other side it had it, had it changed. I love the idea that you go to this circus and there's people in there that, that have, that have been, sort of persecuted all their life and they think, well, maybe I can make some money, and then you boo them because they're not freakish <laughs> enough. I love the idea of that guy, boo, <laughs> they're not freakish enough, boo. <laughs> oh, you've got bits of legs, boo. <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. But there was, I mean, talking about that, you see, they, why did they get join the circus and that? Because there are things they can do. I was telling you in the week that I was reading something on some news website about some sort of, uh, Olympic style games mm. where oh, they're gonna on. see like disabled people against able bodied. Right. Uh let's be careful there, shall we? No, I'm just saying that. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So there is other things. It doesn't mean just because you haven't got legs you can't do other stuff. Yeah. And in this race there's like disabled people who are beating able bodied people. Yeah. I mean, what? would you go and see that? I don't know. But I mean it depends. What 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 do you mean? They're beating them what at what? I d- I d- he didn't state what the what the little races were and that. Little races. <laughs> Does that just can't help himself. Is that no little races. <laughs> oh look, there's the disabled with their little races. <laughs> yeah, they're having another little race. <laughs> oh dear. Would you, would you go? Would you go on? Um, we'll watch that. Do you remember when D- Jimmy thought that Para Olympics stood for Paraplegic Olympics? The Paralympics. Yeah, it's, it means parallel Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah. thought it meant paralegic, <laughs> paraplegic Olympics. That would be a good sight, wouldn't it? Mainly blow football. 
Right. Right. Okay. So, Matt, what was that thing I told you to look up in the week? You were saying, he said, I, I don't believe you, we were going on about, um, we were talking about the half man, half woman. Yeah. And you were saying- You can get, you can get a sex change on the NHS just to see what you say about that. Did you look it up? I didn't, because I think I was wasting my time. Oh. I don't think you I'm can giving all done. these things. Mm. Little interesting stuff. You're annoying no, me but now. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. You do, uh, you've, you've annoyed, you've annoyed Steve. About. You've annoyed Steve on air. I'm sorry about that. Well, it's just too late, Carl. But we were talking about other stuff as well. I mean, you know, talking about operations and that. You were saying, well, you know, can you have a sex change done on the NHS and that? No, you can. Well, you say you can. I think that's a bit. It's not that important to have done, I don't think. Well, it depends if, if you desperately want it. It depends if you think you feel that you're born actually a different sex. Right. And then you went on to say, there's, there's other things that are done. Get this, Steve. Someone, if they want, if the cat's got a bad liver. Kidney. Right. Bad kidney. Can have it done for five grand. Yeah, you can have a, you can have a cat, a kidney operation. But well, what's yeah. wrong with that? If you've got five grand, you want to waste it on a cat, then fine. Get another one. <laughs> we went through loads of cats, I've told you before, as a kid, we got through loads. It's not worth it and there's no cat that is that amazing that you'd go, gonna miss that one, it's never gonna be the same. Cause what do you mean, what would it have to be able to do to be worth it? Well, it's normally to do with people's affection for their cat, they've had the pet for many years. What do you mean, it should be able to juggle or no, do just, impressions just, and that's why it's worth my friend? Supposing there was a, a fella, right, he's, he feels he was born a woman, he's, he's not happy. Right? He doesn't want this about he's got he's got a knob and a test a couple of testicles that he does not want, right? He wants a lovely pair of tits and a minge, right? And he finds out that he he gets a cut price, he gets, you know, a cut price sort of operation, a dodgy backstreet um uh transsexual maker, right? Mm. Five grand. Knockdown price five grand. It's done with a it's done with a blunt knife and and some chloroform, right? But- But why do you go have it all done? <laughs> what? You mean just like, may have the knob trimmed and wear a bra? Well, yeah, I mean, are you saying if you have it all done you get some sort of offer? If you give them something? No, no, I was being flippant. I'm saying, I was trying to get down to five grand. Supposing there was a fellow, you had five grand to give away, right? Some old woman with her cat is gonna die. Or some fella who wants his knob chopped off and a lovely pair of tits put on. Who would you give the five grand to? So, hang on a minute, so there's a fella who oh, wants Jesus. to be a woman. Yeah. And there's a woman who's got an ill cat. Yeah. Ooh. You see, I'd be annoyed. Who's, is this five grand? Is this my savings or? No, you just, you get given, you get given five grand and you go, but you've got to give it to a charity of your choice. And it's got to be one of them. You give right, them five grand. Right, I'll tell you what I'd do. What? I'd find out what the cat looks like, get a replacement, right? Say, sh say it's had the op. Hmm. She's loving it, thinking it's happy again. Yeah. Give the fella the money. Right. Do you know what I mean? Well, so you're basically saying that you'd, you'd rather have the bloke have his knob cut off and stuff than I'd, I'd, I'd have to have a chat with him first and say, what, what's your problem? <laughs> and say, why, why do you need this doing? And I think they go that. through that. I think they go to mm. counselling and just live with check. a woman for a, like yeah. a- Like a second opinion thing. I'd just let me say, right, are you sure? Yeah. Like, but five grand on a cart? Even, it can only be for people who have got loads of money, right? And it's like, well, five grand, it's nothing. Well, I think this debate will rage on. Should we play a record and come back to this? Think mm -hmm. about it, though. Yeah. Bit of white stripes? No. <laughs> Placebo. Bitter End on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl, you're looking all flustered and confused again. Still, the, the sort of don't get it. What don't you get? Well, like, that's a long list, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, you know, if you have your knob cut off, yeah, it's because they feel like they're actually a born a woman, and this they're not living right. They can't live properly with all the these things, you know. Well, I mean, there there are people that are genetically the the other gender. They've just grown. You know, there was one woman actually who was a scientist researching it and found out genetically she was a man. She had uh, Y chromosomes, etc. But this is something different. This is this is both psychological and everything well, sometimes else. Sometimes it's so, that so thing again, isn't it? You can't always have you know what you want. It's like I'd like to have hair. <laughs> Do you know what but, I mean? But it's a bit easier. You can wear a wig. You can't go around really 
Well, you can put on, you know, but a false breasts and tuck well, it that's, in. that's just it as well, isn't it, you see? You- you say, you know, you could have the operation done and that, and yeah, you might sort of feel as free as a woman down below and that, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you still look like a fella. Yeah, here's a bra and a split tennis ball. No. Oh. They'd be just like Arnie Nora. Do you know what I mean, though? Well, yeah, but it's about uh, their outward appearance as well and how they feel publicly. We, don't forget, a transsexual, it's not a transvestite. This isn't just a, a builder in a dress. They have the hormone replacement as well, so they get estrogen, so oh, they, 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 and so. electrolysis, so they have, you know, their, their face looks different, they, they, they don't go bald, they're slighter, they, 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 you know what I mean? They're, it's the, they're the real thing. A transsexual is now the real thing. Biologically and politically and... But they still still be a man, won't they? Well, it'd be embarrassing if they don't tell their new partner and the, there's pictures of them, you know, down the pub when they were 24, but you probably sort of get over that, don't you? They go, is this the fellow with the beard <laughs> drinking the yard of ale? That was me. <laughs> well, interesting story. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, yeah. Probably should have told you this before the honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, you can have all that done, right? There's, there's stuff, you know, you could have your bits done, right? You can have, like, uh, false teeth, but you know that when you see an old person with a good set of teeth, it's like, well, they're, they're false. There's no <laughs> way you've got good teeth like that if you were brought up in, like, the thirties. But what would you do if Suzanne said, look, I've got a terrible secret, and she showed you a picture of this kid, this little boy, growing up, you know, playing football, and then the pictures stop? at twenty before- just before you met her. And, uh, she goes- and she shows you a nice pair of bollocks in a jar. She goes, they were mine. <laughs> well, first thing is he'd take back the gloves you bought her last week. <laughs> would you go, oh, you ca I can't go out with you now? Or would you say, well, you're the same person? Oh, I've blown his mind. I've really- I've really freaked him out there. <laughs> <laughs> she is into sport. <laughs> hey? And Should we play a record while you give her a call? No, I, but look, what I'm saying is here, right, it doesn't matter what you have done, we can wrap this up here because I've got it sorted, right? Okay. It doesn't matter what you have done, at the end of the day, it's obvious that you've had it done. If, if you're a fella and you've been changed to a woman, I could spot you, right? Mm -hmm. If- You can't though. I'll what? tell you what, I was at- I was at Suzanne's mum and dad's, right, up north last right. week, and I went to the off-licence, right? Yeah. And I went in there, never seen this fella before, right? As soon as I walk in, I- I eye him up behind the counter and go, alright mate. Oh hello. Oh hello. I notice he's got a wig on, right? Yeah. Now, it was- I- I kinda looked and I thought, yeah, it's a wig. Whatever. <laughs> and then, I thought, I wonder if it is, and as I got to the till, I said, how much is that? He said, uh, you know, fifty pence, I said, great. And as he turned to the till- <laughs> Were you buying Suzanne a gift? <laughs> <laughs> as he turned to the till and he did that sort of angle, you got the profile, you see the bit sticking out of the back, you go, that's a wig. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean. And it's it, like a little, it just, it just, the last inch just lifts away from the neck. Yeah. Yeah. You know, everybody who goes in that shop will probably know him as yeah. having a wig and that. He keeps him happy, but everybody knows. So, what I'm saying is, it's like. But I, could I just say, transsexuals put in a little bit more effort than a, a fella who's plonked a rug on top and held it down with some duct tape. Do you know what I mean? You know, the only giveaway often with a transsexual is the big hands. They can't do anything <laughs> about that. That's the only thing, you know. Right. But, um, but I mean, t uh, what, trans transvestites are different, you know, they're, 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 they are builders in the dress. You'd, you'd, you'd go in a supermarket, you turn around, you see a six foot woman, huge head, you go, all right, love. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, you don't, you know, down below, there she's, she's packing more than us three put together. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know what I mean? That- that's one of the- if- if- if, uh, Eddie Izzard, right? You're meeting Eddie Izzard, right? Who likes to pop on a dress now and again, right? If- what's the politics with that? Do you go- because he walks in, he's all in evening gown, and he goes, alright, Carl. And he- and uh, you go, alright, Eddie. And it's in a busy pub, and you go, oh, why is he- And you go, uh, do you say, do you want a pint of bitter? And slap him on the back like you would have Or do you go, that's lovely. That's a lovely dress. Do you know what I mean? What do you do? What do you do with a transvestite? Do Would you, you compliment a transvestite? On their lovely dress. If he was wearing a nice dress. <laughs> In the same way that you would if Suzanne was wearing probably a nice dress. Probably in a prop. different way, I'd probably say, that dress, you know, <laughs> looks nice. Be even nicer on a woman. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean? So you'd try and- you'd try and change the way uh, they think. Yeah. Yeah, you'd want to teach them a lesson. Yeah. 
for sure. In a way. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's one of them things that can't get me head around, to be honest, right? I can handle hairy Chinese kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Ah, is it true? Is it true to say that you've never been able to handle a transvestite? <laughs> so I'm just going to add that to the list then, Carl, of things you that you can't figure out. <laughs> it's like four volumes. <laughs> Snoop Doggy Dog, obviously, in the classic. What's my name? Yes. XFM 104.9. We've done that, so that's good. We've done. So we've solved the whole transvestism issue. Yeah, let me just check. We've done hairy Chinese kids, um, people having their knobs cut off. Um, I think we've touched on the war as well. We've sort of done that. Um, we've done freaks, haven't we? We've done freaks with no arms and legs, haven't we? Take that. I don't think there's any other areas of possible offence. Have we done, have we done Forrest Gump in a wheelie bin? We've touched on your aunt Nora, but haven't mentioned her five five minutes or her <laughs> showing you her <laughs> clunge. <laughs> um, <laughs> hold on, let me see. Uh, I think, I don't know if we've, I think we might have. I'd definitely like to hear the word clunge more often. Yeah. On this show. Her <laughs> Mary. <laughs> anyway, oh, leave that, leave that. Yeah. <laughs> clunge, I'm still non Mary. I'm still none the wiser than that, but. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it. Right. I love the fact you are such a sort of, you're such an old man, aren't you? You're such a reactionary old man, the way you talk. You, I, you are the sort of bloke, I imagine you and your father stood in a pub, if a man came in in a dress, oi, you're a bloke in a dress, take it off. We were talking about, I realised it last week we were talking about things that you can, uh, sort of say and do when you're sort of like 40. I thought another one, nod to a policeman. Yep. Definitely. They're yeah. on the beat, they're going along, you're going, you're doing, you're going on, yeah, yeah, I know you're alright, I know you're alright. Yeah. Never it, mind these youngsters shouting at you and knocking your cap off. <laughs> exactly. It's that you can nod at if a copper. If you're copper. 40, you can nod at a copper because it's like going, I know what you're up to, it's yeah, a difficult yeah, job, yeah, you're doing yeah, it well. Yeah, 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 I, I respect you now, I didn't when <laughs> exactly. I was young, I don't know what I was thinking of, well done mate. Well, I like the one you mentioned last week, you're now of an age where a van driver might ask you to back him into a parking space. Yeah, well, you, you don't feel good, he'd go, you go, get out to of me, the way. To me, he wouldn't even consider no. it. No. Get out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. If you're under 30, you don't even see- it's like I was thinking the other day, if I was in a pub with my dad and say his mates and they're all sort of 40 or 50, there is not one of them that would turn to me first with a pint of beer and go, taste that, see if I- is that off? No, they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't They would never opinion. consider me. That, my yeah, opinion is yeah. the last one they're interested <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, is that off? Things you can do over, I think, maybe 50. Wear a flat cap and not like a crack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you're wearing it's it because your head's statement. cold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're wearing it because your head's cold. You're or, 50 years old, flat cap, fine. Yeah. Or just wear a suit and tie without having to go to an event or a, con or a convention. Just or, or get up work. and pop on a little just, suit and tie. Just pop on a suit and tie. I, 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 I tell you what, I love seeing old boys in a suit on Sunday. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They've got shiny shoes and they're 75. I've got And they go down the pub and I think it's brilliant. I've got photographs of one of my late grandfathers, he must have been in his 60s, on the beach wearing a suit. <laughs> Wearing a suit on the beach. I think he- I got a feeling he's even got a knotted handkerchief and a full three-piece suit. <laughs> That's great. It's brilliant. Uh, it's a decent suit all my time. My grandfather, in my mind, my grandfather was always wearing a suit. I never saw him wearing a suit. I think he wore a suit to bed. I, I, I can't imagine taking that suit off. I just, it was always... Maybe it was an all-in-one, pull-on one. But he didn't- I mean, what the weird thing is though, it wasn't like he worked in a bank all his life. I think he was a builder. And then he retired and thought, it's time I should start wearing a suit. I know, oh, I love it. Just, you know what I mean? It's because they've got to do something then. They've got to get up and they make an effort and they're, you know, they're still part of the world. Yeah, yeah, As yeah. opposed to me already just walking around in my pants. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, there's no point in getting dressed, I'm not going out. Yeah. Or uh, everything's got an elasticated <laughs> waistband. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you don't even <laughs> consider a pair of clothes. <laughs> no. if I... it's slip on shoes, <laughs> pull on trousers, yeah. just, yeah. I have never seen a man with more Velcro <laughs> in his closet. <laughs> That has got to be for you the best <laughs> time-saving device ever. Velcro. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> just, just me and a baby girl, a dry white baby. I went to, uh, I, I went to the awards. Has your tuxedo got Velcro? <laughs> well, I was still talking about that, the award show. I went home. We, what, when, when did we stay there? We went to, what, 12 or something. Anyway, yeah. I went home and I was watching Terry at the end, right, and, uh, um, I was eating, I had these sesame seeds because I was hungry. I had a few. And, um, in the end, at the bottom of the bottom of this jar of sesame seeds, right, oh, there's tiny little seeds. But I didn't want to waste them, so I sort of poured them into her mouth and sort of like ate them like millet. Like a, like a, <laughs> a budgie binge. Yeah, yeah. I went to bed, got up the next day. I thought, oh, I felt a bit sweaty. I had a, had a resolve. And there was loads of seeds still in my chest. 
Well, in the stuck, hair on your chest? Yeah. Oh, I had to pick them up. It took me ages <laughs> to pick them up before I had a bath. So they must have stayed there all night. But not with the, you know, with the, with the cheese and alcohol that was coming through my pores. These seeds. And so, oh, well, they started growing. I had to, I'd have to uh, mow my chest. Oh, oh dear. Your girlfriend's a lucky, lucky woman. <laughs> Sesame seed chest. <laughs> <laughs> what we got, Carl? Oh, do you remember we were also talking about, um, on the names you cannot call kids now. Oh, it's like yeah. it's like there are certain yeah, well, names. I was thinking that like there's there's yeah, exactly there's uh, there's great old blokes names, but they have to be a baby once. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. I name this child Alf. <laughs> you can. <laughs> there are there are sort of these names which you just never name a child now. I mean, Carl, frankly, is is, is oh that's all right. Which is quite trendy. Oh, but but Alf. Sid. Alf Sid, you would never name a child Sid. Stan. Stan. Mm. Bert. <laughs> I name this child Bert. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about my, uh, my Uncle Alf? No. He wasn't, uh, wasn't a proper uncle, right? Right. But, uh, he was just one, one of me, one of me dad's mates and yeah. that. And he was getting on a bit, he must have been about, you know, sixty, which is pretty old when you're younger and that. And he was the same, he, he used to always wear a suit and that. But he was never... It was never in good nick, it was always like a rough suit, but it doesn't matter. Still, you know, making half the effort and that. Yeah. And he used to, uh, sleep in a dinghy. <laughs> right, <laughs> Uncle Alf. What? In his house? Yeah. Why? Well, in a flat, he's in like a little bed set. Cause he only had a little bed set and he was into boats and stuff. So he had this Two dinghy. Two birds with one stone. Had this little dinghy, had a little flat, thought, well, it's tight space and that. He had, uh, had a dinghy as a bed. And he had two tellies, right? <laughs> he had two tellies, one that the sound worked on, the other one only the vision worked. So if you wanted to watch a program- You had to turn them both on. Put them both on like BBC One, yeah. turned one up and watched the other one. Wow. That's extraordinary. From his dinghy? Sat in his dinghy. That is brilliant. It was I an just... inflatable dinghy, it wasn't like a wooden- Yeah, an inflatable yeah. one, yeah, a big I inflatable Did you ever go around and visit him? Yeah, now and again. Was it weird seeing a bloke, a six-year-old bloke in a suit, in a dinghy inside watching two tellies? It's weird out so, of time, I thought. I, I, I just... But, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> which of the TVs stopped working properly first? I mean, did he... I say, let's say the sound went on one of them. Yeah. Did he carry on watching the other one, hoping... Oh, that the other one was fine. Or no, he went he... and got a new telly, and then the vision went on that, and he went, "Oh no!" He went, "Hold on, then. <laughs> Wait a minute. I've got another telly in the wardrobe that yeah. I haven't used." That's so it. Must have been like that. Yeah. Wow, he sounds brilliant. Is he's he still alive? Right. Yeah, he's still around. Yeah, I haven't seen him for years, but he used to. Uh, be right was he flash. married? Be right. Yeah, be right. I think that's what happened. I think his his wife passed away, and, right. that, and that's when he had all this. You know, he had a boat. Yeah. And it's like, oh, where well, am I going to put it in a bed set? And it was like, hang on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sleep in that. Mm. So, yeah. I wonder if you ever brought any women back? <laughs> <laughs> Just the idea of bringing them back. <laughs> Getting down to it. Shall we move into the bedroom? <laughs> uh, ahoy! <laughs> oh! That is fantastic. <laughs> Missy Elliot, Gossip Folks on XFM 104.9. Look at your face, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkerton. Now, I know we're not meant to, uh, mention the adverts, and I'm not, I'm not slagging off the advert, it's that, it's that National Lottery advert with the little Welsh fella saying, your money from the National Lottery goes towards Mountain Rescue, and put it out there, we've saved a lot of people. Now, that's fine, that's great, well done. What I'm annoyed at is why those people are allowed to go up the mountain in the first place. Yeah. Don't go up there, it's dangerous. Yeah. You're at your own risk. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. It's, it's ridiculous. Just posh, beardy twats cl climbing mountains and sticking a flag up. Why climb? I don't want you to. I don't want you to. Am I paying? Is there any point, Rick, where I am paying for people to get rescued from mountains? I'm not sure. I think the lottery's doing it now. Fine. Because I'll tell you, if it was my money, I would be living. Well, that's the, that's the point, isn't it? I mean, it, You should it, have to take out insurance if you want to climb up a mountain. You should pay for it. Yeah. If, if, we, uh, look, if, if we save you, it'll cost a lot of money. Oh. You, oh, you have to be paying it back for the rest of your life. That's the risk. Yeah. Not falling to your death. Exactly. But never being able to play it. They're all posh and rich anyway. Yeah. Um, but it it's just like, a cat gets stuck up a tree and yeah. the farmer come up because he doesn't know any better. Imagine if that was a bloke. I'm stuck up again. <laughs> Stop going up there. Yeah, but that's what yeah. I'm saying again though. It's only a cat, so leave it up there. Get another one. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the skeleton of Tiddles. I couldn't be bothered <laughs> yeah. to go and get a ladder. No, but it's the same. <laughs> a few weeks ago, everyone was making a fuss over that that sheep. That was the first cloned sheep, yeah. and it died. Clone another one. 
Oh wow! Oh yeah, that's uh, if only you could do the same with mountaineers. Yeah. Oh, it looks or, the uh, same. The beard's the same. They all look like Brian Blessed. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Did I ever tell you about the time that my father, when I was young, we went on holiday? My dad had a, he bought a little boat. Um, little sort of wooden boat, make a three-seater, and he and a friend of his went out with me in the boat, I was maybe twelve or thirteen, went out and we sort of went da 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 so I think we were on the, we had a little motor, outboard motor, ch 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 chugging out, we just thought, we, we thought this was real seafaring stuff. Brilliant. We, we sort of, we'd lost sight of the beach because we'd gone round the corner of a, like a mountain, or like a, what's it called, like a cliff, and so we were just round the corner, and there was this boy, like a, just floating in the water, not a boy, but you know, like a, a boy, and uh, very tricky to explain that on the radio, it's the same word, isn't it? Boy, boy, a boy, boy. Yeah. and a boy, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so we we float past that and we're just chugging along. The motor conks out. Oh, I can't believe it. We have to row back in. So, so we, they're rowing away. I'm just sat there, and uh, we noticed that every time we sort of think we've got past this boy, it just seems to be back where it started again. And we realised that the, the tide, tide taking is up. taking us, to, yeah. but not taking us out, taking us towards these rocks. And we've got ravaged rocks, and we were a bit pretty scared because I can't swim very well. Or I couldn't at the time. That we, I think, when my dad had <laughs> baby bought. You know, he didn't. I'll be honest with you. I inherited a lot of things from him. One of which was his carefulness with money. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the one life jacket. <laughs> Um, <laughs> how deep was the water? Which I seem to remember <laughs> he tore off my back and put on himself. <laughs> um, so the water's pretty dark. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not saying we, we would have necessarily died, but it was pretty scary because the boat, you know, we were going to go crash into these rocks and stuff. It was getting pretty unnerving. And so we're, they're sort of rowing like mad, trying to get, we're just not making any progress. And we're beginning to think that this might be the end. And, um, this boat, this kind of ferry boat comes chugging by doing tours. Ching, 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 ching. And, um, and it comes by and, my dad goes, oh, wow. Uh, we were going, brilliant, brilliant, they can help us, they'll throw us a rope, they'll tow us back in. He was going, you've got to be careful, hang on, because according to the laws of the sea, if he rescues us, Steve, he can claim my boat. <laughs> The laws of the sea mean you can claim my idea. boat as salvage. I love the idea of That's like a reward. That's doing that. <laughs> but the what laws I like, of the sea. What I like is his twelve-year-old son might die. He's thinking about the boat. I know, but also the other thing, of course, is that I like the idea of this ferry master going, "Ah, <laughs> yeah, the boat be mine now, <laughs> or take your son." Yeah. Let me think about it. I need Let a new bed. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be just right. King size. <laughs> oh uh, dear, that's anyway. lovely. <laughs> so we've 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 done uh, done a lot of stuff today. We've covered we've done uh, Arnold's Minge. We've done. Oh no, what else have we done? We've done chop your bollocks off for free. Yeah. Um, we've done the the operation to fire ground, which I'm not happy about. Yeah. Um, leave leave the cat up there. Uh, spend money. We've done most stuff. I think we've done a lot. Yeah. We, we still haven't done Forrest Gump in a wheelie bin, but we can we can leave that till next week if you want. Yeah. See, I still think there's something in the spending money in areas that it's not needed. Like, it? well, you know, the fella, if you haven't, you know, if you've only just tuned in, you've missed a debate about a fella who needs his his uh, tackle taken off. A debate makes it sound like it was a bit more informed <laughs> than it actually <laughs> <Yeah>. was. <laughs> well, and I'm just, you know, all that time that was probably half an hour ago, and I've, I've still been thinking about other things that. It would be good if more money could be ploughed into things to to get them out there. Like what? Do you know what I mean? Well, I was I was looking. You know, I'm a fan of going on the web and that. Sure. And um, these inventions, right? We were mm. talking about a few weeks ago inventions that that are out yeah. there, and there's some that you know are, are well known by famous people who have brought yeah. stuff out. Do you, do you know Do you know why we didn't go on with this? Because I remember. Saying to you about Einstein, what well, who's clues thinks clever, you weren't impressed with it. I said Einstein, and you went, this is a quote, you went, Einstein, well, yeah. Now, I've never needed, you got it wrong, you went, I've, you, I've never needed MC squared in my life, <laughs> but the fella who made the video recorder, I watch one a week. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Brilliant. And, and it's the fact that everybody's got one good idea in them, yeah. right? Like Newton said about the, the apple. Yeah. I did rock busters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? And there was this thing, there was this thing that was on the website. So they right? shouldn't be spending money on investigating, um, sort of medical procedures that might help people. They yeah, should be spending it on what, Carl? Well, I found this thing, right, Ricky? Brilliant. Yeah. Um, what it was, little sort of mops. <laughs> <laughs> little, little mops, like little mop heads, like f floor mops. Yeah, right. Fit them on your cat feet. If you've got a cat, <laughs> right? If you've got a little cat, yeah. Put put these little things on the on the feet, and there was a picture of one, just like walking around the kitchen, like that. 
looking a bit like that. Nick, right. you can't do looking like that yeah. on the radio. No, but it's just, just looking a bit sort of fed up, but he didn't really know what was going on. Walking around, you see like the, the, the woman of the house, sat in the background having a cup of tea. The cat's there, walking about on the, on the kitchen lino, mopping the floor. <laughs> That's what I put my money into. <laughs> ah! Can we get shares in this? <laughs> no, that's an invention. How good is that? Yeah. Can we get shares in that? It's good though, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I'll market that. If, if so, I, 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 yeah, that's amazing. I just like the idea of people struggling with their cat <laughs> to get- uh, hold on though, wait but a minute. Then, what, if, say, what if I had a bad kidney? Ah, well then it's worth paying five grand. I suppose a year, because it would cost a cleaner working. that, wouldn't it? Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, there's loads of other things out there that gets loads of Of course, pain. you can stick a brush in its head and make it go down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be genius, Carl. No, but there's loads- the <laughs> <laughs> You see, you say that, if Newton came up with it, you'd be loving it. And there'd be loads of them out there. And everything, right? That's what <laughs> Imagine annoys me. Imagine Newton coming up with that. Imagine Newton coming up with that, Carl. Think of it. Well, there's other things that gets loads of praise. Penicillin. Everyone- who, who came up with that? Who uh, came up with that? Fleming, was it? Yeah, so discovered it on a- Right, I'm- I'm thirty. Don't yeah. think I've ever used it. <laughs> I've had Neurofen and Benelin. <laughs> <laughs> right, so there's one thing. What's something else I was talking to you about? Oh Mike? god, you like video. Okay, so video Te recorded- Telescope was another thing you- you seem to think's important. Well, no, you asked me about in great inventors, I know something, so I said Alexander Graham Bell, the telephone, everything from that, linked from that, um, uh, John Logie Baird, uh, television, Marconi, the radio, uh, uh, I said Galileo, the I was naming you stuff. Uh, it wasn't that, I was just saying that I think those things are more important than rockbusters. I think they're better ideas. <laughs> telescope? Even telescope. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, play a record, because... <laughs> There's a website, I must try and find it during this record. It's got loads of inventions, uh, I think well, you're gonna love it. Uh, Vicious from New Reed. Always a joy. Yeah. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl, I- someone pointed me in the direction of this website, and I- it basically, I swear to God, these are real inventions, okay, that real inventors have, um, applied for patents for, you know, so so that they, they, they own the copyright. Why don't I come up with one, a real one, yeah. and then you do that well, I one, think some and, of these... and Carl has to vote on which thinks the better invention. I think some of these, Carl, you are gonna be absolutely excited by. If you love the little mops that go on cat's feet, I think okay, you'll be excited Okay, well I'll throw one up to start with. Have you got one there ready? Yeah. Um, the X-ray machine. Alright. Oh. So we've got the X-ray machine the on the one side. The X-ray machine, Carl. Think of that. So, you've come to me. It with doesn't this idea. need- it, it, it goes through a pay thing so it doesn't need light, it excites, it can- you know, uh, well we know- you know what an x-ray so machine what's, what's can do. So what's happening is there, uh, right, I, I'm sort of head of some business, I've got a load of money. Yeah. You're coming to me with an idea. Yeah. yeah. And Steve's coming with me to an idea, I've got say five grand and I've- I've got- I've, I've, I've come- I've come with you, I said look, I can do transvector operation, you go, I'm not interested. I said oh, my cat needs a kidney operation, you go, I'm not interested. Right? I've come with you with an x-ray, meanwhile Steve walks in with- well, firstly I'm gonna offer you, this is uh, patent 5571247, uh, you've got the x-ray machine, I'm gonna come to you with the self-containing enclosure for protection from killer bees. Tell me more. Alright, well it's like- <laughs> Tell me more! A uh, self-containing enclosure for protection from killer bees comprising an enclosure formed of a flexible transparent plastic material, basically that will protect us from any killer bees that might be in the area. Mm. Useful? Yeah. Don't decide yet. Okay, I'll come up with another one. Um, refrigeration. Refrigeration. The combination toy dog and vacuum cleaner. Let me read a bit more, don't judge yet. A toy dog closely resembling a real dog and having a hollow interior in which is mounted a vacuum cleaner having a suction hose which is retractable from the tail end of the dog. This enables vacuuming a dog after a haircut and grooming without causing fear to the dog. Because it thinks another what, dog so, is sorry, in the room. Sorry, sorry. This is a decoy dog to make the dog not realise it's being vacuumed, thinking it's making a friend. <laughs> There's a picture of it. <laughs> Carl, Carl. Do you see what we're talking about there? That's a dog yeah. that looks. That do, it's, do, it's a do, fake also, dog. Also, like do, do, do you see that why why the cat with the mops is on Steve's side, <laughs> and why sort of X-rays, refrigeration, things that are on my side, and Newtons and MC squared, as you. 
Sorry, you, can you see the difference in these invent- can you see the- the pattern emerging and the difference? Yeah, but, you see, to me- Which so are you impressed by? Are you impressed by the sanitary appliance for birds? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a look at it. It's, uh, if you've got a domestic bird, maybe a budgerigar or something, but you're tired of it crapping everywhere, these are very tiny nappies that go on a that pet- That is real, isn't it? Pet- look, there's a picture, there's a diagram Can there. Can I put the microwave up against that one? <laughs> I need the- I know I need the big guns to come out now. Oh, what are you thinking? I know the you're excited. Budgie nappies or the microwave? It's- it's weird because- Carl, are you tired of- petting your dog or cat. I bet you are. That's why you need this patent <laughs> pet petter. <laughs> it is an arm on a piece of wood that will go up and down and stroke and pet your dog for you if you've not got time to do it. Well, I can only put up interfere on the cancer cure against that one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. You see, a lot of these things- These are all genuine inventions. Yeah. And if the time was right, we'd say- Get a maid. Do you know what I mean? If there was a bad swarm in London, I'd be saying get the bee man on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Well, lo lo lose, lose the x-ray machines. I don't care about broken bones for now. Well, at that moment in time, that would be more important than- Do sure. you know what I mean? We know people have been stung. We don't need to look inside them. Sure. Do you know what I mean? It's all about- it's like the telescope now isn't impressive. Sure. If you want to see something in the distance, get on the transport and go and see it. Do you know what I mean? You don't need to look at things in the distance. Right, well, sure. Uh, but it's it's guys are shitting and pissing all over people's homes. Could we put these- I'll tell you what, Carl. So it's looking at supernova and trying to find out more about the universe. It's- it's- it's conception and it's eventual end. Forget or, that, Rick, because I've got the cheese-filtered cigarette. <laughs> Oh, now tell me more. <laughs> this is a cigarette where the filter is actually made from cheese. Apparently cheese acts as a very good filter for tobacco, so the smoke passes through the cheese, thus you will induce a kind of smoky cheese. And also, uh, uh, the smoking, you know, might make you a little bit peckish and you can just nibble that so there's no dog end Perfect. lying around the pavement. <laughs> or budgie shit. It's a cleaner place and you haven't been stung. Brilliant. Right, now listen, so that's that done. Yeah. We've done that as well. Yeah. We're running out of time. We've got okay. like five minutes left. Winner for Songs of Phrase. Alright, give us the answers. Right. This, we did this at the start. We haven't even got time for the film thing today. Oh. Oh. But, we'll do that next week. Yeah. Uh, Songs of Phrase. It was a phrase, uh, you never see an old man eating a Twix. I love the fact that we go, we haven't got time. Like, it's- we've had such important stuff and it's been so jam-packed and interesting. We don't, not that it's been drivel with yeah. gaps we could have filled much better. Yeah. Don't um, look at it like that, like, oh. What, with his film quiz? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oh, dear. So, Songs of Phrase, you never see an old man eating a Twix. <laughs> we had to get change it to Mars Bar. <laughs> here's- here's what we had. <laughs> Jerry and the Pacemakers. Echo and the Bunny Man. <laughs> David Bowie. David Bowie. <laughs> and the Beach Boys finished that. Oh, what do you mean I thought that one was? What do you mean? Um, Who's the winner? Oh, it doesn't matter. You've got to give the answer. It was that one you didn't know it was us. Uh, it was Neil Young, wasn't Jim, it? Jim Crochet, is it? Old oh, Man yeah. River, it's right. called. Jim Crochet. It's Old funny. Man River? Jim Crochet sang Old Man River. I don't think so. What was it? Who cares? Right. Well, people- oh, I can't believe this. Do you- <laughs> uh, Old Man River, it was. Let's- let's give the prize to- Jim Crochet wouldn't have sung Old Man River. Well, let's give the- uh, Paul Robeson. Let's give the prize to Mitchell Sterling, um, who has got some of the answers right. <laughs> <laughs> on XFM 104.9. <laughs> and we'll be playing that great quiz again next yeah, week. next week. Uh, right. with Mick and Gervais with it on XFM Sports. <laughs> and if you want to send an email, it's rickandgervais.com. <laughs> it? Or check out the website on XFM's All The Cons. <laughs> Good night, W3 340. Coming up is now of Levine and Stoopy Nouns. <laughs> <laughs> Placebo. The Bitter End on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me is both Stephen Merchant and Carl, the K-Man, Pilkington. Oh. So, you've already got that. That's safe. It's only four minutes past. You've got placebo and you've got us three. So-, so You're definitely going home with that. Yeah, whatever that's happens. safe. That's- that's on its way to the hospice. <laughs> exactly. You've banked that. Yeah. Now, do you want to gamble all that? 
to go on and listen to another two hours. Well, you could walk away now and you've, you're up. <laughs> yeah, you're, up, you're, you're right. already up. Right, that's brilliant. You have not wasted or any time. do you want to gamble that against another two hours? It might be shoddy, it might go downhill, but it might get even better, Carl. What do you say they do? Listen to another two hours? Yeah. See, yeah, we shouldn't have done that. We shouldn't have asked Carl, because oh, a lot God. of them now are already taking what they've got. And what they've got <laughs> yeah. is great, Rick. What they've got is lovely. <laughs> yeah. They're loving that. They're gonna enjoy oh, that. We have got monkey news. We've got cheapest chimps. That's not the same thing. <laughs> How many radio stations have got two ape-related simian features? Rick, can I point out now, a lot of people are making that mistake. A lot of people are thinking that monkey news is exactly the same as cheapest chimps. It's, it's not. not. Let's keep it's that not. clear. It's not. It's in the same ballpark, but it's, it's, no, it's not the same. They're apes. They're involved. They're involved. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've also got some great music. Yeah. We've got an amusing sketch about a fly. <laughs> 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 oh, it's really important. Oh, and Mystique is dropping in. <laughs> Let's hope the Mystique ladies are coming in. <laughs> so yeah, no, I want to I kick off with a song that is, you know you've got the half a dozen posing songs that when you're sort of like between 14 and 18, they were the ones you'd put on to get ready to go out or just pose around or, or be that pop star or think you're on stage or whatever or in the video yeah. and embarrassingly, I remember, I dug this out and I remembered I used to post this like a mother f uh, when I was about 14, right? This is Street Life by Roxy Music. You used to do- Mine was, uh, mine was Oops Upside Your Head. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. was just me on the floor in my bedroom. One day, I thought one day I thought there'll be other people in this imaginary post. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Elbows going everywhere, yeah. knocking over vases. Yeah. But then uh, I remember later it was Black Lace's Superman, which is something similar. Do you remember that? That was brilliant. Wow. Spray. Ski. Da ding. Da ding. If you <laughs> fella, um, out there in, uh, Radio Land got any, uh, funny, <laughs> funny jokes, then <laughs> call in Email on Email them in, cause we need some. <laughs> oh. Street Life, Roxy Music, off the Stranded album. That's why I used to jump around to. What would you have been wearing while you were listening to that? Um, well, probably, um, Brutus Gold Jeans. Classy. Um, or Green Flash, uh, pumps. Sure. Any socks? Uh, I'd have had socks, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd have probably been wearing the shirt my mum got me from Tesco's, which was, uh, which was again a Brutus shirt. And, uh, it had women in bikinis eating bananas. <laughs> on a chaise long. Of um, it is. What, so lots of small ones? Or yeah, just yeah, one yeah, big yeah, one? Yeah, lots of little small ones, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, so that was that. <laughs> a trilby? Um, I didn't wear a trilby. Did you have a toy with a trilby? I remember when I was, when I, I went on holiday about that time, and I was about 14, my, my older brother had this leather jacket, and I was on the, I was on the beach, um, just, you know, in, in the shorts and that, and, uh, I went to get an ice cream or something, I said, can I borrow a jacket? And, uh, I put his jacket on, and I was frozen on the beach thinking, they are all looking at me, because <laughs> I look so good. And yeah. I also had a, um, a straw Stetson. <laughs> and I really thought, yeah, I'm, I'm turning into quite a man. <laughs> yes, I'm quite a catch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just thinking, they're, they're just thinking, they're going, they're looking, they're going, who's that dude? Is yeah. he American? Is it, hold on, has he, has he just come from, uh, some sort of road day? Wait is a minute, it? I'm in a bikini, and I like bananas. <laughs> I could be the woman for him. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. What was that? Didn't you have a t-shirt or jacket or something you wore to university? That was pretty classy. Didn't it have like some, some foul language on it or something? What was that? Uh, yeah, I had, uh, when I was, uh, this when I was 18, <laughs> yeah. right, the Christmas, or the birthday before I went to, uh, uh, university, got two sweatshirts, one black, one red, had bullshit on them. <laughs> Just done the little bow. And the red one, all my clothes, the first wash, everything was pink. All my white shirts and my white socks, of course, because I just put it in, I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, that I was a man at university with pe all pink clothes except for a rather nice red, uh, <laughs> sweatshirt with bullshit on it. <laughs> oh, so, uh, again, turning yeah. into quite yes, a man. Quite the man. Was that, uh, was that pre or post the time you washed your clothes by getting in the bath? And that was pre, that was the second year when I was in, I had to go and dig, because I was at Hall's residence. So, I had a bath and you had to sort of like pay for a bath, you know, so I thought, two birds with one stone, I got in the bath with all my white shirts, so I was going through sort of, you know, wearing a white shirt and tie, that sort of, you know, David Sylvian sort of mm -hmm, fire mm -hmm. and and, uh, uh, Daz, and I just wriggled <laughs> around in it, oh, I washed myself, it's quite a good exfoliate. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I didn't do it again, because uh, it, it was sort of not good for the skin, Daz. Quite sore, is it, around yeah, the sort yeah, of yeah, yeah, boys yeah, 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 yeah. So there you go, Roxy Music <laughs> and Street Life. <laughs> Carl, thoughts? Um, I just was just was working out time really. Just we've got. Well, last week we had a lot of stuff that we didn't manage to cram in. 
Which was good. So I'm just looking at- we've got- we have got Cheap as Chimps coming. Uh, Songs of Phrase. Oh, we haven't really forgotten about stuff. Yeah. Why don't we kick off with that so we don't forget it? What? Cheap as Chimps or Songs of Phrase or the film thing. We need we'll to get the film done. Yes, we've babe. also got a new feature, Cheeky Freak of the Week. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, incidentally, I should just point out now that, uh, someone has, uh, Ashley Phillips has emailed in, um, because obviously with, uh, Songs of Phrase, what Carl does, for those who have not heard it, he takes a phrase that you might hear commonly on the show, and then he uses various songs- There's this hairy Chinese kid, was the one you never seen an old bloke eating a Mars <laughs> bar! And, uh, yeah, as I say, he uses different chunks of songs, and he makes up that phrase, and, uh, so he has made some suggestions here, Carl. Uh, cause he thinks that the more common, Carl, you're an idiot, fool, etc., perhaps a little overheard, He'd like to, uh, maybe hear, Carl, Paul's, I don't know where to start, <laughs> which is a common one from Ricky. <laughs> Carl, which bit of that do you actually think is true? <laughs> and then there's the regular dialogue between the three of us. Carl, well, you know, it could happen. Me, yeah. sure, sure. Ricky, no, 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 Carl, it could never happen. Not now, not ever. You're an idiot player record. <laughs> So maybe some of those you could use. <laughs> like the songs, uh, yeah. well, will we get, will we get it going then right. today? Yeah. This week we're. Uh, do you remember the story about my auntie having wind for five minutes? <laughs> yeah. Your yeah. auntie was it your auntie Nora? Auntie Nora. Um, she was on a lot of medication and stuff, <laughs> sure. and I think that's a side effect that comes with it. So um, yeah, she had wind for five minutes. So I thought we'd, we'd dig that one out. A okay. classic line. Uh, my auntie had wind for five minutes. Okay. So I've got loads of songs here. <laughs> How many is that? Um, me, Auntie, had wind for five minutes. Seven tracks. Oh, that's tricky. Oh, why do seven... you learn? Okay, so you need to identify, if you can be bothered, the artists. Yeah, that's what we're artists. after, isn't it? Alright. Okay. Let's go. Oh, 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 play, it a few, oh, play it a few times. Just remember, as many as you can get, because the yeah. winner would probably be, you know, it gets five or something, so don't worry if you, there's a couple you can't get, because you could still probably win. Go, go on. again. Can I just, what's the email address? <laughs> it's, well, if they go to xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky, they can just they send can, them through there and that. send them through that way. Right. Uh, which of these is the, uh, the prize bag? Yeah, don't we get them mixed up? <laughs> that's- that's the one, is it, Carl? Yeah. Alright, so let's see what hot treats you could win. Um, as I get them out, Carl, do you wanna play it once more? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I recognised all of them except one. Yeah. Right, let me see what we've got two. here. Uh, <laughs> oh, once again, Carl, you excelled yourself with an arbitrary collection of DVDs. Just hanging around, were they? Just hanging around. Um, again, I'm always interested to know which of our XFM listeners, um, has tastes as broad as this. Go on. Uh, we've got the recent B BBC adaptation of The Hound of the Baskervilles. So then? Mm, okay, very nice. That's we've right. got, uh, what's this? Is this the... This is, um, something involving Air, the band Air. I yeah. think it's a, a single, at best. Yeah. Uh, this is probably worth having. This is the current Flaming Lips album. So you've excelled yourself there, actually, Carl. That's not bad. An XFM mouse map. Oh! They're, uh, they're as common as muck. Oh, hold on. I was going you can't give away that mouse mat. It's a piece of foam. <laughs> now, I was going to dismiss the, um, the oddball sci-fi movie K-Pax, featuring Kevin Spacey and Jeff Bridges, but Carl, is it it's signed, signed by Kevin Spacey? It's Spacey's signed, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. an actual, uh, so that, so, uh, win that and put it on eBay for £4.50. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, man alive. What is that? Just look at oh, their faces. Oh, no! Carl, don't give that. No one wants that unless it's ironic. Series 1 and 2 on DVD of popular uh, northern based sitcom Bread. Buy it, sell it, the game's getting hard. Cause someone's dealing you a losing card. <laughs> all right. They all had a go, all the actors had a line on that song. Oh, right, play so, the clips again. So play the clips again, I really want to win it now. Here we go. <laughs> I can't believe this hasn't been done before. It's extraordinary. Right. Cause most of our ideas have. <laughs> Verve, Lucky Man on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. The emails, I should point out, aren't flooding in on the No, but it always takes time when they go through the website. Does it? Yeah. Okay. So, th they'll be arriving in a bit. Do you want to play it once more for those that just joined us? Alright then. Oh. 
<laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> My auntie had wind for five minutes. Brilliant. Genius. Mainly the artists. Rick, I, uh, sometimes, I sometimes, um, <clears throat> get off at the tube at, uh, Tottenham Court Road if I'm, if I want to look at the record shops before yeah. I come into, uh, XFM. And I, I always cut through Chinatown. Oh, yeah. And every time I come to Chinatown, the same thought always strikes me. I always feel like I want to just gather all the little locals, all the little Chinese fellows, just gather <laughs> them round and just go, guys, in what way is this a town? <laughs> This is not, at best, what you've got here <laughs> is a novelty street. Yeah, Gerard Street is not a town, no, mate. No, it's not a town. You've had this since you've years. It's not expanding. Yeah, yeah. You can't just call it Chinatown and claim it's, it's a town. If I was then, though, and you did that, I'd go, I'd go what, what, what are you talking about? It is a town. It is a town. It's what, our what town. Way? It is a town. It's our town. We've got all lots of stuff. Where's your, where's your church? Where's your mayor? We d the needed. We got a. Got a betting shop? Not enough. It is. See, you, what, all you've got here is restaurants. No. That's, that's no, not no, 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 no. Got a little supermarket with snacks. <laughs> what does it sell? Snacks. Specifically, I would it's imagine crackers. crackers. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to buy a dragon? Do you no. want to buy an ornamental dragon? If I, if I wanted to buy one, this is where I would. Do you want to buy? Do you want to buy a gold dragon? Is it made of gold? No, it's made of plastic, plastic. but it's sprayed gold. Do you want to buy that? It's not a town. <laughs> it is a it's town. It's not a town. Yeah. And I, it annoys me, because when I first came to London, I genuinely thought Chinatown was gonna be this amazing, like, you know, like, I mean, what they've got there is- You'd, I, hear, you'd hear a gong and- <sighs> Yeah, Every exactly. time we went in there, And right? there'd be rickshaws, and, and, uh, and people uh, walking on those little sort of wooden shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you know those ones? <laughs> They're brilliant, they are. <laughs> just comping around in them. But nothing, it's nothing, Hats. it's just- Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It just reminds me of, um, have you ever been to any of those sort of museums, you tend to have them up north, where they've got like, you've got, you sort of sit in a little car and it sort of rides you through kind of, I don't know, it might be, um. Newcastle, the Victorian yeah. era. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Could I have a, um, half a pound of those sweets, please? <laughs> exactly. Of course you can. If there was some animatronic then, it would just be an, ex an exhibit. Yeah, yeah. Although the, the, their, 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 their concession to be a hundred years ago is that there's some scales exactly. in the shop and there's a horse outside. Yeah. That's yeah. it. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The traditional sounds and smells of old England. And, and the boys are going, of course, there was no television. <laughs> exactly. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, they welcome to... <laughs> da -da 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 <laughs> yeah, Chinatown. Ding 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 ding. So it's not, yeah, it's a good point. Is that a piece of traditional music? <laughs> ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> yeah. Is that some traditional <laughs> Chinese music or is that music that someone in this country wrote? <laughs> thinking it sounded like Chinese music. I think it was the, uh... What was it the vapors, wasn't it? Oh, is that what it is? That because it sounds like that's the music. Down, isn't it? Down, 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 but are you I sure they didn't take that from? Yeah, some no, other it's, it's that it's that pentatonic scale, isn't it? What is it called? Ding, the, ding, 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 what's the, it's the black notes on the piano. <laughs> right, that's the one I can play <laughs> along with East Enders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I don't get with it? Go on, China right. thing. Yeah, China thing. Because I always walk through it on the way to work. A mm. couple of things annoy me. First of all, I think it's bad business, just because. If you've got a ch if you've got a Chinese restaurant, put it somewhere where there isn't any others. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, but it's also a community. They're not, they're not just a theme park for 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 other people. Uh, I, I ended up. I remember going out one night with Suzanne and some friends, and you got there, and there's so much choice. It's that dilemma of, oh, forget it. Well, I'm not really. Specifically, if you fancy well, Chinese. Well, no, because no. why do you go to the one with the dead ducks hanging in the window? That's well, my favourite. That's the other thing as well. It's like. <laughs> Normally you put your good stuff in the window. If, that, <laughs> if that's what's in the window. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. And the other thing that annoys me, uh, walking through it today, there's always lard on the floor. <laughs> what, in the street? In the street. It is, honestly, I'm scared I'm gonna slip over. It's because all the restaurants and that. But why is it? Oh, that's another point. Well, it's not, it's not oozing out of the restaurants. No, but why is it? Why is it? I don't know what they do. <laughs> Careful. Listen, no, but why is That's it? why they used to wear those little wooden shoes. <laughs> so, okay, that's, we've got so, well, the thing is as well, they try and wash it with water, which doesn't work with no. lard and it's like oil. Famously, yeah. You mm. know what I mean? Even I know that. Yeah, you gotta yeah. scrub it. So, you think so? Sorted that out. Yeah. You think they'd know, wouldn't you? Yeah. Right. Anyway, um, thanks for your thoughts on Chinatown, Carl. Right, I'm gonna play this thing again, cause it is a bit slow today, the email. Oh, yeah. uh, cause right. it's too hard! It's not too hard, there's just clips of songs. What are the artists? Email in. <laughs> XFM.co.uk. He's getting annoyed cause he put the work in well. and that one's good. He's getting annoyed! Oh! Remember, I think Kevin Spacey. Uh, and the signed K-Pax DVD is probably the only incentive to try and have a go with that one. Do you just think you could win by getting one of them? <laughs> exactly. Uh, They're coming in now, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is Electronic.
electronic getting away with it. Definitely. Do you reckon we'll get away with it? You see, you, you've worried me now. Yeah, I don't know. He's I, worried me. My apolo apologies, uh, if you're offended at all by my reference to those little wooden shoes. <laughs> 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 Oh, well, that's oh, not gonna help, Rick. Dear. That, uh, that Chinese oh, women uh, dear. used to wear. I don't think they still wear them. We've we've only had uh, one we, complaint, haven't we? We've, we got the that we got from yeah. the Sony is that one uh, about talking about the swan's penis. But uh, yeah, you know. things about complaints is that people complain all the time. It's whether it's upheld because it goes from authority, and then they have to go. Oh yeah, look, that was that was in poor taste or uh, pre watched or, or some of the was, things you said on TV though. You must have been stung. I've, well, I've, see, I've only had, again, I've only had one upheld, one serious lap on the wrist for some I said. But, um, what, the, what was he say? Can uh, you repeat it? Well, I can, yeah. I was talking about, and it was a true story. I was talking about this little old man who his, his, um, daughter was taking to home because he used to fry up bacon and rub it round his, to, for, to get the dog to lick them. Right. And you got a complaint? Yeah. And that was it. That's that's why you got a complaint. Yeah, yeah. What's up with that? <laughs> well, he said it on songs of praise. <laughs> <laughs> they said yeah. they said it was in poor taste. I suppose. What other complaints? What you know the most. Oh, you know the biggest complaint ever on TV. The most complaints ever for anything on TV was the showing of the Last Temptation of Christ. Yeah. Do you know the second? Yeah, the, the second was, was I think Anne Robinson um, put in the Welsh into Room One Hundred One. What, cause, cause she didn't like him or that? Yeah, she just said, well, they're, you know, they're going in the net, you know. Can on, she can said it slightly more eloquently than that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can on the people or the place? I don't know. I think, I think it was the place and therefore the people. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, yeah? No, well, you know me mum and dad have sort of, uh, moved from Manchester to the retired now in Wales. Oh, right? yeah. And it is, uh... <laughs> Look at his face, turning his nose up. No, but... It it is pretty depressing. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of them places that uh, it's like you go back in time and that when you go there. I mean, maybe the major cities there, maybe Cardiff is all right. What even coming from Manchester, it's like going back in time. It's just uh, it's like one of them places. That w it feels like every day is Sunday. Do you know what I mean? It's it's just depressing and grey and slate Lots of vicars walking around going, I'm late. <laughs> well, yeah, here's, here's the sort of attitude they have, right? This, and this is true, because my mum and dad live there and that, right? And they love it, it's alright, it's an healthy place to go when you get older and that. But, this this is why they don't move on in Wales. Well, I just like start <laughs> to make another, no, no, sorry no. to any Welsh people listening, we're not saying you don't move on, Carl is. No, but- Sorry about the little Chinese shoes again The thing well. is, it's good that, in a way, that they do do that, and they don't want to be like, you know, rushing about everywhere, because- the way London is, isn't that great either, is it? Because sure. it's totally opposite here, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not having a go. It is a bit dull. I think even people who live there will agree with me, okay. right? But, like, one of the shops that my mum and dad use, right, it's only a little sort of villagey type shop, uh, can't be bothered staying open for hours and hours, right? Because there's not enough people to use the shop. Yeah. So what you do is, uh, they get used to what you buy, and- they leave they, it out. They put it in a phone box outside. They put it in a phone box. Yeah. So it doesn't get wet. So my dad's loving that. Well, Once yeah. he found that out, it was like, brilliant. But that, how is that a bad thing? That's brilliant. Well, it's not. For other people, it is for my dad. Cause he's picking up all sorts of stuff. Oh chickens. no, he's not! Oh, yeah. He's not nicking other people's shopping. Well, it's not like nicking, is it? Cause it's not theirs yet. <laughs> oh! And you've stitched him up on radio. Well, of course, because yeah. they're going to think, who's that? Wh who is there in town with a mank accent? Who, who keeps, around who yeah. keeps making phone calls <laughs> and is getting fatter? Yeah, that's the. Right. I love up, that. Like, oh. I love that that your dad was excited when he found out. Oh. I can't believe! I can't believe that he's moved there. He's retired to this little village, <laughs> where it's based on trust and community, and he is abusing it. He's using his scally mank ways. Bloody hell, Lakers! There's no bread again. <laughs> There's old women was going hungry. Yeah. Their cats aren't getting fed, and your whore father is just. I can't. Oh, that's obscene. That's obscene. Oh, I think it's a uh, die thief. That <laughs> fellow from <laughs> Manchester. I don't even think they've got Sky there yet, have they? They can't listen. They won't. They won't know what's. I think you stitched him right up. I hope you have actually. I hope he goes down for it. 
I hope he's hanging out of the community like Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. They should get burning torches, go up to the set mansion. Of his, set fire to his cottage. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, well, He's uh, out of the choir. <laughs> yeah. Out tomorrow. Feeder. Right. Listener, I'm talking to you now. Um, have you seen these posters around with me and Steve on it, right? It's embarrassing, right? We were mucking around at a photo session. And XFM wanted to do some posts. We couldn't be bothered to do them again, so we let him have this one. Irony comes back to haunt you, and it looks look like I think I'm Simon Temper or summer, and Steve's alright. But we think that Carl should be in it. Definitely. Carl doesn't want to be in it, but it looks like everyone listens to this show for, for Carl's basically, you know, innocent stupidity and some great tracks. Exactly. They don't listen for us anymore, no. Steve. So I think it should be a campaign to get Carl on the poster. Yeah. Well, I should point out that I think XFM are more than happy to have him on the poster. Yeah? So it's just him? You don't want to be on there, do you? There's no- there's no need for me to be on it. Of course there is. Why not? I've got so many emails here as I'm sat during the show reading them. So many emails saying what does Carl look like, well, what pictures to, of Carl. If you go to xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky, we've got those film bits on there, those video mock-ups where I'm part of it, you can sort of- That's not enough, Carl. Around. People want to see your face. You're part of the show, not you're an intrinsic part of the show. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get- we'll, we'll get- we'll get a- the no, poster. Either. Why? Just, it'll be too much on a poster, they can only take in so much. What it's do you much. mean? They can only take in so much. Yeah, it's good with two people. No. It's enough. So what are- what are groups do then? Well, they haven't- It's like- it's like Ringo Starr is being left off the cover of Sgt Pepper. Yeah. Or- or, um, Rutherford doesn't get in a look-in with Genesis. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know- Which would be outrageous. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, oh, sorry, Tony Banks. You can't be in this one. <laughs> yeah. It's just me and- you will be very- you see, you look like the Collins, yeah, so you've got to be in there. I don't there. photograph that well, either. You're joking. Is Not it because the shiny look like a little cue ball, because it just shines off the top? A lot of people as well, I should do- they- you should dispel the myth. A lot of people think, for some reason, that you're fat. A lot of people say to me, is he fat? No, but that's because they haven't got much air, so it looks like my head's big. No, they haven't even seen you. They just think from listening to the show that you're fat. That's because you're northern. They think you just eat chips yeah. and complain about the weather. Well... Complain about the south. I just think you could answer a lot of your critics. But yeah. Then, but then, you see, what I don't like about this world, a lot of people judge people on the way they look. Yeah. Oh, like hey. you do. Uh, if, if only more people thought like that, Steve. But Carl, you judge people on the way they look. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. But I couldn't <laughs> with me, could I? Because I don't know what I look like. What? If I was listening to me on the radio, I wouldn't be able to say, oh, he's a, you know, and slag me off and that, because I don't know what I look like. And I quite like that. Do you know what I mean? I've lost. I don't know what I you're talking about. Lost. It's, it, just believe me, right? I'm right on this one. It's best if, if you leave it. Well, we're not gonna leave it. We're gonna get you on the poster. Yeah. I mainly have to see myself on videotape this morning. That's oh, I, I showed him. I'm, I'm, I, you know, uh, the animal show I did, the show. Yes. I'm doing a video, and I did behind the scenes footage, and I've got. A, uh, you've seen it, haven't you? I feel a bit of Carl on there, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. It's lovely. He can't believe it. He said, "Is it playing slow?" Because <laughs> he's so slow. When I come into the office, he's going, "All right." It, that's how you I'm talk. I'm as well. I look like I'm looking into a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not happy with it. I just think that if we're willing to to to, uh, if Ricky's willing to use his celebrity profile for the sake of the show, yeah. I'm willing to look like a, you know, let's say a fairly handsome kind of cool customer. I think at least the very least, Carl, is that you appear on there as well. Yeah. You could dress. Are up you smart. are you worried that you'll look the worst out of all three of us? Uh, who am I standing next to? I'm next to Steve. <laughs> I'm, pr I'm fairly confident. Yeah. <laughs> I think the way it's so predictable. You pull the string because you know what it is. It's a <laughs> you pull the string. Oh, <laughs> uh, what were we talking about before? Compl oh, I was going to tell you, yeah. You know the, the the most complaints ever, the last temptation of Christ. I haven't seen it. Um, uh, what is it? It's Scorsese, isn't it? It's my Scorsese, and I I I've bought the film actually recently because I was intrigued to see it, but I've not actually watched it. But from what I understand, the reason that it was uh, so outrageous is because it has a whole sequence which shows what it would be like if Jesus had lived his life and not martyred himself on the cross, but lived his life as a human being. Part of which is him having sex, and uh, so I think that was chiefly what the outrage was that it was showing this godly man to be, you know, as human as as he was supposedly. You know, because he's supposed to be human as well. So, uh, so that's the reason. That was the reason that there was complaints there. I don't know. I haven't seen the film. Well, you, you, you see him, do you? Do you, you see him having sex? I think yes. Although it is an actor, Carl. Yeah, it's not actually out. Jesus Christ. It's not the real. It's not the real yeah. Robert Powell. No, <laughs> it's an actor <laughs> yeah. playing Robert Powell. <laughs> is that? You see, 
sex on films and all that, right? When I was growing up, and I'd go. be watching. No, just just saying an example of this, really, right? When I was growing up as a kid, and I'd be you know watching films with my dad, mm. right? He'd really be enjoying a film, yeah. right? And then a sex scene would happen, right? And he'd go on film. On, in or the just film. behind you. Yeah. In the yeah. film, a sex scene would happen. <laughs> Your brother up his old tricks again. <laughs> and he'd, he'd get up and go and make a cup of tea. Right? Right. Typhoon? Yeah. That he'd stolen from <laughs> some sort of telephone box. <laughs> and like, even recently, he'll- he thinks it, it ruins a film. Do you know what I mean? Cause there's no need for it to happen, is there? Really? Yes. Why? Sometimes it's- it, what it's warranted. If the film itself is yeah, no, some about films it isn't though. Some uh, some no, films not, it of isn't. Some films it's horrible. I think I think the films that um him and his dad watch together on Channel Five, yeah. um <laughs> probably not. Is it only on Channel no, Five in your house? But let's put it, yeah, if you're watching, you know, I don't know, a late night Friday night, you know, from nineteen eighty three. Yeah, illegal briefs. <laughs> 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 a beautiful lawyer has to defend a man who may be a killer. She falls in love with him, but does she does she know the real man? <laughs> oh, oh dear. You know, you know what I mean, though. Lest you forget, of course, that I uh, love heat <laughs> with the bloke that is now in. Go on. You know, of course, that I, according to the uh, internet movie database, I um, once appeared in one of those films in the film Killer Image, a Canadian film, I believe, from 1989. According to that computer, uh, it's, it's all wrong. Isn't it? It's all wrong. It's, it's all wrong. wrong. Of course, it is. Yeah. I, apparently, I was in that and I played the role of Kirk. Was it a porn thing? Uh, no, no, no. I think it's just an erotic thriller. Oh, right. I suppose it you only had a very small part, though, didn't you? Indeed. Yeah. 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 But no, do, do you know what I mean? Sometimes you don't need to go that far. Say, like in this Jesus program, right? <laughs> Film. What's it called? The Last Temptation. <laughs> <of Christ. laughs> Talking, you know what? What's his name? Is it Ralph in The Simpsons? Yes. I draw the kitty cat. It's like talking to that. Yeah. No, but right, this temptation thing, right? <laughs> Do you know the, we, you know often we don't get that many complaints on this show. <laughs> yeah. We don't get very many complaints, and I think that's either because there's no listeners, or B, it's because most people agree with Carl, and that terrifies I know. me. Or they let him off because it's like you know you can plead insanity, you can go mental and yeah. kill for you, but they go, oh, he's he's, he's a bit back. Exactly. No, but <laughs> yeah. was it because like they're saying that he was having it away, or is it because you saw it? it what got the complaints? The complaint was the very suggestion. The suggestion. That it was it was a blasphemous sex. thing, not the fact that you saw an actor's knob. So what about if they just cut it down a bit and you, you like saw the little stable door closing? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the baby Jesus having sex. <laughs> it was the grown man. <laughs> the stable door shutting. No, but oh, you know what they do? Ah, <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. That no, is then, the wise men saying, "I can't believe we brought mirror. We should have brought condoms." <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. It's two for one offer, isn't it? Yeah, that's not what we were thinking. Oh, it's making it, sense. <laughs> It's just that it's always awesome. Should we apologise now to the Christian, Christian church as well? Yeah. So Sorry we, to the little Chinese fellas, uh, little Welsh fellas, and the little Christian fellas. Yeah, we haven't yeah. said anything wrong. No, no. It's like you see when I when I was growing <laughs> stable up. Stable door. <laughs> I love the idea that in Carl's world, he was born in a stable. Just thought, well, I yeah. love this place. Yeah, I'm just going to stay here the rest of my days. <laughs> this is good here. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> but when I was watching telly with my mum and dad, I mean, it still happens now, right? My dad will sort of go, "Ah, oh, ruined. Good film, ruined." Right, yeah. if, if some sex scene happens. But, why but what are we talking it? about sex scene? Are we talking about a kissing or are we talking about, um, uh, penetration and looking at the camera? No, going, just, just are you enjoying this, Pilkingtons? <laughs> what are we talking about? What is sort of extreme levels are we talking about? Right, last time I was down there, right? Yeah. Um, what was it? Uh, meet, meet Joe, meet Joe Black. Meet Joe Black. Meet, meet, meet Joe Black is a terrible <laughs> film. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> uh, there was, it's a good film, and then, you know it's gonna happen because like the music comes in. Brad yeah. Pitt's keeping quiet. A woman's eyeing, eyeing him up. Sure. So <laughs> my mum, <man, laughs> my mum's worked it out already, and she's going. Uh, anything on the other side, love? She knows. She, she knows. knows. It's you know something's. Uh, uh, well, and so you can be enjoying a film, and you can be an hour and ten in, and then some spidey senses of one of them can go. She will turn it over, and the other one goes. Well, yeah, right. Are you sure it's not them protecting you? From scenes of sex, so that they're, what they're thinking is, what if Carl gets the idea to have sex? Yeah, that could lead to procreation. We don't want any more like him. We've yeah. got to, we've got to end the line you here. You sure it's not the doctor? Keep calling out, going. You are keeping away from <laughs> yeah, exactly. women, aren't you? He must never find out. Are you sure they're not embarrassed because they're watching a yeah. sex scene with their son? It, it happens all, every time, right? There's two things that my mum does, right? It's that if there's sex scene on the telly, she'll go, mm -hmm. uh, you know, anything on the other side, love. Uh. And the other thing she always says, if ever there's anything on the telly with Elvis in it, yeah, 
she goes, oh, I like him. Right, and we all know, we sat there, we know what she's gonna say next. Yeah. So you don't even bother saying why, right? And she goes, uh, he likes fat, ugly people. He what? He liked fat, ugly people. He didn't always go for, like, the good-looking fans in the crowd. What Elvis did? Yeah. Right. That was always the thing and I'm right. sorry, now, hold on. I- I don't know what we're doing now with our lives, Steve. Right, oh, wait, wait a minute, right. So, your mum says two things, right? She either says- Is what, there anything else on the other side? Really, or, I like Elvis. There's a pause, because you know what she's gonna say next. She says, he liked fat, ugly people. How often does this occur? Well, th because they've got like, you know, Sky, there's a lot of those channels on, they're like the music channels. So Elvis always comes on, there's either an Elvis film, there's like, you know, a classic hit by him on- And she'll go, I like Elvis, he likes fat ugly people. And what do you mean he liked fat ugly people? Is she a fat ugly person? Because he's that special Vegas show, isn't he, where he's dancing about, right? Mm. And he's got loads of scarves around his neck. Towels. Yeah. And like, he always hands them down to the fat ugly ones. Right. And I always say it's because they're the fat, you know, they've got a sweaty face because they, they can't, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what world they I live in! I don't know how we've gone through this what, is, what sort of world are you going when you're watching his <laughs> face? And what do you mean fat, ugly ones? You mean they're in the front, they're sweating a lot because they're a bit yeah, chubby. Yeah, so she thinks, you know, it's giving them a towel because but it's he's really going, wipe your face, you're putting me off, you yeah. fat cow. Stop sweating near me. There's another one. What? So, hairy Chinese kids. Yeah. Jesus. We haven't slagged off hairy Chinese kids, we, we we slagged off Chinese- we didn't slag anyone off. We just said they really haven't got a town as such and they wear shoes. What do we say? Yeah, little wooden shoes. And what did the world- I just don't know how we got onto Elvis and big fat ugly women. I don't know where we- I don't know how we slide that from the last temptation of Christ. Did you see that fat, um, girls and feeders Go program? Go a minute. Eh? What's Tom that? Patty first. Oh, brilliant. It's a great song. Breakdown. How many Tom other Patty. radio shows have talked about Last Temptation of Christ, China to Home, yeah. Fat Ugly Women? Yeah. More than 60 minutes. Exactly. Incredible. <laughs> Sony Award winner. Yeah. Cheering Breaks, Painkiller on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, with me. Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I should point out now, Rick, that the general consensus from the, uh, the listeners is that Carl should definitely be on the post. But soon, I know obviously. that. I know. I, There's it, a, an interesting email. Of course here. they should. They, they're just right. says, um, I love to see Carl on the, uh, on the poster, especially as I'm watching him on the webcam today, and wearing that shirt, doesn't he look like Charlie Brown? <laughs> <laughs> He looks just like Charlie Brown from the Peanuts cartoon. <laughs> oh my god. That's it. From now on, if anyone ever asks me what, what he Carl does looks look like. like Charlie Brown. Oh, <laughs> I just, just it's like great him. because Charlie Brown has got that thing. You've got less features than Morph. It's just a round head and there's human aspects. It's just the bare minimum. When I draw a cartoon of him, it's so easy. Yeah. Ah. The thing is, right, if I go on the poster, this is what I'm worried about. Where do you go from there? What do you mean? Well, it's, it's difficult, like. isn't it? Do you know, like before, you were talking about the complaint that a TV channel got about some fella putting bacon? Yeah? Yeah. That was me. Yeah. Yeah, you were talking about a fella. I didn't put the bacon on, but yeah, I was talking about it here and yeah. they got a complaint, yeah. Right. Now, he had to do that to get a kick. Yeah? Yeah. Where do you go from there? And it's the same for me on a poster. Once they've seen me. <laughs> yeah. And we get sued by the estate of Charles M. Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for using yeah. without copyright his <laughs> most popular creation. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's just that if people don't know, it keeps them interested. They don't what? need they're to know. They're not tuning in every week on the off chance that we'll. They're wondering what you look like. Yeah, but the ones who are, it just keeps them. They won't let them down there when they see your picture. It won't let them down. It's it won't be a exactly, letdown. It's exactly as it should Leave be. It. Anyway, yeah, competition. Yeah. Right. Let's get the answers. Let's get this out of the way. Songs of phrase. Songs of Phrase, uh, just in case you've just tuned in, it's a new feature we've been doing. Uh, we take songs and they chop them up and that, and uh, it's, a f it's a phrase that has cropped up on the show a few times. This week we, we, uh, we were going back to the classic, me auntie had wind for five minutes. <laughs> going back to the classic. And uh, let's, uh, let's have a, have answer, a listen. Okay. Yeah. Right, so what you had there is you had the knack. Yeah. With my mama my shoe owner. Uh-huh. Uh, Auntie was some Manson track. What? You don't even- you don't even know what it was. Um, Auntie everything I think it's called, some album track, right? Oh. Then you add Bill Medley, Jennifer Warns, I have had the time of my yeah. life. You add Bob Dylan. Wind. 
Wind. Idiot wind. Blowing in the wind. Oh, blowing in the wind, was it? Uh, what was after that? Four. Four was, um, two, well, four, no, six, four, eight, four, eight motorway. Two, four, six, eight, motorway. Yeah. Tom Robinson. Tom yeah. Robinson, yeah. That was a four. Then you had the five from Manfred Man, Manfred Man, five, yeah. four, three, two, one. We wrapped it up with a bit of five star yeah. for a minute, something about, uh, Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, can't wait another can't minute. Can't wait another yeah. minute. So, they're the answers. Yeah, We're well, looking I'm for someone who- I don't think we got anyone who had them all right, but- Nobody got all right. seven, although in your little, uh, answer list then you only listed six. Cause yeah. you got- your numbers went out of sync in your own brain. Well mm. done. Once yeah. again. Smooth. I tell you what, Carl, why don't you next week at least write down the answers for yourself? Don't need to. Well, you clearly do, because <laughs> you just embarrass yourself. <laughs> don't need to! You've proved that you do! <laughs> right, right okay. anyway. Well, well done, I'm gonna give it to, uh, Paul Tier. PJ Tier, because he got, uh, f uh, five of the seven. Well it. done. So he gets- And he's getting that signed Kevin Spacey. Yeah, if you can just email us your address as well and, uh, Get them off to you today. All right, brilliant. That's well what you're dealing with. So you've done that. You've done that competition. That's been put to bed. It's right, so let's have a great done. tune, Rick. And then what else have we got? We got some monkey news. We've, we've got, got some monkey, got monkey news. We've got cheapest chimps. We're doing the film thing. Right, we've got the film win. thing. What you film is it this week? Silence of the Lambs. You can be owning that up by three o'clock on VHS. <laughs> is it about four ninety nine? From here, is it? Yeah, thereabouts. <laughs> Twentieth century boy, come on, Mark. Some people want a twenty-first century boy these days. <laughs> Mark Bowden there, a little bit out of date <laughs> on XFM one hundred four point nine. Ricky today, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Right, it's that time again, isn't it? Oh, monkey news. Yeah, monkey news. <laughs> oh, monkey, monkey news. <laughs> right, if you're a new listener, this is where we do a bit of monkey news. <laughs> these charts on a news program, yeah. like Newsnight Review or News at 10, uh, over to Carl Pilkington. <laughs> yeah, alright. Monkey's gone mad again. Go on. Right, we've we've done quite a lot of good stuff. The one that sort of kicked up most of the fuss was probably Ollie the monkey. <laughs> I love the fact that they're all monkeys, he's a chimpanzee! Well. Right. He's an ape! Well, today, right, we're looking at one that's, uh, <laughs> it's called Coco. Uh, oh yeah, the one, the sign language one. Well, what I've read about him is he speaks, right? <laughs> Highly educated. Yeah. Photographer. Carl, <laughs> <laughs> Carl. I love the fact that when he gets a, a, you know, a gifted ape, he has to look up to him. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. realizes that he is superior. I love that. Right. Oh. And, uh, they also likes going on computer chat rooms. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take this anymore, see? I'm really sick. No. Oh, gosh. Which, right, oh. That, that's pretty amazing. You know, if an infinite number of monkeys are in an infinite number of chat rooms, they'll eventually type, which is your favourite episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Carl Wilkinson, you're an idiot. But the thing is, right, you're saying about the, the infinite thing again, about mm. monkeys, if you put them in a room with a typewriter, they'll come up with Shakespeare. Yeah. yeah. I'd sort of agree with that, right, with monkeys who can't do other stuff, but this one I reckon's gonna be busy taking pictures and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think monkeys that are boring. <laughs> Is there a boring monkey? Is there- would you ever have a chimp and you'd go- I, I, Suzanne would go, I've got your birthday present. And you have a, it's a chimp, it's a chimp fella, he's about, you know, about a sort of like a middle-aged chimp. No, I, I'd love it, I'm talking- Would you ever go, the... I'll tell you what Suzanne, that one's boring. No, no, but I bet the monkey would get bored, I mean. Do you know what I mean? The monkey would be bored. I'd be loving it. I'd love to have a little monkey, right? <laughs> but what I'm saying is, <laughs> you really would, wouldn't you? Yeah. If you buy him a camera, he'd be happy again, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, but that's just it. You wouldn't get him. It's like if you can do other stuff, you don't want to do the boring stuff. Forget the typing. Forget the monkey's typing. Talk about this monkey that's a photographer. No, what but are you we are in a way. I'm. I'm just saying that that would be happier. Monkeys that have got nothing else to do, if they can't take pictures and that, and they can't go on chat rooms. They're happy to sit in a room typing away for, typing for away. infinity, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But he's got maybe a little exhibition to put on. Do you- Do you think- Do you know most- do you know that most chimps and apes and monkeys still actually just live in trees? These are in laboratories and zoos and things. 
You know that, that that's not the norm. These these monkeys yeah, yeah. walking around, sort of chatting and riding bikes. Yeah, you know that's not natural. Exactly. No, I know, but it, it's, if, it, if you left a bike in the jungle and then came back a few years later, there wouldn't be monkeys riding around on it. And a book. If you left a bike with a book in the basket, right, and you went away for ten years and you came back, there wouldn't be a whole new transport system and schools. <laughs> no, they'd eat it. They'd throw it round and eat it. All right, then, so what you're saying is you can't- you see, what I think is, right, and don't take this the wrong way in that, right, Stephen Hawking. Yes. Right? Now, he had a bad illness. Now, I wonder if he'd be- I wonder if he'd be as bright as he is if he didn't have that. Right. Because he's had time to sit down, he's like, well, what can I do? Yeah. We've gone give him a book. And he read it. I like that. G give us another one. Yes. He's got a lot of time on his hands. Yes. Now what I'm saying is monkeys, yeah, right. they, that, this one here, Coco, which I think was a gorilla. Right. Right. That wouldn't have been happy on a, on a little keyboard, just doing that Talking all day, away. because it'd be going, well I could be out taking pictures. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record! Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Play a record! Yeah. Done. You're an idiot! There it was. There's the catchphrase. Once more. He is! He's an idiot! Sure, sure. <laughs> Athlete, El Salvador, on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, the, the, the amazing Steve Merchant and the, and the incredible Carl Pilkington. Alright? Right. right, we've done that. Monkey news. Right, so let's 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 hit them dead. Let's go straight with cheapest chimps, Carl. <laughs> right, well this 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 will probably finish today, to be honest. Oh, right, because I, I, what if we looked at it, cheapest chimps? We found out that they eat one banana. Next, go on, do this one. one. Yeah. A day and that. yeah, that's right, it. Brilliant. So, so what? Are, it was a long running feature. Go on. <laughs> what, oh, sorry, can I just ask again? What are the rules with cheapest chimps? It's just you know, if you wanted a chimp, how much would it sort of cost you? Brilliant. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Title come first. So, yeah. Yeah. As always, that's the way they do it. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh, cheapest chimps. I thought I'll go online and see, you know, if I could buy one. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much do you reckon? Six thousand pounds. To buy a chimp? Yeah. Oh no, a ridiculous amount. What, 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 where, where can you buy them from? What sources? You shouldn't be able to buy them. eBay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, buy a chimp? From who? Does this website? That was selling stuff. What you could actually- What, what are you talking- what are you talking about? Right, here we go then, right? I looked at it. Here's some of the other animals that were on there. No, yeah. no, wait, wait a minute. What, uh, are these poachers? I don't know. What, the zoos that got bored with them? What, where can you buy a chimp? I can't- I don't want to give it a plug. <laughs> <laughs> right, some go on right? right? So what are the other animals available? Right, well, that- that'll give you some prices with the other animals, then you can try and work out if it's cheap. As chimps, right? <laughs> so, uh, right, a camel. What do you reckon? Uh, twenty-five thousand pounds. Right, eight thousand dollars for a camel. Uh -huh. right? Sloth. <laughs> Forty quid. Three thousand dollars. Right. Last one, Bengal tiger. Oh, that's got to be pricey. Twelve thousand dollars. One thousand eight hundred dollars. What? Yeah. Carl, this is an awful website. That can't be true, mate. Right, That's so awful. A chimp. Well, Five thousand dollars. I'm going to go with um, <clears throat> one thousand dollars. Fifty-five thousand. What? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. So. But I don't know what I don't know what to say because this is rubbish anyway. What website can you buy? Okay, get me a tiger. Here's a grand. Get me a tiger. <laughs> well, I don't know. You're an idiot. Postage and packages and. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so where does the cheapest <laughs> chimps element come in? Well, that's why you're supposed to shout it. it's cheapest chimps at the end. Well, it isn't. That's why I want to finish the feature. <laughs> 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 I don't know what. <laughs> what is the cheapest chimps? Oh, we Oh, this is amazing. This is amazing broadcasting. So we're up for a Sony Award, aren't we? I hope, I hope they're listening because it's ours. Yeah, uh, I mean, with, with features like cheapest chips, it's ending because they're not. <laughs> it's in the bag. And do you remember? Do you remember? Here's <laughs> athlete. Can't stop the spirits when they need you. This life is more than just a read through. 
can't stop the red hot chili peppers. Well, I've got news for you boys, I don't want to stop you. I love <laughs> your funk rock fusion. <laughs> Word of warning, no nudity, repeat, no nudity at this gig. <laughs> I do it like you, I think you should host a whole show like that. I, it's lovely, that's- so, have you ever done any, um, like DJ, like proper DJ, like in a pub or a club? Cause I know- Wow. Carl had his own, uh, I had my own di disco when I was a kid. W yeah, not proper, I, I had a, a gig once when I had to, uh, it was, uh, two nights a week in the local pub. Just the two decks that it was in a suitcase, you know, there's those sort yeah, of like, all yeah, in yeah, one yeah. thing. And they just wanted the same records. They wanted, uh, uh, Rod Stewart, Baby Jane. They wanted, um, about l d quarter to eleven when they were all drunk. They wanted, uh, Don McLean's American Pie, which they all sang along course, to. Yeah. Uptown Girl they liked. Right. Um, but yeah, I didn't used to do the talking. Did you do the patter? No, I, I never couldn't. Had the, I, was, I, I just, I just do don't understand it. I just love those, those wedding sort of DJs that they have to give you extra information. Yeah. They can't just play a song, they have to say things like, Ooh, all the way back there in the Commodore's <laughs> easy. <laughs> it's sort of like, they, they have to tell but you who's something. Listening? Who's well, listening? They're just going to play wedding. the next record. It's like, a, wedding. a wedding, yeah. It's like, what, there's like a kind of, there's like a, the controller of a local radio station listening. It just happens to be at the wedding thinking, hang on. Hold on, he's played a record but he's got extra information. <laughs> well, they should do useful things at a wedding. Like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, will the overweight aunt in the purple dress please now take the floor with a little unfortunate <laughs> kid and let him hop around? <laughs> As the dance floor is currently empty, will any eight-year-old boys wearing those tiny tuxedos please <laughs> slide across the dance floor on their knees? Um, <laughs> until they are taken home and put to bed early. <laughs> uh, I went to, uh, went to one once. And, uh, the, the, the bloke who'd hired it was to the DJ, and this, this DJ that had come with this sort of party, he wanted a 70s disco, and he looked like Woody Allen, right? <laughs> and I, I was sure he used to be a gentleman's outfitter, yes. like, and, um, and the, he said, oh, I wanted a 70s disco, and he went, well, I've got Bicycle Race by Queen lined up, I've got ELO, <laughs> and I've got Cliff We Don't Talk Anymore, so, and he went, well, I went sort of more disco, he went, I don't really want to blow all my earth, wind and fire before ten. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like <laughs> all planned. There is a rule. There are rules. <laughs> Will the seventeen-year-old girl who's dressed like Avril Lavigne please touch loudly <laughs> because I still haven't played anything by Linkin Park? <laughs> <laughs> Will the 45 year old woman recently divorced please cry now? Yeah. Please <laughs> cry now. Please cry now because it's clear you're never gonna find another man. Because <laughs> <laughs> you used to be a DJ, didn't you? Because there is oh, a sort of rule, definitely. Fair. I remember there was like, you know, I le what I learned was that you, there are certain tunes you just do not play early on. Oh, what a night, for instance. <laughs> Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, people, you never play that before like eleven. You want that mm. last hour before they've got to go home to be non-stop dancing. W when would you pop on Dancing Queen? <laughs> Interesting. Thanks for that. Is there a buffet being served? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, definitely post buffet. I remember there was a class. There was great days. I was reminded this recently uh, by uh, ITV's Reborn in the USA. There was a great time where you could come out of the buffet or any kind of speech with a bit of Gina G. Who uh, I remember there was a great period for uh, a couple of years where that was a, always a barnstormer. Sure, sure, but sadly, sure, no sure. What about um, I mean, because the dangerous, of course, you go back to the seventies. Maybe you got Dancing Queen, but how many do you play before you come into the eighties with perhaps Billie Jean or Soft Cell? Soft Cell's always a classic. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to do that. And because uh, there's always controversy now um, as to whether Love Shack is overplayed. I know that's a big discussion. I've now never liked it. it. Um, no, I just like. Will any thirty-five-year-old men please now dance ironically? To bombastic, <laughs> in the vain hope that someone would actually find them attractive. <laughs> what Love Shack? Oh no, never liked Come it. Come on, I never, I never. Yeah, all right. I, I just never liked a any records that with a hint of novelty about them. Mm. They are popular. Though. They're, they're mm. floor fillers. Oh, I, I, I hate them. I, I just. You haven't done DJ, now, have you? Exactly. What, what do you mean? Singing on the other side of your face. Have you? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Not you didn't popular. play Dexter's Midnight Runners. Um, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't plan it out that much when I did it. It was like, I knew I had the tights and cigars to give away. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which he I, I stole from his parents' bedroom beforehand. Yeah. Why were you giving away stuff at a disco anyway? Why are you just playing records? Because people liked it, didn't they? If, if it wasn't... It, it hasn't changed. We're doing this. We talk rubbish, we play records, and we give away crap that yeah. we found. Yeah. It hasn't changed, does it? And, uh... So I had some good times. I mean, uh, for people who haven't been listening all the time, it was called Pilkies Making Music. Yeah, Pilkies Making. It was like Pilkington, and my mate was called something Making, and the music is what we played, yeah. right? And they had some Perfect. cards made, had some nice blue glossy cards made, but they were quite expensive. Yeah. So I used to hand them out, and then they'd say cheers for that, and say, no, write it down, 
Write the number down, I want that back. Yeah. <laughs> Cause, Brilliant. Because yeah. they were quite pricey. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Classy, classy done. businessman there. Maeve, I think Richard Branson used to do that. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Saved a bit of money because my dad made some, um, some lights for me. He just like- He, he said he made them, he found them in a <laughs> telephone box. <laughs> yeah. People were making phone calls in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Around the, around the neighbourhood. <laughs> exactly. It was just white bulbs in like a box and, and like my mate making, he used to just flick them on and off, mm. like the thing, and, th and then they'd be in time with the music and that. Oh, no. Perfect. Well, you had to sit there. And <laughs> I love that. I love that. We got our we got our sound and light system. What's his name? Colin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> right. So uh, did you ever rent him out? <laughs> right, well, we never had any disasters, right? But my mate did one, right? And it, I don't know if it's that funny, really, but it. Go on. I'll tell you anyway, right? We, he was doing this gig, and it was probably one of the biggest gigs, right, that he ever had. Must have been a couple of hundred people there, yeah. and um, in like a big sort of warehouse thing. Anyway, for some reason, there was some problem with a big speaker that fell, right? So, uh, the police turn up and stuff. Right. And they try to con control the night, and they're going, can everyone sit down? Can we try to control it? Can, just, can you sit down? So anyway, you get a few, like, little groups of people sitting down on the floor, and people were still stood up, and the police were saying, look, you know, we're gonna cancel this whole night if you don't all sit down, and more and more people are sort of sitting down. It's going on for about 20 odd minutes, right? Will you please sit down? And it gets to this point when there's just one lad stood up in the middle. And he's going, look, you're ruining it for everyone. Will you, will you sit down? And it goes quiet for a bit. And someone's muttering something. And he goes, ah, the lad standing up has got calipers on his legs. Can we have a round of applause for the kid? <laughs> <laughs> who what? said that? It was this lad who was doing the, the DJ. He, oh. he was the DJ. So like, they kept the police and everything were saying, will you sit down, you're ruining it for everyone else. Dear. You know the quick way to sort that out would have been to play James. Yeah. 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 But most of mine were, I had good nights. Yeah. Always got rebooked and stuff and- I had a bunch of Adventure Scouts, went mental once, had a food fight. What were you, you playing Adventure Scouts for? Well, we, we got booked by everyone, Rick. We, 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 I mean, we started with weddings and, uh, and local, you know, things, but we soon went up. We were, I mean, at one point we played a massive gig in a, uh, in a big tent. In the middle you of nowhere for some scouts, and they actually loved us. Rage Against the Machine, oh, they couldn't believe that up. Do you know when they say, uh, um, uh, weddings and bar mitzvahs, do they get a lot of discos playing bar mitzvahs? Is that a big, I, I don't know. So. What happens at a bar mitzvah? Well, I've not, I've not, uh, never been to a bar mitzvah. Could someone phone, them. phone in, if you've had a little bar mitzvah? Tell me what it was like, what, yeah. what, did you, what sort of, what did you play at a bar mitzvah? I don't, I don't know what the occasion is really, it's com becoming a man, isn't it? Yeah. Right. We've learned something, won't we, Carl? Yeah, alright. And do you want them to phone in? Yeah. Do we? No. Well, do we I, I want to know if they have, if they have, really do have DJs at bar mitzvahs. Alright. Oh, wait, so how, how interested are you in that? Well, you know, I, I don't want to embarrass myself one day. Sure. Uh, let's see, it's Carl, you've got to learn, haven't you? I'll tell you what, have we got time for the film thing as well? Yeah, play the film thing now. No, 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 no let's play a tune, let's play a tune. Oh, I can't believe my love. And apparently, and what happens? well, uh, Carl asked her what happens. She said, um, you just sit around and see the, the kid who's getting bar mitzvah, or the man now, uh, um, get given loads of money. Right. And uh, I said, is there a, a, a female equivalent? And apparently there is a female equivalent of a, a bar mitzvah, but she didn't know what it was called. What's that? A bar titzvah. <laughs> 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 right, I'm just gonna add to the list of, of people we've offended. Sorry to Jewish people as well. Yeah, we've got other So things. sorry to Jewish people, Jewish people, sorry to Chinese people, Sorry to Welsh people. Oh, um, fat women. Uh, well, don't put the Welsh in twice. Um, <laughs> sorry to Elvis fans. Uh, yeah, Elvis fans. Uh, animal lovers. Animal okay. lovers. Um, brilliant. Uh, uh, well, lovers of great radio. Yeah. Lovers, uh, music lovers. Good, well, sorry about that. Um. Apologies to all of you. Thank, uh, yeah, and oh, uh. We haven't even had time for, um, we haven't got time for the film thing this week. Oh, uh, why not? Just, it's running, running tight, really. Are you sure? We haven't done Cheeky Freak of the Week. <laughs> <New> <laughs> yeah, feature, that's a new feature. Cheeky Freak of the Week. Let's do Cheeky Freak of the Week. What is the cheekiest freak of the week? So, I, I make, I'm just gonna apologise now. I'll just add, freaks, sorry to freaks. Okay. Yeah, right, go ahead. Well, we've, I mean, we've sort, I say it's a new feature, but we've sort of touched on it in the past with- We always talk about freaks. Hairy Chinese Kid. Yeah. Um, we've had, um, The Pillow Man. Yeah. Are you called um, a draft excluder? Just making up that with you, Rick. Yeah, people yeah. without arms and legs. <laughs> mm. 
But at least, you see, the pillow man, what do you picture? Because I was saying to Ricky in the week, right, I I'm a great fan of the elephant man. Mm. That's his, do you know that's his favourite freak? Of, the of all man. freaks, Do you know why he said, do you know why he said, he said, he said, because you, you get what you pay for. When someone says the elephant man, it, it, you get what it says on the tin. Right. You know you're gonna get it. Yeah. Do you know, do you imagine, Steve, if you had a mate and, and you said, where are you going? He said, I'm gonna go and see me mate. And you go, which mate? And he said, the elephant man. Yeah. Straight away, <laughs> you haven't even met him, but you know what he's gonna look like. Yes. Right? That's what I like about that. Airy Chinese kid. Yeah, you know what you're gonna get. <laughs> Pillow man. <laughs> Pillow man. Yeah, not so good. What, what does that mean? It yeah. could be one of those big fat things on that show, couldn't it? A big pillow, like a. Yeah. Uh, you know, they had, you know that big thing about the, the fat people in feeders? They were getting up to like 60 stone and that. Big one. And there's um, there's thing called um, fat admirers that just fancy fat women, right? And uh. Are you writing that down? Yeah, sorry for fat people. Um, and they had blow up versions. It looked like a bouncy castle. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You could blow, you'd be knackered when you blew that up. Yeah, you just wouldn't want to go and forget it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, oh, I wow. people being cruel as well, isn't it? Because after watching the programme on Channel 4 about the, you know, the, um, fat people and fellas who like them and stuff, uh, there was a story on one of the news websites about some fella in Germany, right? It was a big fella, um, must have been about 50 stone, and he fell over, right? And I think he hurt his ankle or something. And Timber. they sent firemen instead of like an ambulance. Yeah. So straight away they're having a bit of a laugh. And they're not. No, they've got winching gear. Well, they didn't know. They didn't have winching gear. They had to use the hose pipes what? to carry him out. I think it was Ananova, that news website. They had to use the hose pipes. So they made like a bed using the hose pipes. Oh yeah. And had to carry him out on that. And then they had to sort of get him into a special truck. They said. Mm. Mm -hmm. And do the same when they got to the hospital. Oof. I mean, that's a bit. That's mad, isn't it? They shouldn't do that. Although, Carl, I'm loving that story. I'm just worried that we're not going to be able to fit in Cheeky Freak of the Week. What's so the Cheeky Freak of the Week? week? Alright, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Um, something I found on the net. Yeah. A fella who had 27 toes and fingers. In a jar? <laughs> no, still on him. And proper ones as well, not like little stumps and that. Proper, fully formed. Fingers, he was had he, like. Was he a pianist? <laughs> Close up magician. I don't know what he did, he just said that. that he was... Cat's cradle professional. Did he, he ever was... work on finger bobs? <laughs> 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 he was saying in the week. <laughs> For the crowd scenes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now gonna do Braveheart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he said about the elephant man. He, went, he said, I wanna do a thing right with freaks where it's good and bad. He went, what did you say? The, the, the pro about him is. What about the fellow with loads of fingers or? No, the elephant man. Well, he. He, he said the bad thing is he stretches his jumpers. <laughs> 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 when he puts them on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's the good thing? <gasps> sort of, he never gets up and goes, oh, my hair's a bit of a mess today. <laughs> <laughs> no. He's always having another bad face day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't complain about this head and shoulders. You're taking the piss. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. So that's freaky. Didn't you see an elephant woman in uh, Manchester? Yeah, yeah, leave that. What do you mean, leave it? No, because it, it it is sad. I know it's sad, but but I mean, uh, I don't know what my <laughs> next sentence is. <laughs> so <laughs> that saying. should be the end. <laughs> Did I it don't all? need to say anymore. People will know what she looks like. It's a good <laughs> name for her. <laughs> Did she like buns? <laughs> oh dear. It was when me, uh, it was when my dad was a taxi driver and he used to sit in the front. Yeah. And she used to get a lot of taxis. Yeah. And uh. And he only charged you half price, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he was a good guy. Well the bad thing is as well with people like that, you don't want to offend them because they never forget. <laughs> Go, was, Pilkington! I was in, I was sat in the front of the cab and my dad goes, right, we're gonna go and pick the, uh, you know, the, I, I can't even tell you the name, these guys, just evil. Right? What do you mean? No, leave it, so she's got- No, no, no! No, Carl, please. tell me what he said! No. You've already stitched him up with Steve and things from Little Welsh, fellas. I don't fellas. care. Right, what did he call her? I, 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 Steve, back No! Up, I really Carl, don't want to be Carl, there. our opinion of him is already pretty low. Look, tell me what he said. No, it's not, I'm scared of what my dad gets, it's the person who's got- She's not me. listening, is she? Well, our headphones wouldn't fit on our head. 
<laughs> Tell me what he called her. I don't want to. Tell me what he called her, Carl. I'm getting angry, man. Tell me what he called her. No, I'll leave that. Honestly. Tell me what he- It doesn't matter. Tell me what he called her! Carl, just- I'm gonna go- I, I, Sister, I don't want to right, know what he called I, I, her. Right, you're not gonna stop this show. We're not doing the next show until you tell me what he called her. What did your father call the elephant head woman? Tell me! Spudhead. <laughs> <laughs> how old were you? How old were you? I don't know, about nine. Did you <laughs> did you, so did you expect to see a potato with a dress? He did sort of, again, it's a good name, do you know what I mean? They had an idea of what it was gonna be about and he said, do you wanna stay in the car, I'll take you on because you can't- You've spun it, you've got lovely eyes. Can't. Come on, man. That, that's it, by the way. Is that finished. all? Is that all? Oh, yes. Goodbye. Brilliant. Well, let's end with our local Jay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you next week. Don't See call ya. it a comeback. Hickory dickory docks, some lads there just wrote a song called Clocks. The lads are Coldplay. <laughs> and the song is <laughs> Clocks. Beautiful. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, pressing the little buttons there. <laughs> XFM 104.9. What's that? What's that little mmm? Well, I uh, think I do more than press the buttons. Right, see, this is, this is it, right? A car was had a little strop on since last night, okay? And it's- <laughs> He's had a little strop on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did, you said strop on. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> and, uh, it's- I don't- I, I don't know why. He says that I'm an annoying person. He yeah. says that I wound him up, right? Um, which I don't know. He, he says that you're- you're winding up because you're sort of like negative about I'm everything. I'm negative. Yeah. And, um, but what I think it is, is because we pointed out that his lateness is unacceptable. Yeah. He said, meet you at six. He turned up at twenty past. He said, well someone stopped me in the corridor. I don't care. I've got stuff to do. I'm we have stuff to do. I think we're a bit busier than you, Carl. You've got one job. We've got loads of jobs. I keep telling you that. Yeah. You've got one job in a little room, a nine to five there, that you don't even get done in nine to five. That's why you're late and mucking around all the yeah, time. Yeah, there's loads of work to do. Yeah, one right. job. No, cool. it's not. It's just one job with a lot of other jobs in it. It's like those little Russian dolls you get. <laughs> right? Well, it's so not, is it? Go. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Everyone thinks, oh, he only sits in his studio messing about, making songs a phrase. That's what I do in my free time. <laughs> Which we've got coming up later. <laughs> <laughs> Super slick. <laughs> oh, I still dear. think twenty minutes late is an outrage. Though, yeah, Carl. twenty minutes late is. Yeah, but I didn't say bang on six. I said you said six. six. No, you didn't. You said six, which means six. Well, he doesn't. Wait, what? <laughs> Sorry, what? it doesn't. If it was a newsreader, I'd say yeah, you've got to be on time. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> if it was a six o'clock news, I wouldn't want to be late. But it's the fact that I said to you, I'm busy, I've got stuff no, to no, do. No, no, you didn't say that. You said, uh, six o'clock to sort uh, out tomorrow's show. I didn't, I know what I said, so. Yeah, well, well, so. well, you don't, because I remember you sent me a text. You didn't even, it wasn't even, oh, you didn't even the politeness to call. Stephen has stitched him up by being a little bit more busy. precise than him. It was a text and it said, uh, see you around six tomorrow, question mark? Around. You just said it. Well, you the six. It that doesn't yeah. count, that doesn't mean anything. Well, yeah, no, it does. What? So let, oh, you Rick. told me he said six. Well, he did. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Six o'clock, Rick. To me, uh, around, even if it was around six o'clock, mm. that would be five to six mm. or five past six. It would not be twenty minutes mm. after the event, because that is late. Mm. <laughs> well, you can't even. You can't. You've got nothing. You see, you haven't even got an excuse. Yeah, but then I turned up, yeah. right, and I said, right. Well, let's not argue about this. Let's come up with some good new features because we've been in uh, cheapest chimps. That's Brilliant. gone today. <laughs> good news. <laughs> <laughs> he never- he never liked you was Tim's car, no. did he? Right, he never liked it. Do you know what? Uh -huh. Do you know who's took it further? Donald McIntyre. <laughs> what? He's doing- he's doing a programme, Cheapest Chimps. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> not! not doing channel f well, well, we'll see. Again, I'll prove you right. Okay. <laughs> he's he's not- wrong. he's not doing a programme, Cheapest Chimps, is he? Is. He's not- what do you mean? He's doing a tour of trail on Channel 5 and it was saying, you know, is it's it five this. or is it about twenty past five? He's do doing this. He's done that. You know, now see him on Channel Five because he's moved to Channel Five. Right. He's saying first big problem, uh, chimps. You know, they're deer and that. And, uh, <laughs> no, they're not deer. He's sort of getting confused. No, no, f f fifty odd grand for a chimp. He's saying, you know, he'll look into how much you can get a gorilla for. <laughs> what are you? What are in the name of God are you talking about? We'll talk about that later. But I don't know. What I don't know. Oh, what? I'm just saying that that's another idea. And then, yeah, yeah, so, so go on, you got off the, this is why you never get stuff done and you're yeah. late. You got off the point, you were talking about arriving late. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying to you now, I'm just saying, I turned up late, so I said, right, well, let's not argue. Yeah. I said, let's do some stuff. Yeah. 
You weren't having any of it. I think at one point you were trying to be sick on me leg. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah? <laughs> Why? Just, just for fun? Yeah. All right. That's all right. That's when I started getting annoyed. <laughs> He was very annoyed last night. <laughs> no, uh, I, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, I, I can see where that could be annoying, but you just gotta think, hey, look, so what? It's, you know. Well, well. I think you rub each other up the wrong way. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. Well, no more cheapest chimps today. But right. nothing to replace it because we didn't have a chat. Mm -hmm. Songs of Phrase, we're doing that. You can win some stuff. Yeah, we've got the film that we got haven't done for the last two weeks. The final film, we won't be doing let, that. Let him one. down. It's two weeks. You say two weeks late on that. Well, yeah. Can I just ask, guys, is there going to be some great music? Yeah. Well, what I've about got some... something from the un only ones? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. yeah, yeah another 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 planet, 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 planet. Brilliant. Another Girl, Another Planet by The Only Ones, the next phone 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl, cheer up. Come on. There's a war on. Chill out. Yeah. I have to say, you you have become increasingly annoying, uh, recently, Rick. Really? Really? Yeah, chiefly, I tell you what it is, I think it's the, the hot weather. Can I just draw, just remind you, when we were in the office recently, we've got a little office that we write in, we work in, and, um, many, many moons ago, uh, we were doing some work, this was when we were f writing the first series of the, uh, of the office, and, uh, we, I was typing away, I was just typing something up we'd written, and I read it back to Ricky, uh, just to check he, he was happy with everything, I was reading it back, and, uh, as part of the thing, there was a knock in the script, it said, you know, knock, and I, so I was acting out for him and I knocked like this, and I realised he wasn't listening, he was in fact asleep underneath his desk, and he kn I knocked like that as part of the, uh, you know, reading the stage directions, I knocked, he thought someone was coming in, he leapt up, plunked his head, <laughs> zipped up, thought someone, I said, Rick, it's not, I'm just acting that out for you. <laughs> He just wasn't paying attention. He, I, just, he wasn't uh, listening. What? And can I just draw in, <laughs> so recently, we're, we're, in, we're in another office, we're typing away, da 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 da, uh, I look round, he's got his shirt off. It was he's hot. Just, he's just taking his shirt off, right? So he sat there, 41-year-old man or whatever you are, 40-year-old man, there with his shirt out. Beautiful. I mean, I've seen most parts of your body now at one point <laughs> or another. I think from the early days when we used to work at XFM, you started showing me bits of your anatomy, which is something he does to people he likes, friends of his. I'm sure you've seen most of it, Carl. No. And so, um, he was, sat there. Relationship. <laughs> he was sat there, and <laughs> there was a knock at the door because we'd asked someone who worked in the building to bring us something, and so I had to delay it by sort of not opening the door so he could get his shirt back on. Yeah. And so he was running around trying to get his shirt back on. So what would they have thought? What would they have thought? They'd have walked in, he'd have just yeah, been sat there, stripped to the waist. Didn't they sort of think, hang on, what's going on? Look through the keyhole. No. Well, no. It was ludicrous, because oh. as they came in, he sort of, he was flustered and he kind of was just <laughs> leaning against the window, <laughs> just looking like, I often stand here with my, uh, my shirt back it's to front. Like, I was getting like Bernard Manning, you see Bernard Manning, whenever he goes into the house, he has to go upstairs to take his trousers off. I love that. <laughs> the fact that you, in your house, you've just got your pants and your vest on. <laughs> That's what you want to do. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's all the time. It's not just, I mean, you haven't done that with me, taking your clothes off and that yet. But, like, last night we were sat in the pub and I was saying, right, you know, let's not even worry about new features then. Let's, let's get the current ones, you know, going. Like what? Good. Like, <sighs> The one that was trying to work out the, uh, cheeky freak of the week. Think of that! <laughs> yeah, but Think I was of that, though, as a normal conversation. Yeah, as but a, I, a, I'd looked online, right, I didn't find that much. I found, uh, actually I'll tell you what I found later. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> we're looking for that, right? <laughs> and, um, then at one point I think you said to me, go on, you know, what about the Guinness Book of Records? Yeah, you know, they'll, bit, they'll have, like, yeah. the, the best freak yeah. of the, in the world or whatever. Yeah, ever. So, uh, I said, yeah, yeah, bring one in. Now, you've got one at home. Yeah, I've got a couple. But you couldn't be bothered carrying that in today, so I had to go out of the pub that I was at. Yeah. Nip into Borders. Yeah. Buy a Guinness Book of Records. Yeah. Out of my own money, eighteen ninety yeah. nine. Yeah. Bring it back, and then you said, oh, I don't know if I want to do this feature. <laughs> <laughs> so it cost me twenty quid for that, I had to buy a video for Silence of the Lambs film clip. I'm actually out of pocket <laughs> at the end of this. <laughs> yeah. But do you want to work with me is the thing. If you want to work with- uh, people would pay that sort of money to work with me, Carl. You're a lucky bloke. Think how many people think, oh, Carl, he gets to, gets to drink and sit. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were making a cup of tea and I surprised, didn't I? Little, surpri it's little surprises. Steve, you know last night? Do you know when I left the pub in a bit of a mood because yeah. I, I just fed up with not getting anything done? Yeah. Walking down the road I was thinking, how can I get out of this? How can I stop having to work with them? I'm thinking, I wonder if I, if I leave, I wonder if they'll be funny and they'll go, and then my boss will be giving me stick. I'm thinking, how long, how much notice have I got to give out? How, how, and all this is going through my mind. I'm walking home and I got in, I said to Suzanne, I'm sick of it. She's going, you need to do it, we want to get a new kitchen. 
<laughs> and I was like, yeah, but how big does the kitchen need to be? I was saying, do we need a big kitchen? Can we get a small one? Have we got enough for a small kitchen? Do we need so many cupboards? Can we just have wood instead of steel? <laughs> All this, try to get out of doing this. Yeah. It's always just, I always feel like, uh, you know, cause I, I like to think that I'm not perhaps as bad as him. Yeah, no. You annoy me in different ways. <laughs> like what? How does he annoy you? Well, stuff, stuff that, you know, I, I come up with ideas, say yeah. cheap as chimps. Yeah. Uh, rock busters springs yeah. to mind. Yeah. Uh, 15 like Taiwan. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> 15 Taiwan. Let's just remind people what 15 Taiwan was. It was a little feature that I wanted to give a run, you know, give it a little run, see if people like it. Uh, the premise um, being? No, there's no premise, it's just a title. No, we were gonna get 15 sort of ornaments, you'd explain them, and then people would call up and say, <laughs> that one's from Taiwan. <laughs> God, you just explained why I didn't think that was a good idea. Yeah, By explaining the good- the No, you know the funny thing is, Steve, right, I was walking down Regent Street on Monday, Walk past one of these big stores, right, and they've got all famous quo quotes on the windows, right, yeah. and one of them was something like, an absurd idea is often a great idea. Yeah. Do you know who said that? Go on. Einstein. Yes. Which made me wonder, if you were his mate, would he ever have done E equals MC squared? Or would you have said, don't bother with that, it's not gonna work? Because that's all you seem to do, everything I come up with, yeah. you put down. Yeah. Well that's one thing, he's negative, right, I don't know, I don't know why, I don't okay. know why he is. What he, else? He messes me about, I get him concert tickets for stuff and, yeah. and you say, oh I didn't bother going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is annoying. You come in, you know, five minutes to go with tracks that need editing. Yeah. 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 The little bag, yeah. that bag that was free. Yeah, you got a free bag today, an yeah. XFM little rucksack thing. Yeah. yeah. You were like, oh what's this, what's this rubbish? Yeah. Ricky said, I'll have it, they're great. He yeah. said, no, I want it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's so, free, I need it. Yeah. Mm, I'll give that as a gift else? or something. So, so, I mean, I think on reflection, Steve is probably a little bit more annoying than me. Mm. <laughs> I, I won't go that far. <laughs> you are, you are annoying. If I had to go away for a week somewhere, yeah. if it was a quiet place- Well, you are again, aren't you? That's two orders you had this week, this year, I mean. If it was a busy place, I'd probably go with you, cos people, do you know what I mean, staring at me all the time and that, if I'm walking around with Steve. <laughs> No, I'm just- <laughs> Can I draw up a list of reasons I don't like you, Carl? <laughs> just being honest. Well, I'll tell you, because the list of reasons I don't like you is incredibly long. I'm getting longer. Just saying. Just one other slap. There you go. There's a star, Ash, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl. All right, let's start again, yeah? I'm gonna be the same, but let's start again. <laughs> so what I mean is stop being grumpy and let's let me carry on being annoying. Because mm. Steve's not gonna change. He's not gonna suddenly start going, you know what, Carl? I think your ideas are really good. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> remember when he came up with that idea, that game show idea? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and you went, you went, well, it's not an idea, Carl. And he came to me and said, he said, oh, I'll, I'll add it with Steve. What's it? He went, how did the office ever get on telly? <laughs> well, what was the idea, Greg, in summary? I don't want to talk about it because someone will nick it. <laughs> no, they won't. They will. <laughs> Donald McIntyre's already got cheap as chimps. <laughs> I can say, I bet they're in the making of Rockbusters as we speak. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not going to tell you yeah. any more about it. I reckon Bob Oldness is probably nicking yeah, that idea. Exactly. Well, Cheeky little. Right. Songs of phrase coming soon. Is it? Yeah, what is it this week? What's the, what's the phrase? We're, um, remember the story I told you ages ago about, uh, about my neighbour having horse in the house. Oh yeah. Having a yeah. horse, yeah, a horse. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what's happened with that? Lenny Henry doing it as a series. So, uh, uh And people nicking your ideas left, right and centre. Well, that's, that's the phrase we'll be using anyway. What? Um, my neighbour had horse in her house. How many words is that? Six. My neighbour had. So, there's no grammar either. My neighbour had horse in the house. <laughs> My neighbour had horse in house. <laughs> what is- wait, what is the phrase? My neighbour had horse in her house. Add or- add- is there- oh, are there any <laughs> prepositions? Are it? there any prepositions in this sentence? Look, don't judge it beforehand. You see, okay. I'm turning over a new leaf. I think this is a great idea. I think Carl's a genius and I look forward to hearing this enormously. Yeah, okay. And I won't be sick on your leg or squeeze your head or make you jump when you're making <laughs> a cup of tea. Just looking through the gills. That is still the funniest thing, isn't it? Squeaking at someone when they got a cup of tea. <laughs> right. There are a lot of what strike me as seemingly pointless 
uh, feats. Uh, uh, the records. Ginsburg Records is, uh, right, the Ginsburg Records is great. I used to, I used to love it as a kid. I've had about ten copies in my life. The last one I bought a couple of years ago, President, it was really good. I, I, I love it. I love the real records, tallest, fattest, thinnest, best, fastest, most expensive, biggest, and all that. But the ones that really annoy me are the ones that, the reason these people are in there for it, are the only people that tried. What, yeah. Bouncing a milk bottle on your head. Most watches eaten? <laughs> <laughs> I just found that one. <laughs> Uh, uh, Kim Sung Do from South Korea ate five watches, the entire watch with the exception of the wristband, in a time of one hour and thirty-four minutes. What do you make of that, Carl? Made him regular. <laughs> Come on. How did they time him? <laughs> 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 Most live rattlesnakes held in the mouth. Eight live rattlesnakes held by, um, it just says an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this gives me an idea, Carl. <laughs> Talking of idiots. Yeah, do you want to get into the Google records? No. Come on, come, come on. on. Be there's, th there's things in there that are just absolutely anyone could do. Like that one in Big Brother, I was watching it, and it was, um, uh, balancing sugar lumps. I wanna go, uh, how many people try that? If there's schools around Britain going, listen, we've got to get in the sugar lump award. <laughs> we got to, it's grassroots level, there's not enough kids balancing sugar lumps. <laughs> how can we compete in the world market? Uh, I was but, looking at it last night and there was one about, uh, about the farthest that a dog swam. Um, <laughs> I think it was something like nine miles, but it had no choice, did it? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and he took it out to the Atlantic or something, and so it didn't want to do Threw it. Threw it in the water. Yeah. So yeah. it's not alright to put it in a bin bag and chuck it in a canal, no. but oh, it's for a world record. <laughs> yeah. Nine miles it did. Oh, God. Possible ones that you could do, Carl. What's, what? the, mo what's the most forest gumps fitted in one wheelie bin? <laughs> what about this one for you, Carl? Uh, the record stands at the moment for most arrows caught by hand. But that's quite tricky. So what about most arrows caught by head? <laughs> yeah. And you would just fire arrows at your they head. They would, they would just skim off him. Do you think the, so? Yeah, the roundness. It would never actually get any sort of, you know, connection. Fastest human crab. Could you do that? I'll you, do can, that. Can you What's... form the crab? Can you do that? What's that? It's you just got to go bending over backwards well, and running. Can't do that. No? Right, what about, uh, um, what, what would you be good at? What about hamburger stuffing? Oh, right, uh, <laughs> right Carl. Uh, let me, t all right. In the mouth, you mean? Well, it says the record for stuffing the most regulation sized hamburgers, including buns, in the mouth at one time is how many? How many uh, hamburgers with buns in so the mouth? So this is just. You're not swallowing anything, you've just got stuff in your mouth. You'd be so good at this because you're shaped with your head. You've got a shape. His head's just like Hamburglar. You'd be good at this, man. Yeah. Honestly, you'd be perfect. You look like Zippy. And the great thing is your head's empty, so you could get more in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? This guy had a oh, brain do that, with. do that. What is it? Is it, could he, could he, is it possible? Is it well, mental? Well, how many do you think it was? There were I three don't know. burgers in buns. What do you reckon, Carl? What, how, how quick he ate them? He didn't eat them, it's just how many he can stuff in his face. So literally ha hold them within his cheeks and his mouth. But don't swallow anything. So what, how many, how many burgers? How many burgers did he manage to get into his, his face? Uh, so it's a fella. It's, it's not. Yes. About. Not five? No, 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 three is the three? world record. Three is well, the world record. What are they though? It just says regulation size. So we could go to m m McDonald's or Burger King and get just hamburgers I and think, that would yeah, count? Yeah, just the regular burgers and we'll just stuff it them in count. there. We, we gotta get Norris McWhorter. Well, we, we could practice it now and then if we, if, if you're a triumphant, if Come you on, get Carl, far in I there. Don't, I don't, you know I've got a, a small throat and that. Well, you don't I have to swallow, that's a great thing. Yeah, but I, I don't, I don't like it. As a kid, I'm choking on stuff and I, I get funny about it. Well, no, well, no, just to, be, to keep your tongue at the back of your mouth and we have stuff the hamburgers in. No, I don't. Oh, come on! Do something! Carl, that is Dynamite Radio. Well, well, here go, here go, here, Steve will go and get the hamburgers. Have I got to pay for them? No, Carl, give I'm us the money. I'm not paying for them. Oh, I've come just on. spent 25 quid in total on a video on a Guinness Book of Records. That's costing me another four quid. <laughs> I'm come not on. doing- no, I'm not oh, doing Oh, come on, it. come no, on, don't give us money, get your phone back. Too, no, Andrew, it. oh, come on! I'm not doing it. Come on, do it. It's a- it's an interesting thing, come on. Uh, you could be in the Guinness Book of Records, Carl. No, leave it. See, see if we can. Oh, please, phone in if you want Carl no. to eat burgers. You don't have to swallow them, you can spit it all out. You can be sick on my leg after. Oh, come on! No, what, cause I don't like the- the stretching thing either. It don't stretch it, you it can- It will stretch, I'll be like the little bloody dog on the Winston Churchill ad. Don't swear well, I'm just saying no, though, I, I, I know, but We apologise to the radio authority, Carl is not only swearing, but he's refusing to do things oh. we come up with! But the radio authority will be happy with me stuffing three burgers in me face. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Yeah, we will. No, we're going to it. Well, yeah, I'm going to get some. I'm going to get some. Are we doing songs of phrase or something? No, let's no, do it. Right, play, play record. record. Play record. He's going to go. You're going to do it, Carl, or you, or you're fired. 
No, actually, he wants that. No, you're going to do it. Do it. Please do it. It'll be great. Honestly, please do it. Steve. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, where are you? I'm, I'm in one of uh, the capital's many burger joints. I'm just about to go up now and order uh, some burgers. Where are you? What, what, why are you? Where are you in? I'm in McDonald's in, uh, in Leicester Square. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. And um, what are you getting? Just, just get, get, Hang get, on, get, yeah. get Hello to there. I need to order uh, five regular hamburgers, please. Yeah. That's all right. Sorry? Five hamburgers, yes, yes. Are you, you're probably wondering why I'm ordering only five hamburgers, aren't you? And let me tell you why. Uh, my friend is going to try and break the world record for putting oh, no. burgers into his fat, stupid face. Um, what do you make of that? Exciting? Yeah. Do you wish him good luck? Yeah. What's your name? Tyre. Tyre? Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Tyre. I'll try and get Tyre to uh, wish you good luck in a minute, Carl. Mm -hmm. um, five, coming short, five, five should be enough. <laughs> The world record is what? Three? Three, yeah. Okay, good. I, I, I don't know what, um... Oh, here we go. How much is that? Three forty-five. Three forty-five for five hamburgers? It's good, isn't it? It's good value. <laughs> it is really, isn't it? Really, yeah. I mean, if there's anyone from hamburgers, this, uh, from McDonald's listening, they'd probably want to uh, give us some free stuff, I would hope. I would thought, right? Uh, you just uh, wish my friend good luck before uh, you... He's just on the end of the line there. Just say uh, good luck, Carl. Good luck. <laughs> All right, then. There you are. That's the people from McDonald's wishing you good luck. Carl, I'll be back shortly with the burgers. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, do you want the pickles left in? Steve Merchant with five little hamburgers. Got five burgers here, yep. <coughs> And, uh, so I don't know, how should we begin, Carl? Do you want to just look at the size of these burgers? They're oh, oh, small. um, look, they can see it on webcam, can't they? They can see us stuffing these burgers into your mouth. Mm. And I, I'm, and, and by the way, I'm filming this, Steve. Look, Brilliant. Look, 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 look camcorder. Mm. We, we'll put this on unseen footage on a DVD or something. Or maybe on the website. On the web- Oh, Carl, what yeah, if you break the record? Okay, Carl, I'm coming round now to, uh, to just, uh, monitor this and adjudicate. Well, What's the web- if people want to see this on the webcam, what is it? XFM.co.uk. Right, okay. Oh, so, oh, can I, can I, Steve, I'm not can being I do funny, that? I'm not being funny, right, but I think I have got, like, a bit of a wheat thing. You've got a bit of a what? A wheat allergy Oh, thing. don't give me that! No, seriously, me head's- I've, I've been eating a lot of shredded wheat recently. <laughs> and me head's got a bit bigger. Carl, I don't think you can let us down now, mate. So just, you just gotta put that first No, I can't, in. I can't put that, like, that, in my mouth on its- with- I, I've what got to break it up. About? I've got to break it no, up. Well, you can't up. break it up. It doesn't say you can't on the rule I thing. It does. It's it doesn't. I can't look. I physically can't. Try it. The, the, I can't look. I'd have to be Jay Goody <laughs> to be able to do that. <laughs> Seriously, look. Oh, try, try it, try it, try it. Try it. Oh, yeah, I know, but you're not doing- you're not approaching oh. it right. That's oh, it. Oh, come on! Go on! That's come on! Stuff. Oh, keep God, going. he's not gonna do one! Keep going, keep going, keep going. That's good work. That's good work. Keep going. How does he get three in? Keep pushing. Easy keep pushing. Easy keep pushing. Keep pushing. Get one in at least. Easy. Get in. one in at least. Get one in. Easy. Get one in. Push it. Push it. <laughs> That's one. That's one. Let's go with another one. Let's go one. R.E.M. Night Swimming. It's a lovely song, isn't it, Carl? Huh? Mm. XFM 104.9, I'm looking to raise. With me, Steve Merchant. Carl, disappointing. Disappointing. You couldn't even get one whole burger in your mouth. I did, kind of. Yeah, but there was a bit sticking out. It just looked messy. There yeah, was but, no- but you were saying about putting it in whole, and you c I don't think that's the rule. Okay. It's well, like so you get more in a suitcase if you- if you put things in properly. So- You don't just get all your clothes and chuck them in, so it's about- I reckon you've got to rip it up a bit. Okay, do that then. Oh. See how many you can get in. You've got to get in two. No, just just one. No, well it's, no, it's no, three. Um, pack it in. What do you do? Pack your cheeks first. Honestly, Steve, my head is is swelling a bit because I, I have got a wheat thing. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. Then. There'd be more room. <laughs> right. Okay. Look, oh, Carl so is now just sticking it in his cheek. Right. Yeah. Don't eat any. You can't swallow any. It's like a hamster. You've got to work it like a hamster. Yeah. Stick it in. Come on. <laughs> 
<laughs> he looks like Marlon Brando in The Godfather. <laughs> Come on! Mm -hmm. Don't lose any, yeah. Right. Right. Pack it in, then use your fingers to pack it in. Come That's on! It. Wedge it in. Like you're grating the bath. I can't do this either. <laughs> keep going, keep going! <laughs> keep going, don't give up so early! This is part of the problem. You just give up, Carl, yeah, too quickly. Yeah, you failed again. It's like your history O level. Come on, Carl, be a- come on, do something well. Fun, Succeed then, at something. Push it in. You've got a whole- nearly a half a burger there. Oh, I'll come round- I'll come round there. You're chewing! Don't chew! I've got a bit of food. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he said, but- Is that a whole one? Is that a whole one? No. no, it's not! I can see bits left! Come on, Carl. Come on, keep I working can't on do it. Anymore. Keep, keep <laughs> working on it. Look, there's so much space in your mouth, I can see it. <laughs> He's going mad. Okay. Okay, we do another one. We we'll do another one. That one then. We're doing another. Oh, are you alright? <laughs> are you going to be sick? Are you alright? <laughs> alright. Oh. oh God, should we play a record? Um, he's making my eyes water now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, oh, I'll, I'll oh, find a different dear. one for you. Find a different <laughs> one for you. <laughs> Most drinks eaten in three minutes. I'll go. Do you want to do that? Great, it's easy, aren't they? That's easy. Great. Come on, great, great easy. White Stripe, Seven Nation Army, that jumped twice. I apologise for that. You're the producer, Carl. Yeah. It jumped twice. Well, it's not, it's not my fault if people are slipping around because of burgers on the floor. <laughs> You're trying to squeeze my head when the song's playing. <laughs> what difference does that make? Well, anyway. Right. Um, don't take any- Right, I've just, um, I've just got some grapes there. Um, we've, uh, we've counted them out. What's the record then? Okay, well the most grapes eaten in three minutes, you've got three minutes, Carl, and you've got to beat Matt Hand from the UK, who consumed a total of 133 grapes, uh, in three minutes on the 8th of November 2001. Right, there's 150. So there. There's 150 in there. Right. Okay. So you've got three minutes. What are the rules? The rules you just got to eat them and swallow them. And it's, it's like Cool Hand Luke, right? You've got to just stuff them in and don't choke, because I got worried with the burger. That's a good advert for McDonald's, isn't it? Not only was I impressed by the cheapness of them, but he couldn't even get one in his mouth. Yeah. So, mm. value for money there. Maybe they'd like to send us some free stuff. Yeah, free- free stuff. Or just money. Any some money would be good. Next, uh, week, Carl, you're eating Sony Walkmans. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's right. right. Yeah. Available for- yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, right, Carl. Right, I think this is- this is gonna be good, right? What we're gonna do, right? We've got Song 2 by Blur set up. We know that's two minutes, so you can play that, because that'd be boring radio hearing Carl choke, wouldn't it, for three <laughs> minutes? <laughs> exactly. So, when I say go, Carl, right, I'm gonna go right on the minute, right? You've got to have a handful of grapes and you've got to press Song 2 by Blur. When we come back, you'll be stuffing your face. Hold on! Are you gonna do that? Uh, can you- can you work the buttons? I can, can do, do that. I can no, do I don't that. think you can no. you cannot touch the grapes until the opening number yeah, of songs you begin. Yeah, when, when the- when the blur two- when song two stops, can we just press up the fader so you- cause you'll be stuffing don't worry, your face. we're almost- we got- let's go- if we go, uh, okay. any second there. Okay, right, okay, ready, three, Carl. two, one, go! And he's off. That's good work from Carl there. He's just- he's approaching it cautiously to begin with. Cautiously. And he's just, he's, yeah, he's just, 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 <laughs> Don't make him laugh! Oh, come on! We can make, on. we can make wine. <laughs> come on, Carl, you're doing come so on, well, Carl. mate. I want to go. Come on, I only. Uh... <laughs> Why are you making him laugh? That was a world record attempt. Come on, he's over there. <laughs> Keep going! Come on! <laughs> you got 25 seconds. <laughs> come on! Oh, I think that was. Uh... That was a shame, actually, because you were doing well, but something went wrong. I know, and I think those are bigger grapes than the ones I've seen before. They're quite big grapes, look at his face, he looks so despondent. Come on, Carl, eight seconds. Just a few more. Five. Come on, what's the matter? Two. Two. One. 
it's all over, Carl. It's all over. We better count how many you did. Just, uh, we, you can get good at this. We can get good at this over the weeks. I think that was a fairly pitiful attempt, actually. I really thought he had a... It's interesting, actually. These are harder records than you might think. Yeah, I know. Six, eight, ten... How'd you feel after that record-breaking attempt? Not happy with that. <laughs> what are you not happy about? The fella who did it, was he in hospital and just had loads of grapes <laughs> on his board? <laughs> you can sure he wasn't producing a radio programme, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, neither are you. What, uh, what, what was tricky about it? What did you find hard? I think having Ricky standing <laughs> over me, yeah. sort of shouting, Go on! <laughs> isn't normal. <laughs> no. <laughs> but did that, so that hey, wasn't- He hasn't eaten any! Hold on. That's good to you there, too. That's quite- that's quite a poor attempt then, by the seam of it. Um, would you think about trying to maybe do that again in a couple of weeks? Would you no. do some practice and try that again? No, I'll leave it. Leave it for the <laughs> experts. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, there was- I noticed a tricky point, um, maybe sort of when you had about, uh, fifty seconds to go. You seemed to be spewing things into the bin. What was that? Again, uh, mainly Ricky standing oh, over me, so- eighty-eight. He's what? got eighty-eight there. Okay, so what's the mental arithmetic there? Cause we hit- put how many in? Uh, uh, it was hundred and fifty in the thing, wasn't it? What did I say? What did I say I had left? Well, I'm not doing it again, so... He had 88 left. So it's 62. God, you're only at 62. What's the matter with you, Carl? There's people starting you at 62. That is rubbish. That's oh, disappointment. That's so you've, well, you've, so you've failed on two world record attempts that's there. That's 62, and the records are- that is rubbish. What were you doing? Oh, yeah, but like I said, I've got a small throat. I can't- I can't drink a drink quick. Ever since the Mr. Freeze Pops when I was six, <laughs> that I nearly choked on, I nearly died on, I, I can't go back. It'd be like asking, I don't know, someone who got run over to play Frogger or something. <laughs> <laughs> What's Frogger? What, you mean a real life Frogger? Game. Well, just a computer game yeah, brings yeah. back memories, doesn't yeah, it? And yeah. I can't do that. What's Frogger? Does Frogger get run over? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> frog. <laughs> it has to run across the do, you know, do you know who he reminded me of? Uh, apart from Hamburglar and Zippy and all that. When he was munching those grapes because the shape of his head, it looked like a game of Pac-Man. Yeah. <laughs> it did, as he was getting to him, it looked like... It's <laughs> 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 just like it. Oh, Carl. Do you remember there was a, uh, there was a board game version of Pac-Man? Was there? I mean, the only thing that Pac-Man had was the fact that it was on a computer and it was a little face eating things. But imagine that as a board game. But there's- but there's- there's board games of, like, things that you don't need board games for. Yeah. It's like- there's board games of charades. Uh, do you know what- <laughs> You don't need that. It's like parlor games. Board games of let's watch the telly. <laughs> yeah. Let's- let's play sit around. <laughs> and it's all like 1999. You, you don't need it. New from Mattel. A stick. Simply run along, clanking it against a, uh, a fence or <laughs> a metal grate. It's fence stick. In a picture <laughs> of it like, oh, Nan. Nan, that's my stick. <laughs> I'll tell you that's what. That's my fence stick. Do you know I saw in, uh, in a shot recently? The board game of Cold Feet. <laughs> the TV show. <laughs> no that is a that winner. You are John Thompson. Yeah. Go back. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, a good game. Drink eight pints. Go on. <laughs> Songs of Phrase. Songs of Phrase, nicely done. Right, we'll get this going. How do right. you feel, Carl? Uh, yeah, Again, all right, all disappointment. Right. Disappointment probably to your family and friends. Well, I don't think they'll be get that gutted, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> right, the Songs of Phrase. <laughs> well, Carl, why don't we beg you and we'll come back with Songs of Phrase, because it's a big tease, people love that. Yeah. You know, it's one of the hot new we've got, radio We've got quizzes. one more thing for you to eat. No, I'm not doing any more of that, seriously. <laughs> right, Tom? Right, Songs of Phrase next, right? That was rubbish, that half hour. Rubbish. That's great. Roots. The Seed, XFM 104.9. I bet that is a record. Of eating grapes whilst DJing. Possibly. I'm assuming if there's any listeners out there that have a uh, record-breaking attempt they'd like to see Carl undertake in future weeks, they should email in. I think, uh, I think Jono has got that one. <laughs> 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 right, what have we got then? That's that right. whole, that's the city's side now, let's get on with the proper show. Right, <laughs> song, song's a phrase. Yeah, let's yeah. we do that? Um, on to the classy stuff. Yeah. yeah. Do you wanna do the prizes first? Right, uh, no then, we're right. here they are. I haven't seen these, but I'm excited as ever. Alright, we have a t-shirt there, arbitrary t-shirt that you have probably stolen off of someone. What does it say? Is it the Red Hot, the red hot Chili Peppers? So oh, you that's, right. that. that's not too bad, it's a big t-shirt there. Um, 
Oh, do, 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 do. on DVD. This, uh, should you be giving this away? This looks like it's the film Don't Say a Word. Yeah. And it's, um, it doesn't have all the proper packaging. It's literally the, uh, the disc, the DVD disc, just loose. So enjoy that. The current album from Oasis, uh, Heathen Chemistry, uh, DVD, on DVD, The Life of Mammals, the complete series, the David Attenborough recent DVD, uh, that. Walking with Cavemen, which I think is a DVD, it's all currently on TV, isn't it? And, well, there um, you go. Not also bad. the X-List, which is a good new compilation, double CD compilation from XFM with loads of stuff on there, including Nerd, Snoop Doggy Dog, uh, Athlete, all sorts. Go on then, Carl. So not bad, actually. Simple nice story. one. Why right, don't? So, uh, yeah, it's a phrase that, that's been said. At some point, I said a lot on the show, we've had like hairy Chinese kid. We went back to, uh, my mum had wind for five minutes and that. Uh, today we're looking at, uh, my neighbour had a horse in a house, right? Yep. If you remember, we were talking about that probably about a year and a half ago now. Yep. Yeah, of course, right. we, of course we remember. They've been talking about it ever since, Carl, I imagine. Yeah. Well, so it's famous, it's, the, it's a world famous phrase, my neighbour had a horse in her house. <laughs> right, so this is, uh, this week's song's a phrase, and what I've done is I've got songs with those words in that make up that sentence. Yeah. You get our email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. There's six different songs, right? You email in with what? I don't what know how there is six. Me neighbour add horse in house. Is it really that sentence? Me neighbour add a horse in a, a, a her house. It does work, honestly it works. Okay, yeah, right? okay, don't bother explaining it, just ready? play it. Right, yeah. so here's the, uh, here it is. We're just My head horse. House. Right? <laughs> what in <laughs> God's and name was that? Yeah, name the six songs. Head a house. Yeah. <laughs> Are we naming the artists or the songs? Either. Uh, artists. Anyone who gets anything can get a prize. What's Walker? Artists, here we go. Head a house. <sighs> That's tricky, Carl. That's very hard. Once more. Head a house. <laughs> <laughs> Email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'll give it. Another you know, letdown. Another letdown. It's brilliant, this. No, no. How can you just say that after I've just been stuffing grapes in your face and Well, you, fa you found that you didn't get one burger in, right? Even when you tried to, to chop it up, there's three, right? So that's it. it well, Steve, out of the goodness of his heart, went to McDonald's, okay? I got some grapes You at 62. That's got nothing to do with this, though. This is my game show here. Bob Olness didn't say, yeah, Blockbusters is good, but I never see him eating grapes. <laughs> so this is a different thing, forget that. Right? Here's the clips again, here's the clips. <laughs> oh, you know I said I was going to turn over a new leaf and not criticise your ideas? I think it's the end of this one, mate. Oh, he's done it again. It's atrocious. Ricky Dockervais at xfm.co.uk if you've got any idea. Danny Warhols, we used to be friends. That is Carl's favourite record of the year. Yeah, yeah. New, new he music. Gets, new he gets, music. he gets, he gets one, he gets one play a year, and he chose that. <laughs> That's what he chose. It's all right, but I mean, the favourite track, isn't it? He played that. That was that was Carl's choice. Just something new on XFM 104.9. Don't worry, we've got some really good stuff coming up later. With me and Steve. If you're from the seventies, <laughs> you might like it. You see that he's getting too cocky, isn't he? Arrogant. It's sort of like he's. I, I mean, we try and we've tried and given him something in his life. He's got. You know, what I mean, he's. Is he comes in and tells us this this sob story of just like a trail of failures? We said, Carl, come under our wing, right? He just started picking up on him. A few other people's like, and then he does that. He, he fails at the burgers. He fails at the grapes. He will not trust us with, you know, what we want to do. I don't know what more we can do. It's like I've saved a mouse from a from a cat's jaws and it turned around and bit me. Yeah, yeah, that, that's ex that is a brilliant analogy. It's a bit like we were trying to give you something that you could care about, that you could be passionate about, that would somehow give a meaning to your life. You would be in the Guinness Book of Records alongside. I mean, Bubble, Bubble failed. Do you want to be Bubble? Do you want to be Bubble, or do you want to be the bloke with the milk bottle on his head? <laughs> exactly. Who's in there? <laughs> the guy who make the watches. Yes. Now, I've got an idea, Carl, because you're getting all stressed out. I don't know what it is, you're getting funny, I don't know what it is, I don't know what- Because you're annoying me. Wow, well, you say that. started midweek. I don't- I don't think I annoy anyone else, so it's just you on that. So, I thought maybe we could all three of us go away to a little health farm for a weekend, just get a, like a- a triple room right, and that, just- That isn't happening. Why? Well, you've just reminded me because you've been annoying me 
Steve started getting on your case, you know, sort of ganging up on me. I'll tell you now, Steve, I just forgot. Remember a couple of weeks ago, you said to me that my pub team, pub quiz team is rubbish? Yeah. Right, well, it doesn't matter anymore because you're not part of it this time. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> That's bad because it's interesting you say that, Carl. Carl, you say that because I tell you this, I found someone, I found someone, mate, who could be, uh, filling that tricky fifth member. I wanted to test them out this week, mate. On oh. your team, on your team. Test that on your team. Because Carl. I'll tell you what this is like, I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, Paul Ince, who used to play with Man United, uh -huh. right? But everyone used to say he's the governor, right? Even the players used to call him the governor, yeah. right? And Alex Ferguson at Man United was like, I'm not having this, yeah. I'm in charge here, and he got rid of him. And that's what's happened. You, you were moaning the other week, saying you, 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 your team's rubbish, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Well, let's see how you do on your own, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's turned, isn't he? I'll be honest, Carl, I'd like to be on your team. Well, sorry, uh, Paul Lince. <laughs> You'll have to go and join Middlesbrough, or wherever it is it's gone to. Carl, right? what can I do to get back on your team? It's not happening. I've already filled you bits. Don't let him have the upper hand, Steve. No, 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 wait a minute. I'll tell you what always annoys me, though. Ricky spends most of the show slagging you off, right, having a go at you, uh, annoying you in the week, squeezing your head, making you eat burgers, right, but you always take out on me. He I'm the one who always gets the insults, I'm the one who's now relegated from your team. Why, when, when, you see, this is the thing, you're just as bad as him, really, because you're siding against me, because you know that I'm, I'm willing to take it. You, what, it, the truth of it is this, you know <laughs> that Ricky Gervais is keeping you, he's keeping you in burgers and grapes, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> he's the one that's got you in Heat Look, Magazine. I just spat all over you, do you? Because it's Rooker Records. You see? Get me a tissue. He's just squirted tea, oh, laughing, all over your Rooker Records. Are you me not laugh. gonna get the flat for that? No, it's cause you made me laugh when I was drinking, cause you went, it's me, like that, and it made me laugh, and I spat. I just, I just think it upsets me that you, that you never, oh. you never pick on Ricky, you never ever go in, because you know he's, he's the one who's, key, who's raised your oh profile and made you a little bit of a celebrity. We've, yeah. we've missed one here, using his teeth, Raman, Andy Appan, right, has to tote coconut. He did what? He husked the coconut. He's the fastest coconut husker in the world. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know, he pulls huskers, he pulls husks. What's that? Little <laughs> what's, what's a coconut husking? He, he pulls the husks up and look at Carl, just with his head down. <laughs> Carl, come on. What's the matter? Cause that cost me twenty quid. I know, well I'll see you alright. I'll see you all over the world's smallest man. <laughs> Stood him next to the world's biggest man. Right, I'm in a bad mood now. Oh dear. Oh, I, I, so I, I, you I haven't got a team, St Steve? I'll sort you out. Come to me. I'll sort you out. Seriously, Don't worry. No, I, I found win. someone who would help you win this week, Carl. And no, I was going to tell you about it. And now, Steve, you can be on my team this week. And, I've, and I know something about the quiz that Carl doesn't know. So, I'll so. tell you. I just think that it's it's so ungrateful. Whatever. So ungrateful. Right, songs a phrase. Just give it a couple more plays. Just yeah. email him. We'll pick a winner soon. Uh, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Well this isn't, this is rubbish this week, no one knows it because it's rubbish, Steve was right. Mm. <laughs> six songs there, so if you know what they are, just- That's the end of that, I think. That's the end of songs of phrase. Email in. I think. <laughs> We've got no- Head No, no, no. Uh -huh. House. That's the last week for that. that okay, is rubbish. well, why don't you give us some monkey news? Is it monkey yeah. news time? Come oh, on, monkey oh, news. We'll play a song and we'll- No, 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 no monkey news. Song, let's play a song. Oh, oh okay. it's a great track. Cheer up, Carl. Is Wait. Is this Waiting new? for an alibi with Thin Lizzy. Oh, what year was it? Doesn't have to be new, it's brilliant. What year was it out? Oh, Einstein wasn't new when he came up with the greatest theory ever. Oh, hello, guy. Hey, oh, you're not new, you're not new. Waiting for an alibi by Thin Lizzy on XFM 104.9. Right, okay, just. This is. Oh. Of all the, of all the trauma in the world, I thought we'd come under a little bit of it, and he's just brought it right down, a little mank twat <laughs> whinging. <laughs> no, but I mean, do you know what I mean? He's had a go at you, he's thrown you off his team. I'm devastated by that. That was, do you know that was the one thing I was looking forward to this week? <laughs> to be fair, you were looking forward to telling him you were taking over the team, so it's sort of Poetic justice, well, it, has, it has blown up in your face, to be fair. True, I was, I was trying to squeeze him out of his own company. Yeah, you were gonna try and get him out of his team. Yeah, well I- So, I, it was I a hostile takeover and they sort of, they clubbed together. I'll be honest with you, there's normally three regulars on his team, I got two of them on my side. <laughs> One of which was his girlfriend. <laughs> so, um, I only had to work on him to try and get him to resign oh, no. and we'd have been away. Still, mm. 
You know, um, we should give um, the prizes away. Yeah, well, oh. this is this has been dreadful. That this thing we started <laughs> off well with him trying to with force burgers in his mouth, and then he'd come up with this tat. I mean, this is this is the end of this because it's. I mean, it was shoddy to start with. Now let do a couple. Well, this is <laughs> not only. Well, uh, 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 I'm just saying. This is what I was saying in the pub yesterday when you tried to be sick on my leg. I was saying, come up with new <laughs> ideas if you don't like them, but you diss them on air. Well, it's just disappointing, isn't it? And oh, I said, hey, but, uh, right. what's that? I was disappointed when I was choking before. <laughs> <laughs> we were disappointed as well. <laughs> yeah, you didn't try. We didn't try with the grapes. You were just like right, chewing on right. that. You meant to just throw them in and swallow them. Songs of phrase. It was six songs. It yeah. sounded like this. Right, what are they? Just give you answers. Six songs there. We had uh, Lionel Richie, My Destiny for my. Tricky. Neighbour. Oh, that's XFM. Ooh. My neighbour was uh. Space. Space. Yeah. Neighbourhood. Mm. Had. Uh, Harry Connick Jr. Had to be you. Yeah. Right. It had. Your neighbour had. A horse. Horse from America. Day. America, yeah. Uh, another horse. In, 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 in was Lisa Sansfield with uh. <laughs> Pathetic. In all the right places. Oh, pathetic. <laughs> Did anyone get that? Did anyone get that? And no one got, no one got that. Animals. That was pointless. All right. Well, the most, well, any, the... The most anyone got was three, yeah. and so we're going to give it to Deborah, and that's yeah. possibly Deborah and Kate. They right. got at least three of those. So well okay. Done, well done. Yeah. There's prizes on the way. That's the end of that. So that's there. No cheapest chimps. No that anymore. What have you got left? You got the film to do? Let's see what you've done with the film. Hang yeah. on. I'd love to have some monkey news though. Go on then. Got any monkey news? Yeah, got some monkey news. Come on then. No, Rick. Come on. Cheer up. Cheer well, up. it's it's just sort of like. He moans that he's got too much time on his hands, and he comes up with that. Shh. <laughs> okay. Shite. Monkey news. The jingle, please. Ooh, chimpanzee. That monkey news. <laughs> okay. Right, there's been quite a lot of stuff going on. There was a few bits in that Guinness Book of Records book <laughs> that cost me twenty quid. Yeah, well, that's not news, is it? They printed that probably last September. No, so that's there's, there's one in there. New music. New music. New new monkey news from last September. <laughs> You're a lord. Come on, waster. Please, Ricky. Monkey news. Um, <laughs> right. There was this this monkey in uh, in a zoo in Brazil. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, this little man monkey, little woman monkey. And uh, you're a scientist, aren't you? Go on. And they said uh, the people in charge were like, "Oh, wouldn't it be good if they had kids?" Brilliant. Right. So uh, anyway, the chimps used to stand sort of, you know, they'd have their little caves each, and they used to sort of, <laughs> they used to sort of. Uh, Lean on the fence, having a bit of a chat and stuff with each other. <laughs> 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 well, you know, the, yeah, the, the equivalent sort of thing. Yeah. So uh, anyway, they were getting on a storm, and like the, the zookeepers were like, <laughs> "Can you hear that cheapest chimps this week?" <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was fascinating. Yeah, yeah. just just gossiping. I understand. So, uh, uh, what's uh, any monkey news? <laughs> I don't know. It's tuning in. What was some monkey news this week? <laughs> Come on. It was from last September. Go so on. there were um, there was. You know, stood there having a chat, and the zookeepers were like, "I wonder if they're ever going to, you know, have kids and that." Yeah. Anyway, it went on for ages. You know, this just chatting, no, no sort of action. <sighs> so what the zookeepers did was, they uh, they said, "I know they will have kids." Are we letting that go? Come they on. were just chatting. Are we just letting just, that go? We're letting you it know go. what I mean? You, I mean, just doing whatever monkeys do. Okay. Right? So um, so yeah. So the zookeepers were like. Yeah, I wonder when they're gonna, you know, have some kids. Yeah. Anyway, what they decided to do, t to sort of do to egg them on. Yeah. Um, bought, um, bought one of them a suit, one a wedding dress. Right. <laughs> Keep going! No, I'm not Shut it. up, Gervais. Fade him down if he's gonna interrupt, I wanna they hear got, the rest of this. They got, they got married. So and they got uh, married? Yeah, they got married. Right. What, that's the end of it! That's- This is why I don't- Right, <laughs> that's the end of monkey news! <laughs> that's the end of monkey news! Don't do that again, you've got no features left! Why don't you like that? <laughs> well, it's not a story! It's, the, it's about two chimps chatting, which doesn't happen. The zookeeper's going, I wonder if they can ever have kids. And come on, they got married. That's the end of the story. What are you talking about? Hang on, just calm down. Let me just check that you didn't make a mistake there and didn't lose out. What do you he mean you didn't make a mistake? Wait a minute, he may have just left out a fundamental piece of information. What, the would, story? That would have made it into a story. Right. Let me just check, let me just check the facts. So they, they, they bought them wedding outfits. They were married. Did they propose to each other or did they, were they just forcibly Don't married? encourage just, him. Just and it. then what was the outcome? Once they got married, what happened? They fell in love? Yeah. What? Well, it's not on. a marriage, Carl. Be quiet. It's not a real marriage. I don't know what you've got in your head. It's like the head of Homer Simpson. I'd go in there and there'd be a wedding reception and there'd be a couple of fights and they'd be talking about stuff. They got married. They fell in love. Did they have children? Um, they're not back off the honeymoon yet. <laughs> 
Play a record. You got no features left. Satisfaction, new single. Song. Yeah, XFM, quick, play it. Right, we've waited three weeks, we are gonna play it. I don't care whether we're late, we were late in because there was news. So, play it. Which film are you in this week? Uh, looking at Silence of the Lambs. Right, play okay. it. Just play have, it. Have we got a question? We'll no, who cares? Who cares? Should Carl carry on? Play it. Right, Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> the bit where, uh, Jodie Foster is having a chat. <laughs> Good evening, Carrie. Alright. Just thought I'd, uh, come and see you. How very thoughtful. Don't mind me popping in though, do you? It's just... Just no one else is interested in the sort of things I like talking about. People will say we're in love. Well, say what they want. Did you hear the, uh, did you hear the show last week? We were talking about gay people. If they should have their own toilets or not, and stuff. That was good. Yeah, it was alright, wasn't it? Got a good, uh, good debate going. Enjoy doing the show, it's, uh, it's a favourite part of my week, really, just talking about weird stuff and that. Oh, Clarice, your problem is you need to get more fun out of life. I have a lot of fun in my life. You know, come and see you, and, uh, spend a lot of time on the internet looking up weird stuff. We've even something about an airy Chinese kid. There's another thing, there's a fella who, uh, no arms and legs. He's known as a pillar man. Everything you need to find him is right there in those pages. Bizarre magazine. Yeah, I get this. The airy Chinese kid, what annoys me is he could sort it out. He could just have a shave, couldn't he? Do you know what I mean? No! He cuts. Does he? Well... Use some, uh, some of like, that Emac stuff. Yeah, don't, don't be getting funny with me. Just cos you're in a bit of a mood, right? You know you, you shouldn't eat people. Your eyes are bigger than your belly, I've always said that, so... See you later. Interesting. Uh, atmospheric, moody, and, uh, the question is... Uh, okay, here I have it this. How many films have been made featuring the character Hannibal Lecter? How many films they have been made? They've got time to phone in now, they? No, they can email in, they'll have time. Do you care? I, do. I don't care. No, exactly. Ricky.Gervais, xfm.co.uk, if you can be bothered. If you're interested in what, <laughs> and you want a 4 yeah. copy on VHS of Silence of the Lambs. He's dissing that as well, Carl. Wasn't was it that? A bit annoying, but that's <laughs> it for this week. But remember what happened when it- no, it's not. It's nine minutes to don't, three. Don't How can that? Time, no, no, no. no. This, How can that be it? It's nine minutes to three. Yeah. What's he doing? Is he playing a record? Carl, what can I do to get back on your quiz team? You're not. Come on. Talking to the sound bed yesterday. Right. Songbird Oasis, right. Send Carl a little present. Send him some essential oils or something. Or, I just, I mean, a little lavender pillow or. Just a little, little message. Send him a little message. Tell him it's all worth it. He's getting all grumpy, aren't you? I just get sick of it, that's all. It's not worth the th for going through the stress for 30 quid every Saturday. You lying little- you'd get more than 30 quid. Oh, not much more. Anyway, Steve, who's the winner? The winner is Mike McNulty. He correctly answered the fact that there were four films featuring Hannibal Lecter. There's a downer now, aren't there? There's a downer. I think it was you, actually. I mean, I, I, I don't know, Carl. I'm not- it's not like I'm just trying to win myself a place on your team, but <laughs> I actually felt that Ricky was really out of I gave- I gave him grapes. I thought you- I thought Ricky Grape. was- was discourteous, if that's a word. I thought he was rude, aggressive, unpleasant, as- as one person emailed in, a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> so- <laughs> someone also said you were fat and talentless. Right. So, um, so, um, Oh, I don't like those emailers who do that sort of thing, but one of them said you were really, really annoying. Well, cheers for that, but you're still and not on the team. Like you <laughs> so, so, back next week. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> cheers for that, but you're still not on.